Hi, everybody. Welcome. We're here to play a little game. Uh, it's about a uh, very small uh, mammal of some sort, I hear. Um, this is a game called um, Tiny Bunny. And uh, the game will show up here in a second. It always takes Streamlabs a little bit. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I heard really good things. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank um, Zazo, Zazo, Zazo Busha. Um, for donating uh, this game uh, for everybody to watch. We are watching it because of him, so thanks, Azubusha, um, in the chat if you can. Um, and yeah, I've heard good things. Zazo specifically um, said that this game is like, it's a horror visual novel um, inspired by Junji Ito and um, Stephen King. So I'm here for that. Let's fucking do this. Let's go. Famous visual novel enjoyer, me. What am I looking at? The wind clawed at my window all night long. Uh oh, uh oh, I just clicked. Okay. Wow, the frame rate's kind of weird. Yeah, whatever. It wandered the fields, the fields, and howled like a hungry beast. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices, shrill, gentle, sneery, twined in the air. Oh no, do I have to move? I think I might have to move. All right, one sec. I'm gonna move my camera a little. What do you think? Like right here? Wants to do Yeah, that should that should be fine, right? That works? Okay. Cool. If that doesn't work, just let me know. Uh want me to give out some uh trigger warnings. Oh yes, Zazo, yes, yes, yes. Please. Oh, please, please do. Alright, I'm gonna cut all this from the VOD. Um, but then we'll, uh, I'll, I'll say the trigger warnings. All right. So Zaza, oh wait, oh, that's fine. Okay. So, uh, Zazo says, first of all, this game frequently uses flashing lights and flashing images for dramatic purposes. So I hate that. Um, just, you know from my perspective. Um, so for anyone who struggles with epilepsy, I would perhaps recommend to just avoid the stream in general. I remember uh, Eric uh, said that at one point they even caused him a headache. As for trigger warnings, the game contains bullying, parental... Um, okay, so trigger warnings, okay? Game contains bullying, um, parental child neglect, child abuse, minor animal abuse, and both implied and graphic depi depiction of child death. So if any of those are not your cup of tea, um, uh, uh, yeah, a p a peace. Uh, you know, have a great night um, or day whenever you're watching this. And uh, yeah, I hope you, uh, I hope you have a, a great rest of your day. All right. <laughs> and with that, let's keep going. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices, shrill, gentle, sneery, twined in the air. They were shouting and laughing and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow while casting long shadows that would occasionally creep close to my bed. Our house had a mind of its own, the creaky old mind of a building that had seen a lot, of, a lot in its days and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with the inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest and the dark green thicket gazed back with its hollow eyes, rustling, whizzing, swaying, and back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves there was nobody behind the crooked trees. Fuzzy silhouettes swaying in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. It's just a play of light and shadow, just a play. I knew it was just my imagination. I was already 12 after all, still. <gasps> Episode one, the owl will arrive.
I, <laughs> cute. I, I was, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> this is extremely goosebumps. Hey, put away your book. Сколько раз говорила, не читай за столом, вредно. Сидишь, сутулился весь. Hide. I didn't protest and put the book about Conan the Barbarian aside. Is it Conan or Conan? I think it's Conan. I was stuck on a line I couldn't understand after reading it three times anyway. I do that. I did that too. Like, I remember exactly where I was when I, when my ability to read books completely broke. <laughs> it was the, um, I'll tell it later. Olya had already finished her breakfast and was munching on some cookies. She was so enthusiastic, she almost looked like your typical girl from commercials. You're not going anywhere until you finish all of it. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate with my eyes, as if it would make the porridge disappear. I want to say right off the bat, I think this is better than R.L. Stein. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give it that. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, yeah, the writing's a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hazy anxiousness welled up inside, all because of the previous sleepless night, the black forest around our house and the gloomy wind. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. Wonder what it is. It's just like, oh, it's porridge, right? Right. Um, it looked like a jellyfish with uh, from the Cousteau Odyssey. I love that show. I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is. Or how cold uh, the Black Forest is at night. The spoon fell out of my hand. Mom showered me with a cold glare from her green eyes. What did I just say? I'll get it. I had 10 seconds to catch my breath before battling the nasty porridge once again. I felt around for the spoon. What is this carved on the other side of the table? Karina. Ha, ah, that's my mom's name. I guess she carved it out uh, uh, with something pointy when she was little. She sure was a rascal damaging the furniture like that. She would scold me for a week if I did something similar, though. Should I remind her about it? No, she's been in a bit of a mood lately. I imagined her being my age sitting under this table. I wonder, was mom afraid of the dark back then? Or the sounds coming from the attic? Or the thick forest? Sounds coming from the attic. I imagine my grandma um, coming into my little mom's room, sitting at the edge of her bed where Olya sleeps nowadays, and saying this in her soft, smooth voice. Taiga is a special place, little girl. It's watching you closely, sniffing you out. Oh, that's cool. Trying to discern what kind of beast you are. If you're a good sort, it won't abandon you in times of trouble. But if you're a bad apple, it'll grab you by the side and drag you under the ground. And that would be it. Grandma was caring. She never fought with anybody, never yelled, never swore. Those were the times without the maddening screams until late at night, without smashed dishes and mutual accusations. Our parents used to love each other back then. Oof, same, buddy. I remember listening in, one, in on one of their conversations by chance. They were talking about Grandma getting prepared for her funeral. She had already bought a casket, and she called it her cute funeral box. It waited for its time in the closet patiently. It was black, upholstered with meat-colored material on the inside. <laughs> Mauve, uh, I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. The house didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all of the photos were gone. Glass-covered pictures with gray faces of my ancestors. They all had a dead but watchful look in their eyes. I crawled out from under the table. Olya was done with her cookies and was looking at my share like a sly woodland critter. I turned my gaze toward the frosted window. There was a lot of dark pines outside but they didn't grab my attention. The pattern of forest formed a, a picture on the glass. Oh well, yeah, look, it's a fox. Where? It looked almost like those optical illusion thingies they put on the back of student notebooks. 
a mixture of lines at first glance, but if you blur your vision a bit and look under a certain angle. Да не на улице, на стекле. Not outside, on the window. Смотри, вот нос, вот. Look, here's the nose, and here's... Ну-ка, доедай. Hey, eat up. Да, да, сейчас. Yes, yes, just a moment. Я ничего не вижу. I don't see anything. Живо. Совсем немного осталось. Hurry up, there's not much left. А, вот. Но все равно не похоже. Ah, there it is. But it still doesn't look like one. А я говорю, похоже. And I'm telling you, it does. Nuh-uh. Похоже. It does. Прекратите. Stop it. These kids, I swear. Now I couldn't see the fox either. Oh, you can still. Uh, it disappeared. Went away. Only the frosty patterns, similar to stretched out little nettle leaves, kept creeping up the glass. My dad entered the kitchen with long, measured steps. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. <laughs> Mom would always ask jokingly, Come on, shave it off, it stings. This was so long ago. Nowadays, see, see, see what they did there? That's, that's, it's cool. I love it when, uh, when writing <laughs> can do shit like that, where it's like, yeah, it's saying everything without saying anything. Uh, that's, yeah, it's really good. Nowadays, rumbling doors and witty comebacks were an everyday occurrence. Olya always covers her ears whenever she hears something like, what's the point in all this, through the wall? It's all for your sake, Dad would reply, re would reply uh, for the sake of the family. I always caught every sound in fear of hearing the most dreaded, the deadliest word that started with a D. D-I-V-O. I don't even want to finish it. You don't have to. Just uh, listen to Devo. He's a good band. Uh, it was scary to imagine that me and my <laughs> my little sister could be torn apart and taken into two different families. Anyway, your fox is nothing. I have an owl on my window. You and your owl talk again. You said you believed me yesterday. Никто ключи от машины не видел. Вроде оставлял на подоконнике. Вроде. Вроде оставлял, вроде нет. Вроде взрослый мужчина, отец двоих детей, а вроде... Перестань, пожалуйста, Карина. Карина, пожалуйста, Дай мне спокойно собраться. Let me get ready in peace. В корзине твои ключи, возле телефона. Your keys are in the basket near the phone. Огромное тебе человеческое. Well, thank you very much. Anton, ешь быстрее, а то как мученик сидишь. Anton, stop making a martyr of your, out of yourself and finish eating already. But the owl. Не было там никакой. There was no owl. Была. But there was one. Лазюки огромные. Гр. И светятся. Свет. Гр. Russian school. It had giant glowing eyes. Olya sprung up from the chair and placed her hands on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes with her fingers the size of an apple each. Last year you had Babai in your closet, and now this owl? Can I click this? Oh. Babai, in Slavic folklore, a nocturnal spirit used by parents to threaten their ill-behaving children. Apparently that's a common thing in a, like a ton of cultures of uh, having stories about, you know, uh, uh, having uh, creatures that would kill you if you were a bad kid. But, but I saw it. Olya shifted her, gla her glaze, <laughs> her gaze back and forth from dad to me, uh, from dad to mom to me, but couldn't find any support. Have you thought about befriending it? Вымышленными мышами покормить, например. You know, like feeding it with imaginary mice. Не подначивай ребенка. Don't bully our girl. Просто мала еще, и спать одна боится. She's just afraid to sleep alone because she's still little. Olya powdered her lips in, a re in rebellion and rushed uh, into the hallway. Are his eyes moving or blinking? Hmm. The staircase that led to the second floor creaked. Oh, 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 God. Mom gave dad a strict look. Oh, God. 
That's, that's terrifying. Oh, that look in her eyes. It's so uncomfortable to be pinned under it. Dad just snorted in a reply and left, ringing the, with the keys he just found. A minute had passed and the theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed through the house. It was stored on an incredibly worn out cassette tape, which Dad already had to glue together once. It's so easy to fix objects by gluing them back together, for example. But how do you fix a relationship? Mom moved to the living room and I was left alone, anxiously stealing glances at the window. Olya had trouble sleeping ever since we moved to this house. She would toss and turn or curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes she would jump in the middle of the night and turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped her uh, take her mind off of all the troubles we had with the move and our parents. I. And then Olya uh, said she saw that giant flying monster outside her window. She became obsessed with it. Our parents did everything in their power. They tried every little trick to get rid of those ridiculous fears. Olya refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her nightmares. After last night, I was unsure what to make of my sister's words, what to think of it myself. Can nightmares be infectious? That night, I couldn't get a wink of sleep and ended up thinking of what to expect from my new school. There were a couple of days left before the beginning of a new term. My imagination drew long, twisting hallways that led to a classroom full of kids, but all the students behind their desks were simply dark figures cut out using a template. Circular holes gaped in the middle of their faces and pairs of eyes blinked inside these holes. It was as if some completely different creatures were looking at me from behind the flat black silhouettes. Their cool glares, filled with icy sneers, made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? Won't they gang up on me and beat me down? Stomp on me with their bloodied shoes? That damn school can burn for all I care. I just wished for any anything to happen to it. Doesn't really matter what. I didn't want to go back there that badly. I didn't want to see people who were just itching to smack me out of the head. Smack me on the head, trip me up, think of new offensive name for me worse than the previous one. I felt like the glasses I wore made me an outsider or some sort of monster. My gaze slid across the drawings hanging on the walls. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Olya begging me to hang them. Drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. Oh yeah. That's cool. It's like a shark or something. What is that? What is that? It's just like... There's a cat. Meow. Oh no, you can't see it. Here, hold on. Kitty. Right there. Meow meow. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> I couldn't consider myself a... Uh, yeah, happy it was late. Okay. Uh, I saw someone... Yeah, from Russia with love just followed. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, Red Bobby also followed. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, Spider Hyphen Man resubbed for five months. Uh, 16 total. Thank you, Spider Hyphen Man. That's awesome. Thank you very much. And then, uh, yeah, I believe we called... Uh, yeah, full regalia. Yep, okay. So we're all caught up. The small circle of friends I had uh, also enjoyed my paintings, and they promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes I imagined mom picking up the phone and saying in a cold voice, you've got the wrong number, or Anton is not around. Anton is not around. He's a square. Uh, I imagined my future classmates lying in their beds, just like me, listening to the howls of the invisible werewolves outside their windows. Maybe my new classmates will like me after all. But who would ever like a boy with thick glasses? I mean, my dad used to wear glasses when he was little, and now he's married to the most beautiful woman on the planet, my mom. <laughs> I remember I complimented... Uh, okay. I probably shouldn't be saying this on a on a recorded video, but I remember my mom. Uh, my mom. My mom. Uh, when um, she was with my dad, like when they first started dating, when she was when she was in the air force, she she was very beautiful. Um, she's she's still 
beautiful. Don't get me wrong, you know, but I remember talking. I, w I was looking at old pictures of them because, uh, uh, long story short, I, I I had I was going through some of our old um, photo albums um, because I was looking at their photos of me, and then I just kept flipping through them, and um, I saw her, and I, I my aunt was there, and I said, "Wow, mom, you you are really beautiful. Wow, you're so pretty." And I, I remember like being like, "Oh, that didn't. I don't like that I said that. <laughs> that's that's." weird man and the way that i said it, it it's it was funny because it was at her at her uh she owned she owned a uh, a a, flower, a a floral company and i said that in front of my aunt and a couple of her co-workers and i remember looking up and they were all kind of looking at me <laughs> and i was like uh, <laughs> well, this is uh, something to uh, put into the old um, bad memory to think about, uh, to think too much about uh, part of my skull. <laughs> Whatever, man. Anyway. <laughs> it's kind of weird, though. Anyway. Uh, the house creaked, pass, uh, pressed by the wind condo we li used to live in a nine floor concrete building buzzed with the neighbor's drill mumbled with a tv set from behind the wall cried like a baby from the from the big family next door our current house though i can't recall really call it new was completely different it was silent and easygoing during the day its shadows lay dormant in the corners on the closet cobwebs and under the stairs but they all woke up during the night something was watching me from every corner almost as if the old photos of my deceased family with their ashen eyes were hanging on the walls in place of my drawings. The floor was squeaking, rusty drains were moaning, the attic was occupied by noisy drafts. One could think the house was performing some sort of a demonic melody. And then I realized I was, in fact, hearing music. It was already playing for a good while. Somewhere at the edge of my perception, I could hear a flute. It was mixed in with the sound of the wind, of the creaking old house, and my thoughts too. Oh. I stood up and rushed to the window. I wanted to reassure myself that this music was nothing more than a project of my imagination. It's not like someone is playing it there amidst the cold snowy night, right? Can I do anything else? No. Oh shit. What is, what is happening here? <laughs> someone was dancing in the field. Hey, hi. Uh, thanks, Slow Beef, uh, for uh, gifting uh, a bunch of people uh, uh, subs. That's awesome. Also, hey, how you doing, man? Um, hope you're doing well. Hope the family's good. And, uh, yeah. Um, use that as a, a moment to uh, take a sip of some deliciousness. <laughs> I'm doing great, Slow, slow Beef. I hope you are enjoying a game. I am. This is this is cool. Um, this is like, uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's it's giving me goosebumps by, uh, vibes, but in a good way. Like some of those goosebumps books were, it was good shit. But yeah, apparently this is like this goes hard. So, but yeah, okay, back to it. Um, someone was dancing in the field. Black silhouettes I could barely make out with the dark forest as their backdrop. They jumped around, basked in moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around and crawled on all fours. Stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but these were clearly not wolves. They stood upright at times, circled around, holding hands and whipped up snow, disappearing into the shadows for a brief moment and then coming back. Something bizarre was going on. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination grow wild, making me anxious at the same time. Oh, suddenly the music stopped. The dancing shadows froze in place and, I could swear, pierced me with their eyes. One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow carnival and sprinted across the field with giant leaps. It glided on squeaky snow without leaving any prints until it was devoured by the pitch black shadow of my house, which became even darker and thicker. My heart was jumping around like the bird inside a cage. I shut the curtains with a swift motion and stepped back toward the bed. They saw me. A freezing torrent of fear washed over me. 
I stood in the middle of a perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted guest move and scrape around looking for an entrance. The sound moved to the right. They then circled around the house. Now my guest should be at the front door. I jumped into the bed and covered myself with the blanket as if it could protect me. The shackles of fear locked my muscles. I remembered the funeral, my grandma lying there, hands crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like a, that of a tin doll. Ants running up and down the legs of chairs that held my grandma's casket. I imagined those little creatures climbed up her head and pulled up her eyelids with their tiny legs. Then her wrinkly eyeballs would once again move inside their sockets and she'd be able to see her grandchildren. I was chanting the spell she taught me throughout the night, throughout the whole procedure. And now lying under the blanket and listening to squeaks and howls, I was repeating the same words. On the island of Buyan, underneath the blemished sun, in the sea of color blue, stands a cabin made of wood. There lay lard and ashen hair for the spawn from devil's lair to feast and always leave alone God's faithful servant named Anton. Evil leave this house must. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Bizarre sounds had disappeared. I cautiously peeked out from under the blanket and saw curtains waving around like a hanged man. And then the night doused me with a new portion of boiling terror. <laughs> the sound scratched at my eardrums. In reality, something or someone were something or someone were scratching at the front door. Hurriedly, clawing at wood, demanding to be let in, the door was shut. Dad had become very cautious recently, so he installed a sturdy lock. I remember wait. I remember him staring at the forest intently as if he was looking for someone. Why would he install Does he know about this? Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. That was a window breaking. I hugged my knees, placing my chin between them, and drilled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy and weak before the might of darkness. And then It's a Velociraptor. The doorknob twitched slightly. Then it turned halfway, once, twice, as if this person who tried to enter had no hands. The doorknob tilted once more, and then... It started clicking violently. My jaw cramped from fear. My wet fingers clutched the blanket. The door creaked and opened. The wind taunted me, moaning inside the tin drains. Now, now you'll see. The door was wide open. The darkness writhed inside the carnivorous mouth of the doorway. Tusha. Tusha? Tusha? It was as if the night itself were calling out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. I was trembling and snared by the web of darkness that hung in the corners of my room, wanting for one wanting for the one who weaved it to come out of the gaping black hole. Tu knee Tusha to knee my abdomen tightened and my chest rose up ready to exhale a desperate scream but before I was able to do anything the darkness asked me Tosha are you asleep? my sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows I almost screamed from relief oh yeah I, I'm not sleeping did something happen? Olya frowned and stuck out her lower lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. <laughs> it's there again, staring at me. <laughs> Shoo her away, Tusha. Please. I'm so scared. Oh. The fear that was tormenting me just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere in, in my stomach. I needed to calm Olya down. It was so stupid. It was just a dream, silly. Don't be scared. Dreams don't bite. No one's going to hurt you. Harm you. Olya sobbed. Aw. She was trying her best to believe me. But was I sure myself? I have an idea. Let's go to your room. And watch the video. Sleeping Beauty, for example. <laughs> that was kind of weird. You like that cartoon, don't you? 
спящей красавицы принца у меня это страшная птица. Why does the Sleeping Beauty have a prince and I have the scary bird? <laughs> I hear you. Uh, that question took me by surprise. Давай посмотрим Золушку. All right, let's watch Cinderella. My thoughts became tangled, fuzzy. What was that? What studied me with its eyes while dancing feverishly under the moon? The darkness was clinging to the window, and it couldn't be fooled by Grandma's old chants. It couldn't be satisfied with a feast of lard or long ashen Tosha, hair. Tosha, you coming? Да, да, сейчас. Yeah, just a moment. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> you get killed by a wolf again. I don't know why she's like <laughs> English. I don't know what that accent was. <laughs> oh, you get killed by a wolf again. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to laugh at Olia and her owl in the morning. <gasps> it must be that wolf. <laughs> uh, who could be visiting us here in the middle of nowhere? We don't know anyone around here. So persistent. I felt extremely unsettled just from a silly thought that our morning guests could have come from the woods. I could barely hear voices coming from the front door. My mind, my mind was urging me to hide. In the closet, under the table, behind the curtains where Olya always hides. Wait a minute. Didn't they say, wait, hold on, hold, 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 hold the phone. Incredibly dense, thank you for the follow and I like your name. Um, wait, 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 wait. Oh, they must have brought their furniture, right? Because how does this table, this this table was brought? They they must have moved the furniture. Yeah, all right. And I'm being goofy because the fur, the table has his mom's name under it, and he was saying about uh, how um, she wrote it under the table, but. It's also interesting because it being under the table means that maybe she was hiding under the table at some point, possibly. The house was his grandma's. Okay, okay. So he, they inhab they they inherited it after she died. Okay, cool. All right. Um, behind the curtains where Olya always hides. Tosha, Tosha, come here. I felt like kettlebells were tied to my feet and still dragged them toward the hallway. A couple of policemen towered over me in the doorway. They smelled like frost and worry. <laughs> My mom always winced and grumbled the moment she saw patrol cars, worse than bandits. Your mom's right. Uh, at the moment, though, she looked somewhat confused. Hello. The senior officer, who wore a grim expression, nodded. A boy had gone missing yesterday. His name's Vova. Look at this, please. Have you seen him? The policeman held out a photograph to me. This is literally from a Goosebumps book. <laughs> the cat did it. The cat did it. The cat did it. It was the cat. There was a ginger boy, rude, around the age of elementary school, pictured with a, a wall carpet as the backdrop. He had a striped cat in his hands and wore a wide smile. It was the cat. It was the cat. The cat did it. Look at the cat. Look at the cat's face. That's the face of a killer. Нет. No, I haven't. Нет. Точно. Посмотри внимательней. Are you sure? Look closely. Где мне его видеть? Я тут никого не знаю. Where would I see him? I don't know anyone around here. I barely leave the house. Zazo, the house belonged to the grandma originally. Yeah, but, okay. Cool. Um, I thought it was maybe one of those things that I was picking up on that the story would eventually explain, but yeah. Uh, well, maybe you've seen him from the window. That's right, your windows looked, uh, look straight at the forest, don't they? The window. No, I haven't seen anything. I see. He sounded tired, but his eyes, his stare, long and heavy was full of suspicion. Why? <laughs> I squirmed unwittingly under the weight of guilt, which his giant shadow cast over me. 
The, po the policeman finally tore his eyes from me and glanced over the hallway, the stairway, and the cracks in the ceiling, which I haven't noticed before for some reason. In this toy right here. How do you like your new place, by the way? Getting used to it? Bit by bit, it's just our little daughter misses the city a lot. Misses the city, huh? Have the locals been treating you well? Yeah, everything's all right. Thank you. The policeman pierced through me one more time with his brown eyes. My head started spinning. Uh, can I help you somehow? I asked that in a shaky voice to look like a polite boy and to end this unpleasant conversation sooner. Now that I think about it, you look just like one of my nephews, little fella. He's a witty boy, around your age, wears the same type of goggles. Ha ha. Fuck you. <laughs> Always engrossed in reading those mystery novels. Told me he wants to enroll in police school when uh, his family visited this summer. Wanted to help other people, just like me, see? I felt uncomfortable, as if a distant relative and not a police officer stood before me. Oh, ребятушки. You know what? Сидите вы лучше дома. Не вязывайтесь ни во что. Жизнь сейчас совсем другая пошла. Little boys like you should stay at home, steer away from trouble. The times have changed so much. Mom interjected in a cold voice. Мне ли не знать? You don't say. Ну да ладно. Ah, well then. Ты, Антон, в каком классе учишься? What grade are you in, Anton? В шестом. Sixth. Друзей ты на новом месте еще не завел? Have you made any friends here so far? Пока нет. Я только после каникул в школу пойду. Not yet. I'll go. I'll be going to school for the first time after the break. Тогда вот вам на всякий случай мой номер. Звоните, если если узнаете что. Then I'll give you. I'll leave you my number just in case. Call me if you have any new info. Very uh, very Higurashi e. Also, um, I'm I'm reading all of this. Is that cool with everybody? I I figured I'd I'd like, uh, I'd help out or with like people who may be watching this like. Um, in the background, like, you know, I, I just thought on a whim. Yeah, why not? Just read it out. Definitely. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. People like it. <laughs> oh, hold on. <clears throat> oh, Zazzo loves it. Okay, cool. <clears throat> it's like a bedtime story. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, that's that's fun. I was thinking about doing uh, doing more. If I'm going to do more, like, milk, like the milk, um, uh, games then yeah I'm, I'm giving this a shot this is really interesting so far thank you zazo uh zazo um yeah this is this is fascinating and also having zazo here who is uh if i uh, correct me if i'm wrong but zazo is russian so uh i'm sure like <laughs> anything that's that i'm not picking up on or like any any cultural stuff you'll 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 definitely let me know um you don't have to but it's cool that you're here um uh yep i'm russian <laughs> okay hello future me uh all right the policemen were gone uh, along with their shadows the smell of cheap cologne and the photo of a smiling boy his face still stood before my eyes also i like i really like the art the art is really 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 nice this is good oh mm, i forgot to put it on the list damn it oh i totally have to play um uh, what is it called? Um, uh, the Princess Must Die. I really want to play that. That that looks really interesting. Oh, we're playing Umi Neko. We're playing Umi Neko. I just need to get the medium video done before that, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clover, I'm definitely... I, I think I'm going to play that soon, like really soon. So yeah, Slay the Princess. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hold on. Ah, oh, jeez. Stupid nose. It's like, I don't know, I'm getting stuffy in here. His face still stood before my eyes. I wondered what it was like for him being all alone there. For some reason, I thought of the forest swaying in the wind. What did this poor, what did his poor parents feel? And what would my parents do if I'd gone missing? Would they cry and thrash around hysterically? Or would they accuse each other like they always do and forget about me eventually? Mom, 
А Вова этот в нашем лесу заблудился. Is the Russian for mom just mom? Interesting. Mom, this Vova, did he go missing in our forest? Выходит, что так. Бедный ребенок. Seems like it, poor child. I looked out the window at the road. The police UAZ drove off toward the village. A Soviet and Russian off-road freight passenger brand, which was uh, produced on the Ulyanov Ulyanovsk car factory. Uly Ulyanov Ulyanovsk. Ulyanovsk? Was that good, Zazo? Ulyanovsk? Uh, but yeah. Um, the officer's nephew came to mind when I was splitting off old paint from the windowsill. I remembered all the teenage mystery novels from the Black Kitty series I've read this summer. Black Kitty, a series of contemporary Russian original or translated teen mystery books. Cool. Oh, uh, Mama? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's the same in English. It's like... Mom, mommy, mama. I don't, I don't see mama as much anymore. But except, except that one, uh, that one movie where the promos were all just kids going, mama, mama. <laughs> Y'all remember that movie? I think it was, uh, was that Guillermo del Toro? Anyway. Oh, cuter faction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is awesome. I have to show this. All right. This music is really good, by the way. I really like this music that's happening right now. Okay, and then image. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> that is a uh, uh, cute refaction. Oh, man. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Thank you very much for showing that, for doing that work. All right. Let's go back. All right. Your average boys and girls investigated all sorts of mysteries there. They looked for clues, spied on suspicious people. And after a set of amazing adventures, bam, solved any complicated case. Oh, so it's um, what are the, uh, the, the uh, Hardy Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remy said, I'm discording you another trailer to another game that is coming out that looks really good. It's about a Russian nun. Okay. <laughs> is it like anything like those movies? The, the Nun? Nancy Drew? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The Nancy Boys. The, the Hardly Nancy Boys. <laughs> um... Uh, they became local celebrities and must have made their parents very proud. I noticed a trail of policemen's footprints that led to the forest. And then I clicked in my head. Why don't I start an investigation of my own? Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> That's how you get killed. Oh, no. Maybe I'll find that lost boy. <laughs> And I'll get her award. Olya will be so happy. Oh my god, kid, no. And not only Olya. Mom and dad. Oh no, kid. Oh no. Oh god. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Maybe they, they'll they even forget about their quarrels for a while. Oh. Oh man. Maybe they'll even say us from the D word. From the dog. <laughs> I fantasized about buying Olya a Tamagotchi. Yo! Oh, fuck yeah! And getting a cassette player and a bunch of tapes from myself. Fuck yeah, dude. Hell yeah. A whole, and a whole box of Kinder Surprise. Yo! When was the last time our parents bought us any toys? Last autumn, I think. My dad had lost his job at the time. There's that annoying song about it. Accountant. A song by an all-female Soviet pop band by the name of Kombinatsya? Kombinatsya? Com Kombinatsya. That became widely popular in the early 90s. Combination. Kombinatsya. Kombinatsya. 
I had little to no idea what uh, was the accountant's job like. They count money, I think? Neighbors used to envy us. But nowadays, my uh, mom and dad barely had money to afford sweets, and dad would always divide a single chocolate bar between me and Olia. Sometimes I gave her my share, too. No matter how much I wanted to eat sweets, she was still just a pipsqueak. <laughs> I couldn't wait to go out looking for clues. I'm going outside. Uh -huh. Ah! Yeah, right. You want the police to go around with your photograph next? Mom's got a point. <laughs> the forest is so thick. What if the boy got snatched up by wild animals or something even worse? Even worse echoed through the hallway. I won't go far. I'll stay away from the forest. Did you hear what I said, or should I repeat myself? Better go pack your school bag or play with Olya. The sound of splashing water came from the kitchen. It meant that the argument was over and Mom had the last word. Oh shit. Uh, what's here? The dark, stuffy closet. <gasps> Hatchet. Mom says it smells like mice. But how would she know their smell? She hates when I stick my nose in there. She's afraid I'll cut myself on the freshly sharpened axe. And Olya can't even be lured close to it. She thinks Babai is living there. I tried to help her fight her fears once. I opened the door and turned on a dim lamp so she would see there was nothing but cobwebs. Dad's tools and scratched walls. She still didn't believe me. And I like to hide in, this, in the closet and listen to Olya count outside. One, two, three, better hide from me. And then drag her feet on the creaking floorboards, hoping that she wouldn't need to look for me in the cramped monster's den. Well, I guess we're going to the kitchen. Light him on! <laughs> yeah. Hold on, we gotta get... What was that, Mom? What, what were you saying? <laughs> <laughs> Horsey. The side of an old ocean freezer was checkered with my childish drawings, mom's recipes, and all kinds of stickers from bubblegum with dinosaurs that Olia liked so much. <laughs> Among that still life picture hung a piece of ruled paper that my phone number of that the phone number of the police officer who visit, uh, visited us. First Lieutenant Tikhonov. I read inside my mind looking for the officer's sprawled handwriting. The scrap of paper was held by two pieces of a broken magnet from some old Soviet toy, and those pieces just barely covered up the numbers as if to taunt me. I leaned toward it to unveil the mystery and take the piece to a safer place where it would wait for its time when I would finally find Vova and be the first to call the police with happy news. Anton. Anton. Mom's reproachful eyes stared at me. What do you need it for? Hands off, you'll lose it. Angering my mom was the last thing I wanted, so I lowered my hand. Uh, what's this? Oh. Of course it won't be that easy. took a peek at mom's crossword she would get very angry when someone gave her advice so me and dad faked knowing the answer and being about to reveal it all the time <laughs> i smiled at the fleeting thought vertical nine letters the name of uh the philistine deity that protected them from viper bites and had a nickname the lord of flies we got someone in here with the same name Wait, no. Wait, wh wh I thought the. Wait. No, it's nine letters. The one I'm thinking of is six. Which one's that? Second letter is E. Hmm. I forget which one that one is. Beelzebub? Yeah, probably. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Beelzebub. Yeah, 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 yeah
Emercom of Russia has declared the state of emergency due to adverse weather conditions. Oh, shit. According to the weather forecast, the cyclone is moving toward the region. Expect heavy snowfall blizzards and snowdrifts on the road? What? Keep your eyes open and take care of yourself? What the fucking hell? Mom! <laughs> what? Mom, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, Zazo, I was, um, I didn't realize that, uh, but I was clicking on stuff that made noises. The decrepit and stained covered calendar was once my favorite form of entertainment in my grandma's house. I remember waking up and running to the kitchen so I could tear off yesterday's leaf first thing in the morning as if the coming day would get lost in the taiga forest without my help. One day closer to New Year's, one day closer to grandma's funeral. I haven't touched this calendar for years now. Since the time they started writing dark and spooky death chants, that only made me gloomy instead of funny proverbs and superstitions to be exact. I grabbed a dusty calendar leaf with caution and tore it off effortlessly. Sadly, the spooky descriptions from my childhood were still there. Seven horses carry the log. If seven can't carry, bring the eighth from a ferry. They will take it away and never come back. This is the fate. The log cannot escape. I crumbled the gray leaf and threw it into the waste bin, hopefully to get rid of the anxiousness that washed over me. I was spread it was spreading inside me like an ink stain on blotting paper. Mm, wait, do we want to lie to mom? Grandma kept ice cream for me and Olya here, um, but now I could only see meat bits uh, for soup and clumped together pelmeni. Um, tell many. I grew to hate them already. A Russian variety of dumplings made by boiling thin, unleavened dough filled with mincemeat. One may even call it Russian fast food. Oh, 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 so these are, um, these are, uh, they have these in, in West Virginia, basically. Kind of, sort of. They're called, um, uh, yeah, pepperoni rolls. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a West Virginian delicacy, and I have had them. They are delicious. Uh, yeah, pepperoni roll is basically just... It, apparently, yeah, it's like a pierogi, where a pepperoni roll is basically just a... Um, it's like a, a little bun that um, you stuff um, cheese and uh, pepperoni into, and then you uh, cook it like that. And uh, apparently it was... It was um, a really good food for um, miners in West Virginia. That's why it's big there um, because uh, that would be miners' lunch, and it was like a really easy meal that they could take into the mine. So anyway, it's interesting. Food is food is cool. Food is interesting. We should have a Discord channel dedicated to it. Anyway, is that it? I want to look at these eggs. Well, I guess we could lie to mom. I guess maybe we should. Nah, I'll turn back. I don't want to do that right now. Well, I guess we have to. Because she won't let us go outside, will she? It was difficult to lie to mom, but there was no other way for me to r run away from home. Excuse me. Mom, there's something with the television. Yeah, it's, it's their hot pockets, essentially. Mom, something's wrong with the TV. The picture is dim and there are stripes all over the screen. Mom's face became visibly distorted. Ah, you're killing me here. So have you had enough of shooting those stupid ducks now? Hell yeah. Told you the kinescope will go dim because of your console. Where will we find a master in this hole, huh? Or will we find a TV technician in this hole, huh? Maybe it's just the settings. Come on, 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 come I think it knows what I think I know what we need to do. Yoink! <laughs> I got a Chivo for that too. You received the policeman's number. Swipe! Now to run away. Or maybe I should take the 
Can I go back in? I want to take the axe. Shit. I opened the front gate and went into the field, carefully so Mom couldn't see me from the window. When I crossed half of the distance toward the forest, the snow piles became as high as my knees. I remembered my nightly fears. I saw those silhouettes around there. They were jumping around, holding hands. That hypnotizing music started playing in my head all on its own. In the light of day, those distant figures felt like a simple dream. The sun turned my nightmares to ash, but the aftertaste was still there, distant ringing in my ears, distorted shadows crawling on the snow alongside me, and a barely audible whisper in my head, blurry and almost kind. Everything was silent. So silent, I felt like the world was totally empty. No ground, no sky, no parents, no olia. The time reached its limit, a one-way trip that ended at the forest's piney stockade. Sometimes silence was much scarier than any scream. Our parents would scream at each other while arguing, and both me and Olya turned to stone listening to them. But then always came the ringing silence. Our apartment became numb a couple of days before we departed. It was hard to remember the last time mom and dad joked around laughing or spent time together, almost like all of it was from a previous life. When they kissed with Olya present, she always frowned and snorted in a funny way. But one day that it all changed. Something important had left our home, and something scary filled the remaining void. It was as if a fire broke out, and our parents were hurriedly packing our belongings, trying to save themselves and us. From who, though? From the people with dead, cold eyes who sometimes visited us in our parents in our previous home? The eyes that only saw bell balls of worms on the black ground in everything? And somewhere far away, a siren was going off trying to warn us of a coming menace. Hmm. I shuddered, chasing away my delusions, and looked around. There was only me, this white field, and the wind that was whipping us up icy dust and belts of powdered snow. I squinted from the sun and turned my eyes to the sunless forest. It looked especially dark in contrast with the blinding whiteness. Uh, knobby tree roots slithered under the snow like fat snakes. Rotten leaves and coniferous needles froze into the ice. Dry, prickly branches intertwined. You see it? Yeah. Bringing up uncomfortable thoughts about fences. Were they protecting the forest, or were they keeping something from breaking out? Some object was hanging from one of the pointy branches. I tried to get closer, drowning in snow. And when I almost got to the edge of the forest, I saw a knitted mitten. Oh, I thought it was telling me to look at something. It looked like a wounded bird among the hungering semi-dark. Should I, I take it to the police? Their senior officer looked gloomy, but he still reminded me of Captain Casanova from my favorite TV show called The Streets of Broken Lights. <laughs> A uh, Russian mystery TV series telling a story of the daily life of Russian police officers. It's the longest running series in the history of Russian TV at the moment. He was always so anxious with a tired look in his eyes, but still brave and strong. Will this mitten help them find the lost boy? Vova! I heard a distant shout, looking like it came from the river. Vova! as if the trees were calling out to someone. Vova resounded closer to me. Someone was standing there behind the trees, hiding. Vova. I knew someone was looking for the lost boy, but still, something was unsettling about that figure. Do you see it? I don't see it. Its stillness, how it was bent unnaturally toward the ground. Its blackness. There's no one there, just branches and tree roots. It's all just my imagination. A nearby bird flapped its wings loudly. Oh! A shadow split from the tree and disappeared from my sight. I looked away for just a moment when I turned my gaze back to the same place. It was gone. So it was my imagination after all. Silence reigned for a painfully long time. <laughs> My muscles were tightly sprung, my heart was beating somewhere in my throat. Any noise, any little movement, any small whisper from the thicket and I'd sprint. But nothing of the sort happened. I looked at the mitten once more. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh chat.
I'm gonna take it. I decided to take the lonely mitten from the branch. White bova. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. A shout rumbled across the field and dissolved into the distance. No echo, no hope for a reply. Oh! Oh! I stepped toward the bristly trees and tried to claim my find. It didn't budge. I pulled harder, the branch cracked, and the mitten tore off, landing in my hand with a squishy sound. All too heavy, wet. Is there a hand in there? I squeezed it without thinking, and something dark spilled from it, forming a tiny string between the mitten and the snow. Steam rose from the snow pile. Uh, I froze in place, studying my palms in disgust. Red, the sound of cracking branches invaded the silence. Oh, look at the steps. You see the steps? I didn't have to think twice before running away. Yeah, there were steps there. Someone who was chasing me from the darkness, breaking pine branches, closing the distance with giant steps. Snow was slowing me down. Crazy thoughts flew through my mind. I'll get caught. They'll get me. I'll get dragged into the thicket. I'll be gone forever. But there was one more voice, probably one of reason. I ga it gave me strength, spurred me on. You can do it. Don't stop. I heard an animal roar behind me. I heard a stock sound of an animal roaring behind me. I heard another stock sound. It was so loud, my ears went numb. It felt like the sound had come from a pack of hungry beasts rather than a single one. Their nostrils sucked in freezing air. They sensed my fear. Two giant wings flapped above my head. An enormous shadow flew over the clearing, a hoot, a wheeze. The roars were coming from all directions now, from the dried up raspberry bush, from twisting pines, from under the windfall. Hurry, run, don't look back. It felt as it felt like I was inside a nightmare. The snowy clearing, clearing was become vi had become vicious like quicksand. I was stuck in place. I pulled my leg from the mushy trap just to be caught in a new one, even deeper than before. I continued to drown, sinking deeper and deeper with every desperate push. Was snow ever this sticky? I screamed in horror after realizing this wasn't snow. Someone or something. Someone or something in the snow pile was clutching my pants. I gathered all my strength and rushed forward. The pressure on my leg was gone. The, my boot slipped out from the, the hole and my soles were on a hard surface again. I reached a clear path with one jump and from there ran to my house. Its gloomy facade didn't look threatening now. That house was my line of defense from the shadows that flapped their wings and the creatures that were hidden under the snow. I tripped over the doorstep and smashed into the door. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Um, in a small, in all my hurry, I still managed to notice the claw marks as if a dog was striking the wood with its paws demanding to be let in so it could escape the cold. I hadn't noticed these marks when I was leaving. The heartbeat in my ears was much louder than my surroundings. I couldn't hear whether someone was following me or not. What if they were already in our front yard and mom had locked the door? Drowning in fear, I pulled on the doorknob and it obediently gave way. I rolled into the hallway and shut the door behind me. Porch planks creaked as my per pursuers ascended the stairs. My fingers slipped off the lock and I couldn't click it into place. I gritted my teeth and pulled hard on the iron knob, whipping, uh, whipping it between the boards. I stared blankly at the door. Someone was standing at the other side of the pitiful, flimsy barrier that was probably less useful than blankets. Wheezing breath reached into the house and crashed at me in waves. It smelled of pine and sweat. Mom peeked out of the kitchen and chastised me with the same frigid voice she always used when talking to my dad. What exactly didn't you understand when I told you never to slam the door? I didn't mean to. I snuck a glance at the door. The smell was gone and the breath was too. If there was someone in the first place, of course. Here, mere five meters away from my mom, my fear was slowly weakening, melting like snow in spring. And with it, the last bit of strength I had left my body too. My legs gave way. I propped myself up against the wall so it wouldn't fall over. So I wouldn't fall over. Mom's, ex Mom's expression had changed immediately. 
The cold mast of strictness and detachment was gone. Mom looked the same as before all those quarrels. She finally saw my condition, my wet pants plastered with snow. Where have you been? What did I tell you, huh? I told you to stay home. Am I nothing to you too? I got afraid she would cry. I reached out to her like when I was very little and wanted her to cuddle me. But mom regained her composure fast and put on her usual face. Her eyes shined like steel. Her voice rang out. Your dad can't find his cigarettes. Be honest, did you snatch them? Were you smoking in secret? I, there was someone chasing me. I, I thought, I stuttered as soon as I started explaining myself. Tears welled up in my eyes. Mom leaned toward me and sniffed my clothes like a beast, searching for the smell of tobacco. Then she squinted her eyes in suspicion and looked into the front yard. Her expression changed in an instant and she covered her mouth with her hand. Look over there, at the fence. My heart started thumping as if I became prey once again and my pursuers were following me in the field. I could swear that I've heard something scratch at the door, just like in my nightmare. Mom beckoned me with her finger and I gathered all my remaining bravery to look at, into the kitchen window facing my fear. I could barely discern some hairy silhouettes swimming in snow through the icy winter patterns on the glass. Dogs! Just a small pack of strays with no name and owner, barely reminding uh, of the hungry monsters that live on the edge of the forest. Божечки, ты их испугался? Да они сами тебя перепугают, Антон. Oh boy, were you scared of them? I think they'd rather be scared of you, Anton. Они гнались за мной, словно за зайцем. They were chasing me like a bunny. А вдруг они бешеные? And what if they're rabbit? The smile had slowly disappeared from Mom's face. Now she looked at the dogs as if it was her first time seeing them. What if they attack Olya? Mom? Mom? I wish your dad could just shoot them all. Mom, look, they're alive. Huh? What? Are they your friend or foe after all? Make up your mind. You're not a little kid anymore. Mom sighed in annoyance, and I felt so bitter that I bit my lower lip and fixed my gaze on the cobweb-ridden corner just to keep myself from crying. Well, some detective I am. In reality, I wasn't risking my life among monsters, but rather my pants among a pack of stupid strays. And what for? What use do I have for this? Mitten. Of course. A darkened, sticky mitten that belonged to the lost boy made a squishy sound in my hand. Seems like I was clutching it the whole time. That's my trump card as a detective. I hurried to present this clue to my mom. Mom, look, Jesus, dude. Mom, look, it's a mitten. The police were asking about it uh, about in the morning. It's drenched in blood. I found it hanging on a tree. I can show where. Let's call the police right away, like the officer had told us to. Mom, Mom look. Ew. A shadow of doubt slowly crept onto my mom's contorted face, as if she was trying to remember something distant, like someone tries to remember their dream, but the images slip away. Stop at this moment. Olya will go insane if she hears you. She already has trouble sleeping and whines all the time. And you joke around like this. Oh. At that moment, I realized the mitten was actually wet from snow. And there was no blood whatsoever. I wanted to sink through the floor from embarrassment. <laughs> Come here, my boy who cried wolf. Oh, don't just stand there. Come take your pills? A golden-colored pill reminiscent of a dead wasp fell onto my palm. I already took one during breakfast. Don't talk over me. I told you to stay home, and you... Dad would have given you a good whipping for that. Come on. Take it, or you won't be able to sleep at night. And you have school tomorrow. 
So I had to swallow the bitter medication, drinking it down with similarly awful water that gave off a taste of chlorine. Maybe it wasn't Vova's mitten. Maybe it wasn't a mitten at all. Just like the forest monsters and Olia's owl. Am I going mad? What's happening to me? Either the pill had an immediate effect, or my overexerted brain didn't let fear inside anymore. Serenity washed over me, bringing yawny uh, indifference along with it. Anton, выпил? Можешь, если захочешь. Anton, you done? See, you can do it when you try. Раздевайся. Уснул, что ли? Take off your coat. Are you asleep? Нет, мам. Просто задумался. No, mom, I was just thinking. Интересно, о чем же? What about, I wonder? Так, глупости всякие. It's just something silly. Mom scrutinized me with suspicious eyes. As if she wasn't sure she was looking at her own son and not some doppelganger that came from the forest. Все нормально. Is everything all right? У тебя такое лицо было, когда милиционер про окно спросил. You had the exact same expression when the policeman asked you about the window. Все нормально, мам. I'm all right, mom. She heaved a deep sigh. Хорошо. Fine. It seemed like the house had changed. The sofa's fabric had become discolored. Fingerprints appeared on the bathroom tiles. The light bulbs also felt different, dimmer and yellower. Even the saliva inside my mouth had a different taste. A melody from Aladdin could be heard from the upper floor. Olya was done rewatching her favorite Little Mermaid episodes and switched to other tapes. I slowly changed into my home clothes, stopped before the sink and studied my reflection in the mirror like I was trying to solve one of those spot the difference puzzles. Then I went upstairs. Jafar and Iago's voices died down. I walked past Olya's bedroom and slipped into my own. My Triceratops figurine. I know about all sorts of dinosaurs, Velociraptors, Afrovenators, uh, Hypsiliophodonts. <laughs> Uh, I remember going to the movies to see Jurassic Park back when uh, we still lived in the city and taking pictures with the T-Rex in the hall. It turned its head and roared. It was awesome. And next to it was a Robotech Transformer. Hell fucking yeah. I love this cartoon. Yeah, right there. When a jet fighter speeds up in the intro among the sounds of blaster fire, you know that your next 20 minutes will surely be amazing. Zentradi space station is captured. Rick, get ready for battle. <laughs> I've dreamt of becoming an artist since dad bought me my first comic book. Fly magazine was the coolest. I especially liked the big space related edition with alien monsters in that funny episode about a gendarme, gendarme, gendarme. Fly, the first Soviet and Russian per periodic adult comics magazine. Extremely popular during the crazy 90s. <laughs> what made the magazine stand out was the refusal to use material from its foreign counterparts. I started drawing all kinds of stuff since that day, and I seem to be getting pretty good at it. One of my letters even got pr published on Fly once. Maybe someday they'll even publish my comic? Monsters, Ghosts, and UFOs. The Encyclopedia of Paranormal Phenomenon from Rossman Publishing. I've learned about the Loch Ness Monster. Hell yeah, dude. Medusa Gorgon and Bigfoot from there. Olya is always scared of this book. She could uh, barely handle sifting through the monster and alien sections with me, but the middle part where they start to talk about ghosts really freaked her out. I even remember hunting ghosts after I had read that book. I measured the distance between items on my table every evening and checked if they moved due to some supernatural force come the morning. They didn't. But to be honest, what was I expecting? To meet Casper the ghost? What? What? Wait. What? Wait a second. Wait a second. Who the fuck is that? Oh, is that Olya? 
Oh, what's going on there? <laughs> Wait a sec. Wait a damn. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> forest didn't look as grim during the day. Entangled tree branches in the distance in the snowy field between our house and the forest brought sleepiness to my eyes. But sometimes I would ca still catch myself looking in the window at the icy treetops instead of doing my homework. Uh, can we... How strange. I remember moving this curtain. <laughs> Fuck. One of the drawers was empty. I hid the policeman's phone number uh, with the mitten there. Where are you, Vova? The simple action drained the last bit of strength from me. <laughs> Excuse me. I sat on the bed. The end only then I noticed there was someone behind the curtains. My tired hand dropped to the sheets. Whether it was due to the medication I took or the stress I underwent, the room became uh, began to contort as if the wind was blowing the walls out like a pair of sails. The corners of the room bent and undulated. The only stable thing in the whole room was the figure between the windowsill and the curtains. A flimsy piece of cloth, piece of cloth was stuck to my hidden uh, to my hidden visitor. It reminded me of burial sheets. Olya. Olya. Who else w would be standing there? I stood up and licked my dried up lips. Olya, очень смешно. Yeah, Olya, it's so funny. The silhouette was unmoving. It was enveloped softly by the curtains, as if there was a thick layer of darkness there, not a human being. I reached toward the curtains, but dum, but dum, beat my heart, controlled by medication. The wind sang in the field with a chorus of voices. For a second, I wanted to return to the bed. Be careful. I will, buddy. Just lie down and watch the person behind the curtain, knowing full well they were looking back at me. Thank you, Brain Busta. They're looking without blinking, waiting for me to fall asleep. Plastic rings rustled against the holder when I pulled open the curtains. <laughs> Gotcha. I know it was you from the beginning. A blindingly bright halo lit up above Olya's head with the setting sun as the background. My sister was shining. When she was just a baby, Dad always uh, used to say she was shining with happiness. I always retorted, but Dad, she's not some flashlight. But I brought her to the window one day and sunlight poured on her, her smiling face. I felt like I was holding a light woven child. I saw everything. Oh, really? What did you hide? She was just like my mom when she was little, before she put on her sad mask of tiredness and switched to her commanding tone of voice. It's nothing, just... Olya ran up to the table, her eyes round, and asked, You stole something and hid it here? Are you a thief? <laughs> <laughs> what? Don't be stupid. <laughs> I didn't steal anything. A clear image came to mind. That mitten hanging from a tree branch. What if I did steal it after all? From the forest, from the tilted figure, standing behind black trees. Olya could be selfish and stubborn when she wanted. Then show me. Swear that you won't tell anyone, then I'll show you. <laughs> Olya wore a plotting smile. I swear on mom's heart. An oath she heard in one of the movies about the pioneers we've watched. Pioneer movement, an umbrella term for communist children organizations existing around the world, somewhat reminiscent of the scout movement. Ah, okay. <laughs> Don't say things like that. Olya nodded and made a gesture with her hand, locking her mouth with an imaginary key. She was filled with curiosity that was splashing in her giant eyes. I opened the drawer and Olya leaned in, holding her breath. It looked like there was not just some simple mitten, but some sort of exotic critter. Is this someone's mitten? She said that as if she couldn't understand what she saw. 
и сам потерялся. Теперь понимаешь, как опасно гулять в лесу, особенно детям. Ему, наверное, там очень холодно. Его найдут? Обязательно. Участковый по домам ходит, всем фотографию его показывает. Олия traversed the room with care and pressed her tiny palms against the window. А почему он по домам ходит, а не по лесу? And why are they going to the houses and not the forest? Боится. Are they scared? <laughs> the question caught me off guard. Милиционеры ничего не боятся. The police aren't scared of anything. If there's anything uh, legal, um, <laughs> uh, uh, the legal, uh, the the uh, legal system has taught us, it's that police officers are constantly in a state of terror. <laughs> Olia, I've got a really cool uh, VHS to show you that explains everything. It's called. Um, uh, 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 what, what was it called? Edged Weapons? Something about Edged Weapons, the red letter media one that they watched? I forget. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, Surviving Edged Weapons, that's the one. Yeah, I got it right before you got it, Clover. <laughs> got it r like a split second before you said it. Um, they've already scouted the forest. Yeah, right, flashed in my clouded mind. Did they really check every nook and cranny where darkness cold and whispers of icy branches dwell? If that's the case, how did they miss this mitten? Or did they did it appear later for me? Ooh, for me. I changed the topic, as if trying to get Olya as far away as possible from the forest thicket. <laughs> we may get a reward if I go and find this boy myself. A lot of stuff, like in Wheel of Fortune. Sounds cool, right? Did, did they have Wheel of Fortune? Field of Wonders, a Soviet and Russian TV game show still running to this day, coming out every Friday, can be described as a partially adapted version of Wheel of Fortune. Well, there you go. Huh. Asked and answered. Thank you, game. Olya wasn't listening to me. She was piercing the forest with incredibly adult eyes, uncharacteristic for her. What if the owl got him? Nonsense. An owl won't be able to lift a human. But you know what? I was picking my words that with utmost care I forced them out of my overexerted brain. Stay away from the forest. I think it's... How should I put it? It's cursed or something. Just like in a fairy tale? No, more like in that spooky tape our parents hide from us. Wait, what? Olya shivered a, and stole a glance at the window. I saw you running away. Someone was chasing you? No, it's just I was hurrying back home so mom won't be worried. As I looked at my sister, my heart was tearing apart. She was so fragile and was so easy to stifle her light. A gust of wind and her small fire would be gone. You're lucky. Mom won't even let me go outside. I'm <laughs> like a princess in a tower. I can't go anywhere. I'll die from boredom here. You're wrong. No one has ever died from boredom. And you have me and your cartoons, and mom and dad will be good with, to each other soon. You know what I would wish for my on my next birthday? Don't. Don't. Don't, game. No, don't. Oh, no. Don't. No. Fuck. Oh. Olya's like, you, you know... You know what I'm gonna do when I retire? <laughs> Fuck no. родители тоже в детей превратились, и мы бы все вместе играли, как раньше. I'd wish for mom and dad to turn into children so we could go and play together like we used to. Aww. Ага. А если бы они стали размером жука, то мы бы их в спичечный коробок посадили. Yeah, and if you'd make them as small as bugs, we could place them into a little box. 
Olya giggled and tugged at my sleeve. Tosha, let's go watch Aladdin. Fatigue won over my desire to be with my little sister. I was washed over by some sort of heinous apathy. I'm too tired. I don't want to. Come on. It's so boring alone and mom is always busy. We can pick a cartoon you haven't seen before. I know all of your tapes by heart at this point. Not all of them. You haven't watched Peter Pan. Remember how you fell asleep in the middle of it? And so much happens after that. Let's go, let's go. Maybe a bit later. Should I tell you how it ends? <laughs> let's leave that for tomorrow. I won't tell you tomorrow. Uh-oh. I know, let's play hide and seek. No, Olya. Then draw me a dino. Olya, Olya please. Draw it, draw it! Leave me alone already! I blurted it out without thinking, and then I was immediately taken aback. I never screamed at my little sister like that. Olya start, stared at me in shock. Oh, Her lips started trembling, a precursor to tears. My chest was seething with disgust and embarrassment. What's happening to me? I hurried to prevent Olya from crying. All right, you win. Let's go watch cartoons for a bit. I don't want to. I came up to her, put my hand on her soft head. Let's go. Let's go watch Peter Pan. <laughs> Boo, you'll fall asleep again. I smiled and lifted her chin. Her eyes were wet and felt bottomless. I promise I won't. And I'll draw you a full triceratops later. Yo, huge. <laughs> Hurrah! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> How do you... What's that? Uh, Hurrah! <laughs> Hurrah! Tripe <laughs> Tripe-seri tops. Well, close enough. Olya rubbed her eyes with a sleeve of her pajamas, and a shining smile returned to her face. I'll go ask mom for condensed milk and bread, and you rewind the tape. The bread is fresh, just how you like it. Alright, just be careful not to spill the milk. Or you'll be yelled at again. Wanna bet I won't spill it? The tape is somewhere in the nightstand. Look for it. Olya disappeared into the doorway, and I dragged my feet into the neighboring room. Piggy bank. A piggy bank. Olya is saving money for a real puppy, because Dad said that taking care of him will take a lot of money. Well, I definitely want to click this dude. Can't do it. The scary window where Olya sees that accursed owl every night lurking in the dark. Olya keeps curtains open during the day, but as soon as the twilight comes, she shuts them tight so she wouldn't be uh, see the pair of hungry eyes outside. <laughs> Olya's countless toys. An old teddy bear is the main attraction here. Olya doesn't sleep without it. And she digs her nose into its fur when she sleeps. Was it Sans? That's how Sans so sounds right. <laughs> right. <gasps> Chip and Dale! <gasps> Rescue Rangers. Is that the Pixar ball? That's the Pixar ball. A uh, all gray Rubik's Cube. Perfect. <laughs> Same though. <laughs> uh, is that a Teletubby? That looks like a Teletubby, yeah. <laughs> fun little, fun little things in here. Slinky. The old photo. What is. Oh. Huh. 
but his eyes look kind of weird, but I remembered he had, he had glasses. The old Photon TV was gathering dust in the corner. Digital auto, auto tracking, auto head cinema. Orion, hell yeah, that's the VHS logo, baby. Fuck yeah. All that was left was clicking the button on the front panel. The tube warmed up and familiar white noise started dancing on the black screen. I almost reached out to turn on the VCR when the noise calmed down and a blurry image appeared for a moment. It was a dark taiga forest, just like the one outside my window. The picture split the screen in half. Something creepy resembling human speech was coming out of the speaker. It was a number station? Just a few moments later, the scenery was again overshadowed by noise. Did I catch some rogue signal? Local TV station only really showed Soviet cartoons, and even then, that was pretty rare. And only just recently, I used to always watch Robotech before school. It was so awesome. Maybe I should tinker with the antenna. What if I catch the signal again? On the other hand, Olya had asked me to find the tape. It wouldn't be nice to disappoint her. But in my sleepy state, I didn't have the strength to do all of it. <clears throat> Shit. I kind of want to set it, but I also... Yeah, I'm going to be a good brother. Predator! Oh my god, we got to watch Predator. Pyaknovsyaka? Uh, show something. What we got? Uh, anything else? Let's just watch Predator, dude. I sifted through the shelves full of dolls and blue hippos for, from Kinder Surprise. I found the tape I needed thanks to its shabby spine. I got the black rectangle from its box. The tape inside it rustled while rewinding to the beginning. This rustle was lulling me to sleep. Drowsiness attacked me while I was squatted before the TV. Images whirled in my head, me and Olya flying above the forest, tumbling in the soft clouds. My little sister is laughing, but her smile becomes more and more forced with every passing second. I noticed that the clouds underneath us part, bearing the bristly pine tops. Swampy darkness slurped among the trees. The wings are no longer able to hold us, and Olya... You haven't started without me, have you? My sister brought the tray with unevenly cut bread and a whole can of condensed milk. Fuck yeah. She, every time I look at her, I think of... um, She looks like a Guilty Gear character. I forget who... But she looks like the daughter of, like, Kai Kiski or something. <laughs> I, every time I see her, I'm like, I, I just think of, like, I don't know why. It just hits me. It's, like, Kai Kiski because he, he was, like, I think he had that all-white, like, style thing. Anyway. Oh, Kier Faction. Kier Faction hit us up with another, another picture. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> nailed it. Absolutely fucking nailed it. Damn, I love your art, Cure Faction. Here, let's, uh... And then transform. Center on screen. Boom. Oh, that did exactly the wrong thing. <laughs> Anton, did you know I have just eight, three days left until retirement? <laughs> it's fucking beautiful. Oh, I love it. Cure Faction, you are fantastic. <laughs> Oh, this poor child. Uh, this poor child is so doomed. <laughs> yeah, It's either her or us. I can't imagine, like... <sighs> Shit, I don't know. Maybe if we get our... If we get all of the options right, then we'll save her. <laughs> I definitely won't feel... Man, if... If she does die, or the brother dies, uh, Anton, um, and I... And, I learned that you can save them. I'm I'm like reloading a save. I'm I'm, I'm, go, I'm going back. I'm safe scumming. My sister brought the tray with unevenly cut dragons. I rub my eyes. No, come sit. Mom and dad are arguing again. Also, I'm just gonna say, um, I, I'm kind of suspicious of the dad, because the the dad w went out there, 
and then came back. Like he went out and then just suddenly he's back. And then like we found the mitten. So it's like, did, did his dad, was his dad like in possibly have something to do with Vova going missing because maybe he was like dump dumping evidence in the forest or something, you know? Am I off base on that? I don't know. Whatever. Um, if I see a bunch of robot faces in the chat, I'll, uh, <laughs> I know I'm onto something. It's like Higurashi all over again. Anyway. All right, my voice is getting a little dried. <laughs> They're going through rough times. Rough times are lame. Agree. On the screen, Wendy was hiding Peter Pan's shadow into the dresser. Olya was entertained by the cartoonish dog Nana. I don't remember that from Peter Pan. <laughs> Maybe mom and dad will buy us a dog too. Yeah, right. Well, you can just go outside and grab one of those. I'll have my own dog in the Neverland. And a cat and a parrot. Olya smeared a slice of bread with a thick layer of condensed milk and handed it to me. Have you lost all your baby teeth? Obviously. Olya frowned, deep in thought. Peter Pan has baby teeth. What if they won't let you go to this land with adult teeth? We'll think of something. We'll ask dad to alter your age in the passport. <laughs> and why would dad forge documents? Olya took a bite from the sandwich and started uh, talking with her mouth full. He will. I heard mom say they do that before. Wait, what? He forged documents before? Yo, that's why they ran here? That's why they were upset? What the f- What? Wait, hold on. What? Oh, shit. You'll grow ears as big as Dumbo's. Olya got worried and touched her ear. I smiled to myself. My little sister was silent now. She just devoured bread, watching the adventures of Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, and James Hook. As if... Uh, she got sucked into the fairy tale Neverland. To be honest, I also imagined myself there in a land where no one ever ages, uh, where no one argues over little things, where no one listens to fights and the sound of broken plates at night. Broken, damn, dude. It felt like I was dreaming with my eyes still open. Then my sister's scream pulled me back to reality. Oops. Oh, should I save? I'm gonna save. Uh, Tosha, shut the curtains fast. Why? No one's watching you. It's dark, and when it's dark, the owl comes. I'm, I'm scared. I got out of bed fighting my own, my drowsiness, and closed the curtains. <laughs> I did my best not to look outside toward the treetops, toward the taiga forest, which seemingly drew closer and closer. Of course, it was just a visual effect from the uh, shadows of branches scraping the snow. Tosha, mom thinks I made the owl up. And dad, too, thinks I'm a liar since I'm small. But the owl exists. Honestly, honestly, it does. You do believe me, right? That it comes every night and... and no, oh. I swiftly grabbed Olya's hand and looked into her eyes. I was trying to transfer at least some of my courage and determination. But did it? Did I really have those qualities? Yes, I believe you, all right? Just don't nag our parents about it anymore. They're already dealing with a lot, so they'll just get mad at you. Come and tell me if anything happens. And don't look out the window. But it wants me to look. Doesn't matter. 
Act like it doesn't exist and never existed, like it's made up, just like mom and dad say. They'll get tired of waiting and fly away. We followed Peter Pan's adventures, as if nothing had happened, as if the forest didn't kidnap kids, as if our parents weren't tearing each other apart bit by bit. Captain Hook was running away from a crocodile and Captain Pan was uh, headed to London on a gilded sailboat. By some miracle, I lasted longer than my little sister. Olia's eyelids had dropped. She started snorting lightly, resting her chin on the side of the bed. I stood up and left Olia's room. I was looking out the window, studying the field when mom peeked into my room. Enough playing around. It's your first day of school tomorrow. Go to bed. You should sleep properly. You don't want to be teased for being sleepy, right? The kids get teased for being... Well, they get teased for literally everything. I guess that makes sense. Adults think everything is so simple. As if sound sleep would ensure my classmates would like me. <laughs> I covered myself with a blanket up to my neck and listened to the house humming to something invisible rustling in the corners. My inner voice had a question for me. Do I want to hear that mysterious flute again? Yes or no? Maybe it's just a part of growing up and I can't fully understand my own desires. The forest wailed behind the barrier that was my walls. Some ethereal entity wandered at the fields. Branches shook as if calling for me. The wind howled on, an, on and on in the night. My thoughts were like annoying flies that entered my head uh, before becoming weak and tangled. I didn't notice how I fell into slumber. It has come, after all. The day I feared the most. The first day of a new school term. Oh. All right, y'all. It's uh, midnight, so uh, I'm going to call it here. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks everybody for joining. Um, I'm going to stitch the VODs together because I'm fa this is fascinating. I, I'm i going to keep playing. Um, I think I'm going to play tomorrow at some point. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to episode two of Tiny Bunny. Let's go ahead and do this. Time to play with you. New school, new teachers, and most importantly, new classmates, who I always have trouble connecting with. Same, bud. Like most other kids with glasses, probably. I forced myself to get out of my warm bed. Oh, no, did you... Did you pee? <laughs> did you pee your bed? Uh, Dad, <clears throat> Dad would usually drive me to my old school, but this morning the bedroom of my parents was silent. Oh. Whoa, what? Oh. Did they sleep in? I was using my arrow keys and... Oh, huh. it's weird. Maybe it was a good thing. I didn't want to get the daddy's boy reputation from day one. What if I hit spacebar? Oh, cool, cool, cool. cool. I, I can hide my mouse now. My parents were probably still tucked in, dreaming about the good old days when everything was so simple and easy. Sweet dreams, even if far removed from reality. I silently sneaked out to the first floor so I wouldn't wake anybody, especially the peacefully sleeping Olya. I did my best to step in the middle of every floorboard. I used to play like this even in our old apartment. If my soles touched the space between the floorboards, it counted as stepping into lava. The clock was spurring me on with its hands. I need to hurry faster, faster. I was too fast, so I needed to circle the hallway once again. Boiling lava was bursting out from the cracks between the floorboards. I needed to watch my step to survive at any cost. Hippity hop, like a frog jumping on molehills, like a fearful bunny in a grove full of wolves. I made a sandwich in the kitchen, shoved it down my throat and drank it down with cold tea. My appetite was as good as of someone being led up the scaffold towards a guillotine. I lowered my gaze and saw that one of my feet was standing on two floorboards at the same time. Burnt to a crisp, huh? I moved my foot. Disgusting little snakes writhed in my belly, the fear of getting hit and being called nasty names. The clock clicked. I need to go. 
It was dark outside, fitting for an early winter morning. This darkness never fully left the houses around here. I took my time tying my shoes, buttoning up the puffy down jacket, trying to delay my unpleasant exit into the semi-dark, into the unnerving unknown. Wait, aren't they, they wasn't there a, there, there a, um, wasn't there a, a blizzard? Aren't they like, aren't they snowed in? Or is that my stupid American, like, kind of, <laughs> am I just like, oh, yeah, whenever it snows, it, well, Bob, it, what happens if it's snowing all the time? <laughs> uh, I rubbed my glasses for good luck, though I couldn't remember a single time these thick pieces of glass brought me any good fortune. Well, they can, they help you see, but. <clears throat> Whoa. Cool. The sky was akin to a giant bruise. That's sick. <laughs> I love the, the 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 writing. It's so it's so expressive. On the east side of it, a black cloud was swelling up. It licked up stars from the sky and extinguished the rising sun. Darkness was plastered all over the treetops. The cautious cries of birds got tangled up in the thicket. I locked the front door with a long key that I wore around my neck. This is a dream, isn't it? This is another dream. My parents made me wear this noose, afraid that I, being a total klutz that I am, could lose the key otherwise. The wind whizzed on the other side of the gate. I, it invited me into my new life towards dubious adventures. <laughs> and tagged alone like an old buddy pushing me in the back. Wide shadows that pines throughout covered a third of the clearing. Upon reaching the edge of the forest, I hid my noose in the coat's collar. I was squeezing through the thin firebreak, my hair ruffled up and my back hunched over. Tall trees stood on both sides of the tiny trail. The snowy blanket rustled under my feet and the canopy of intertwined branches above my head cut me off from the already sparse starlight. The night had no plans of moving away from the forest. In this darkness, trees reminded me of shaggy old women that smelled of burial earth. Their trunks turned into cracked, wrinkled faces with holes in the middle of their mouths. As their mouths. If I lost focus even for a moment, mold-covered witches would drag me into the forest's depths. Then my parents would be walking around these parts, screaming my name. But the dead can't answer the living. Mommy. <laughs> or can they? Mommy. <laughs> a sense of panic was growing in my chest. I was fine with Dad carrying me into the school in his hands by now if it saved me watching the darkness rise up in the ravines like black dough. It felt like someone jumped into the bushes behind me, so I turned around. As soon as I started walking faster, I start heard the snow squeak behind me. The forest took a deep breath with, uh, with its giant lungs. The windfall cracked. Yeah, you can hear a second set of footsteps. The wind and the birds were left behind in the field. Now I could only hear the forest creak. I walked, listening closely, and the unseen presence grew stronger, as if someone was following me, trying to match the pace of my footsteps. I turned my head so fast it made my neck crunch. <coughs> the tiny trail behind me disappeared into the darkness. Tree branches overlapped, forming a natural tunnel. Yes, this Who's there? The question escaped my lips and dissolved into the unending creaking sound of the wooden idols, the pines around me. Why did I think going through the forest alone was a good idea? I'm either going mad or someone had intentionally lured me away from home. Distant lights granted me a smidgen of hope. A country road. Take me home. I ran there as fast as I could. As if afraid that the trail will shrink, clawed hands will grip me by the shoulders, turn me around and make me look at the faces of hun hungry forest citizens. Excuse me. In the end, nobody stopped me. I almost flew to the decrepit wooden bridge, disbelieving my luck. The bridge's supports bathed in a spring, tarry and ice cold. I put my hands on my knees and looked up at the forest, then snorted, trying to calm my breathing. The thicket was pretending to be asleep. It looked peaceful, lifeless. The remaining part of my commute lied through a snow-laden road, illuminated by sparse lamplights. I chased away bad thoughts and ran as fast as I could, 
from one circle of light to another, seeking protection from electric lamps. What is this? Alan Wake jumped like in that game where you need to be the first to proclaim, I'm protected. Tag. <laughs> A kid's game where one player needs to tag other players by touching them with their hand, making them it in certain zones normally called the ghoul. Ghoul? Players can stay safe from tagging. Ghoul. Goal? Eh. It's just in this case that protection was flimsy at best, with darkness writhing or outside its bounds. Then I noticed something remarkably eerie. A furry. In a place where the light from an inclined lamp couldn't reach, a hairy, crooked shadow came alive with a guttural roar. Was this ASMR? It almost felt like its feathers deterred light. Its unnatural pose instilled fear. My eyes almost popped out of, out of their sockets as I just stood there blinking, trying to chase away the illusion. <laughs> it's a furry. But the shadow didn't disappear and even got closer. <laughs> shadow fall? <laughs> My insides were gripped by horror. I stepped back and almost fell into a snow pile. It's the shadow of the hedgehog. The black silhouette, on the other hand, straightened up and addressed me in a sweet voice. Sneaking around, huh? Trying to steal my soul? Words got stuck in my throat. <laughs> Made my voice crack. Uh, who could be talking in such a silky voice here between the forest and the dormant village? Will you say something, dummy? Cack out your tongue. All right, I'll bite off your nose then. That'll teach you to poke it in places it doesn't belong. A girl stood before me, judging from the voice and the silhouette. But I couldn't even reprimand myself for getting scared by a girl before noticing a gaping mouth under her hood with something dangerously shiny inside. I was stunned. <laughs> From the cavity of her hood, a frighteningly real fox face was staring straight at me. It's just her jaws weren't moving and her eyes were, weren't blinking. A mask! It's just a girl with a fox mask on! At least I wanted to think that. After a surprise like that, a nervous smile involuntarily crept onto my face. I was just... Going to school and then you... What about me? Never seen a fox feed a dog. And indeed, there was a small dog circling the girl's legs. One of the strays that were chasing me yesterday, probably. Bobby! Bobby! Sorry, I didn't mean to. After hearing my voice, the dog whimpered, lowers, lowered its ears, sniffed me out, and then started wagging its tail. I guess it smelled of bologna <laughs> that I ate it for breakfast. I was shifting my gaze back and forth from the dog to the girl. She didn't seem scary anymore, just weird. So you didn't mean to, huh? What's your name? I'm Anton. And you? And I'm not! <laughs> I don't think I need to translate that, but you can see her eyes now. She's weird. Definitely has a couple loose screws, but she has a nice voice. Even if she's got a weird, like, kind of warble effect on it. <laughs> uh, my astonishment has turned into a mix of happiness and relief. The girl I didn't know was definitely human, if a bit eccentric. I was right about being a furry. <laughs> my goth, well, goth wolf GF <laughs> critis of one, yeah. I was also a bit angry at myself. This foxy girl was walking through the uh, darkness without a problem, and I shuddered from every little sound. I could just walk away, but this girl had piqued my interest. The next time a police officer asks me about my friends at that new place, I'll tell him that I befriended a talking fox. Do you live around here? In the village? <laughs> the fox giggled and purred. She spun around so hard the hem of her coat lifted up. No, dummy. Foxes don't live in villages. So you live in the forest, then? Have you been living under a rock? 
страшно. Лисам среди людей не выжить. It's obvious that foxes can't survive anywhere near humans. Пока они лисы. As long as they're foxes. Her jokes are also weird. Just like her carnival mask, paper, ma paper mache with fur glued to it. That doesn't... Mm. I don't know about that. A dog reminded us of its existence with a loud bark. I... Un <laughs> uh, get your head out of the gutter. I infested my backpack. <laughs> Dad would sometimes throw food in there without my knowledge. <laughs> Cookies, apples, and even my favorite crab s sticks. Crab sticks? Crab sticks? No, I refuse to elaborate, Dial. <laughs> he called it a gift from the bunny. Treat from the bunny, the uneaten part of a business lunch or a treat specifically brought for children. Bought for children. Parents would tell their children that a bunny asked them to deliver said treat, but it could also be any other animal, a squirrel or a bear, for example. Oh, kind of cute. The stray strolled toward me with mincing footsteps, with a pleading look in its eyes. Puppy. The fox did definitely treat it to something, but it was probably still hungry. Why are you dressed like this so early in the morning? Going to a costume party? The girl shrugged, throwing silvery snowflakes off her nose and her human form along with them, turning into a genuine beast, a real fox, agile, cunning, dangerous. Hello? A moment of hesitation and you'll be ripped to shreds. She'll tear you up and gulp you down without breaking a sweat. I couldn't help but just stand there as a stump. Until I heard her calm, melodic laughter hidden underneath that beastly mask. I wish you could have seen your own mask, sweetie. Sweet. Did she say sweetie? I got embarrassed. Went red up to my hair roots. We'd seen a fox in a zoo once when we went there with dad, but it had patchy fur, was gray and skinny. But this girl was a fiery color and furry, just like in fairy tales. I was rummaging through my backpack. My fingers that were searching for the dog's treat stumbled upon some soft, crumpled object. You'll see. The real beasts will wake up soon. You should ask them where they got their human faces. The girl's shadow was dancing in the lamp's light. The dog yapped in agreement. Buddy. I freaked out and dropped my finding in the snow without getting a proper chance to examine it. Cold wind instantly covered the hole it created with snow. The dog rushed to dig it out, wanting to get its treat. And the fox just snorted. Now I was so embarrassed I wanted to sink through the snow. It was still dark outside of the electric circle. Outside of the electric circle. On the contrary, the darkness seemed even more thick. All neighboring houses were sleeping deeply in its inky inkiness. Inkiness. It is a very cute dog, Colossal. I did my best to continue the conversation with the weird, weird girl I didn't know. <laughs> I quite like that. <laughs> Sir, are you going to school? Oh my, you're a fucking stoop, aren't you? <laughs> Don't you get it? I'm so angry. Uh, well, I was trying to be friendly, but she can't stop mocking me, calling me a dummy and all. I should have just moved along. I should have just move al moved along without paying any attention to this weirdo and her stupid dog. Why are you so mean? Don't answer if you don't want to. It's not like I care. Still, something froze me in place, tugged me toward the dark figure. A mysterious appearance, her voice that was velvety and just languid enough. I was intrigued and excited. I watched her as people watch fires burn. Oh, stop pouting. Look here. Zulka took a liking to you. The dog was digging through the snow with sharp movements, snoring loudly. The fox turned around and looked at the windows of nearby of a nearby house. As it timbered, as its timbered front through the white mist, the, top, the tip of her fake nose was shining under the lamp's light. 
Doesn't that mean it's... If it's shining, that's wet. Is that... Is it real? And then maybe someone else, too. I went red again, like I boiled crayfish this time. Um, I, I trust you. I, I, <laughs> the black and white is preventing me. To, but yeah, I, no, I'll, I'll go with you. <laughs> is she talking about herself or someone else? I hope that the semi-dark would be able to hide my embarrassment from this girl. <coughs> I cleared my throat before asking. <laughs> and who's that person? I waited, counting my heartbeat. <laughs> the fox didn't reply. Her sly stare was scanning the frosty patterns of someone's windows. She was reading them with like a glass book. She was reading them like a glass book. Whew. I wonder what she can see in those winter paintings. The stray stopped rummaging through the snow. It ran to me, holding the object in her jaws. A mitten. Could it be the one I found in the forest? What was it doing here? What is it doing here? When I looked closer, I realized it was just my mitten. Maybe mom stuffed it in there when I was asleep. A certain missing boy immediately came to mind. Hey, do you know anything about Vova? Hey, do you know anything about Vova? I imagined the scene silhouettes dancing in the clearing. The dance on the night when Vova had disappeared. The boy who, when found, can provide a big reward and maybe save my family. I remembered my birthday when my parents promised to take me and Olya to Disneyland in Paris. But instead of a long anticipated gift, they gave me a simple brick game console, visibly embarrassed. Brick game. I was crying my eyes out back then, demanding to take me to the promised amusement park. That was the first time when mom and dad had a big fight. Oh, my greediness shattered their relationship. Oh. If only I could fix everything, gather everybody I love, and take them to Disneyland. On the night Vova disappeared, I think I saw someone like you dancing under my window. Hello? It couldn't be true, but it felt like her mask became even more sly. The fox was sniffing me out. Oh, that got you worried? For yourself or for someone else? Olya. As soon as I thought about my sister, my chest tightened and cold sweat streamed down my spine. Well then, listen closely, a boy named Anton. This is a big and scary forest. The fox girl stepped forward menacingly. And I am not its only tenant. The other beasts already know about you. Beware, we'll come again tonight. I shouldn't have talked to this evil in child form, I thought, panicking. When you and your parents will be fast asleep, we'll sneak really close and dance. Macarena. Macarena. Huh? Hey, Macarena. <laughs> oh. Uh, look at you, your mouth is agape, Antosha. Antosha? He saw me near his window at night. Yeah, right. Are, are you by any chance a dimwit? Nobody would let me go outside that late. Children go missing here, you know. Are you a dumb? Why did my voice crack like that? Are you a dumb? There, better. <laughs> my foot, hold on, I gotta wet my whistle. Diagnosed dimwits. <laughs> uh, all right, y'all, cheers. Get your, get your drinks out. Get your drinks out, let's go. Get the drinks, drink them if you have them. Uh, yeah, I got raspberry pure leaf, let's go. I'm hooked on this shit. I, 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 by the way, 
still going strong without the caffeine. So, or not the caffeine, but the um, energy drinks and stuff like that. So, it's like two weeks now, two two and a half, I think. So, cheers, y'all. <sighs> Delicious. These things are really good, by the way. Not too sweet. I love the music now. It's really nice. I touched uh, the plastic frame of my glasses, puzzled by her silly joke. She got me scared to death. Yeah. D does Anton have frame of reference for a Macarena? <laughs> hey, why don't you stop fondling your glasses? I was also nearsighted once. Listen to me. And maybe you'll become smarter. <laughs> Remember what did they call foxes? C cunning? My words seemed to hurt her. <laughs> oh. Hey. What did you... Um, sorry. Her laughter was akin to the jingle of a pair of silver bells. Just pulling your leg. Of course we're cunning. If we're agile and brave. Enough to befriend a cunning fox. I'll help you look for your vova. There's a reason why you're doing it, right? I shrugged in her reply. Her insight was alarming. I know why children have been swarming our forest recently. Sometimes you can find a lot of interesting stuff there. One day, I saw a huge pile of candy once, and I swam in it until my jaws cramped. A pile of candy? I couldn't deduce whether she believed in what she was saying from the tone of her voice. I showed her another smile, a fake one this time. Ooh, so wary. Well, what will you say to this then? Turbo! Yo, I want turbo. She held out her hand in a furry mitten. There was an assortment of sweets in her palm. In the city where I used to live, sweets like these were sold in markets or in kiosks. I, what is it? What? By God, what is a kiosk? A small container type shop selling a wide uh, assortment of products from bubblegum to vodka. Uh, clothing, or even home appliances. These types of shops were popular in 90s Russia and were often than not tied to criminal organizations. Well, that is... is it, we know what kiosks... I, I, we know what kiosks are. We have that word in, um, in America, but... but th thank you for the extra... <laughs> the, the fucking uh, crime syndicate explanation. That That's huge, actually. <laughs> um, all right. I saw my favorite bubblegum and a vivid raptor among the tasty treasure. Turbo! Familiar name on it. Turbo! Grab the turbo! A triangular fox face poked her nose toward me. Take some. Don't do it, Anton. My pockets are full of these. <laughs> nah, bro, no! No, no, thanks. I I didn't want to offend this person I've made contact with in this new place, but I also didn't want to take gum off the hands of some weird girl. What if she found it in a snow pile? Or what if it's some prank candy that kind of blows up in your face when you unwrap it? I'm allergic to sweets, Anton. My boy. What's, what's Russian for boy? <laughs> hey, Siri. What's Russian for boy? Maichk? <laughs> My Maichk. <laughs> Aller... Aller... What? She sounded puzzled. <laughs> Are you living in the world of pills and mixtures? <laughs> oh, more or less. <laughs> Her palm was empty now. It floated in the air, catching snowflakes now that all the candy had suddenly disappeared. And you only celebrate New Year's once in 12 months, right? And you have those... 
She clicked her fingers trying to remember something. Mondays? No! <laughs> no! Why did you have to remind me of the Mondays? No! Just like my friend Garfield was talking about. Yeah. I smiled. Man, you're a difficult case. I prescribe you a kilo of chocolate to battle your boredom, young man. <laughs> Yuck, you rejected the fox's treat. Who are you? I refrain from asking that question. She wouldn't answer anyway, or she'll just lie. I was becoming more and more sure that underneath it wasn't just a simple young girl. What if Vova also found a snowpile with sweets and is now rolling in it? Actually, what if he decided to stay in the forest? He must be so cold without his second mitten then. The wind caught her words like smoke from a fire and carried them deep into the darkness into the creepy thicket. The trees behind me cracked with their bony branches. Or what if something happened to him along the way? Something terrible. The forest reacted to her words, became alive, it sniffed me out, perking up its ears just like a curious beast. The fox girl pierced me with her eyes again. Wild beasts? You find that scary? Well, I don't know. He doesn't know. Oh my, have I befriended a dunce? Are you? Stupid. <laughs> I didn't like being called a dunce, yet being friends with her sounded nice. My grades are good. Really now? <laughs> Will you come with me? Good grades, Anton. We'll find your Vova, and you'll be able to ask him what he found deep in the forest. As long as you're with me, nothing can hurt you in the forest. You'll see. Worms of worry writhed in my belly. Better run, whispered my mind. I don't believe you. Do you take me for a liar? Whatever, you're just like everybody else. What, I think that was a misspelling. <laughs> I think you're just like everybody else. Azla. The girl sounded hurt, although I didn't know if she was genuine about it. She turned around. As if she had immediately lost all interest in me. I remembered my dad's favorite saying, Where are your manners, son? Indeed, the fox was kind to me. Please don't get mad. Foxes can also be nice. Like in fairy tales. I just need to know what kind of fox you are. The girl giggled, hiding the nose of her mask in her hands. <laughs> Sorry, one second. <laughs> Hard to breathe all of a sudden. Then follow me into the forest and you'll get to know me. But not right now. When it gets bright. I mean, your whole body is shaking, you poor thing. I don't want you to get a stroke. Hey, let me accompany you to school. Hi, Karma uh, a Dragoness. Hi, welcome. After hearing this, uh, the dog barked in agreement and stopped messing with the mitten. I leaned in, trying to grab the piece of handware that almost ran away from me. Well, if we're going in the same direction. We went toward the school and the lost dawn. Here and there, the lights became. Uh, here and there, the lights came on in the windows of houses we passed, as if their inhabitants were sending us warning signs. Silhouettes lurked behind curtains. Dogs let out occasional barks. Spirals of gray smoke rose from chimneys. TVs bustled, and dishes ch clanged in kitchens. We watched the village slowly rise from its slumber, while carefully treading 
the snowy wheel trails. Uh, Karma Dragon S, hi. Thank you for, uh, for your cool things. A good day. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> very, uh, you're very much welcome. Um, I walked in the left one, and she took the right one. The dog was following right behind us. I expected the fox to bring up something weird again, but she stayed silent all the way to the school, as if playing with me some game she only she was privy to. She would only giggle from time to time when the dog sneezed from the snowflakes that fell on its nose. I was the first to break to silence. So what's your name? Here it comes. Names, names, names. You people always need to put labels on everything. What name would you give a fox? Give to a fox like me? I don't know. But I've read about Elisa the fox. You know what? I don't mind. I'll be Elisa. I couldn't understand if she was joking or not. I turned around as if looking for an answer from the dog from the dark sky devoid of the dawn. My silent questions were left unanswered. <laughs> it's fucking Russian school. <laughs> fucking dude just like token <laughs> the school's outline was already in our sight just i'm just looking at i'm just this guy is making me laugh i don't know why <laughs> it's just like i i don't know uh, i don't know how they perfectly encapsulated what what my mind imagined russian school <laughs> it was just it's this it's literally this <laughs> a giant brick box stuck in the endless night Lights in its windows uh, didn't bode well for me. The warden trees were guarding the schoolyard. Yeah. <laughs> Screams, childish laughter, and someone's whistling tore up the silence. I went here with my mom when we just moved and the place looked cozy at that time. Empty corridors that smelled of polish, puffy snow outside. The second time I came alone to get my books and just kept on imagining my peers rolling down the railings, grade schoolers running to the library and teachers marching down the corridor with the air of self-importance around them. High schoolers were smoking at the entrance in track pants and wool caps perched on their foreheads. Their appearance destroyed the last of hopes for my cozy school. Their stingy eyes and teeth yellow from nicotine their smirks, all of it, had the same gloomy effect as the cloudy winter morning. Absorbed by my thoughts, I completely forgore about my companion. I'll wait for you in the backyard after school. Near the hanged man. Near what? She just ignored my question. Don't be late. I hesitated. Blowing hot and cold again, Mom always said that when I would have trouble between, uh, choosing between two options. Thinking about Mom helped me reply. I'm going straight home after school. Well, Antosha, I'm going to let you off the hook. Is Antosha like... Is it like the difference between like in America we have like, um, like Rob and Robert? Is Anton and then Antosha? Is that just like a like a non nicknamed version? I don't know what to call that. I think so. Okay. Antonio, yeah, but Mr. Waterplant, I think so. I remember in Metro Twenty Thirty Three, some characters refer to Artyom. Artyom as Artyomchka. Ah, okay. Russian has a lot of diminutives, if I'm not mistaken. It is diminutive, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, I forgot that. I forgot what it, what that was called. It is a nickname. There's Tosha, Toha, and Tosha, etc. Okay, so that's just like Bob, Bobby, Robert, Rob. Yeah. Roberto. <laughs> Roberto. Um, but the others will creep up um, to you with their smiles and sink their teeth into you. Won't be able to shake them off as easily. Remember my words. The fox opened her mouth in a wide yawn. What kind of trick is this? Someone running in the distance called out my name. I instinctively turned around. Oh! A huge snowball whizzed past my shoulder and hit the dog. 
It whimpered and ran toward the spring. The darkness devoured it. The fox girl was also nowhere to be seen. She dissolved into frosty air. What the fuck? Or was she hiding in my shadow? After taking a deep breath, I went toward the school, toward the cutlets and dough, toward the light raining down onto the snow. Motherfucking pieces of fucking shit. <laughs> there was a fresh looking Volga parked nearby with one of its front wheels perched up on the, the icy curb. Curb. <laughs> <laughs> that spelling of curb. Uh, black like sooth, soot, um, as if it was straight out of the horror story Dad loved to tell me when we hid in the attic during a thunderstorm. I remember him always wearing a sad smile while mentioning the black car that snatched children. He would say, it looks like a funeral car on the inside, white curtains and all. And it has DSC in its license plate. Do you know what that means? Death to Soviet children. <laughs> what kind of, what kind of uh, fucking secondhand Stephen King is this? <laughs> Funny, I was born in the USSR too. <laughs> uh, whose nest is this, I wonder? A thieving magpie? Then it probably has all sorts of shiny things in it. Pieces of colored glass, bottle caps, polished coins, or child braces. <laughs> Here, I'll give my best, uh, my best blinking white guy impression. Or wait, no. I did it. All right. Smoking guy. <laughs> it's making me cough. A tall man was standing near the gate, uh, puffing uh, out clouds of smoke into the wind. He didn't look like a teacher. Was he a PE guy, maybe? Ah, he's looking at you, run. I carefully studied his face that looked like it was cut from a piece of granite and his hair lip that was holding down a cigarette. He was playing around with car keys and staring back at us. The light from the cigarette was reflected in his eyes that were sitting deep in his eye sockets. I froze in place. The hulking man lazily tore off his eyes from us and walked toward the road. Oh shit. Who the fuck was that? <laughs> A buzzing crowd of upperclassmen with their winter hats tipped to the side. Oh, that means they're cool. Uh, I'd better not draw their attention. Well, you gotta go inside, bud. I could hear muffled voices behind the doors, uh, saw blinking lamps. Darkness creeped along the windows, and it felt like the school was drifting in an open space, like a lonely, lost spaceship. After going up to the second floor, I noticed a crowd around the notice board. Oh, yeah. Everyone was taking part in a lively discussion. I moved closer and took a look at something everyone was interested in through a wall of backpacks. There was a piece of paper with something printed on it glued to the left of the notice board. Can't do anything else. Huh? Attention, child missing. Vova Machulkin. Ma Machulkin? I'm 10 years old. Vova Machulkin, uh, 10 years old, grade 4, B. He left his home on January the 5th around 16 o'clock, four o'clock, and never returned. Was last seen at the bridge over the Smor Smorodina River. He was wearing an orange coat with a hood, a black wool cap, a scarf and mittens with green stripes. Might have had a plastic toy gun on him. So the police shot him and now they're hiding um, that they, they killed him. 
they thought he was armed and they that's the that's the twist for an american audience there you go <laughs> it's, it's not really a twist literally has happened anyway um child missing Vova Machukin, that was his name, a fourth grader. On that grainy print, Vova looked dead with a black mouth and dark, empty eye sockets. Could it be that the darkness dwelling deep in the forest invaded his pores and mutilated his face? A plastic toy gun couldn't protect him from the whispering branches and the howling wind. Empty eyes of the lost boy pierced through my soul as if pleading. Unable to meet his stare, I turned around and rushed to the window, took a seat on the windowsill. The corridor was slowly filling up with children in groups of few. Nobody paid me any mind. In the darkness of school toilets, children's voices were hammering a nursery rhyme. For the fox and for the bear, bunny tasty meals prepare. I turned my head toward them, trying to get a better look at their features, but then my attention was stolen by a loud clicking sound. Ah. A female teacher marched down the corridor with her chin raised high. Her heels were hitting the floor like miniature hooves. A girl was trailing her every step. She was also looking pompous, stopping along the way and whispering some secret in her friend's ear. She was probably a class rep since she was carrying an attendance register book. Yekaterina, возьми, пожалуйста. Ekaterina? Take this, please. Ekaterina. How do you do that? Like, uh, <laughs> the teacher opened the classroom door with the crowd of children swarmed in, screaming and pushing. <laughs> Fucking me. <laughs> Out of all of them, a tall, red-headed, fat boy caught my attention. His face was full of blisters. <laughs> he looked like the insides of a pomegranate. <sighs> <laughs> it's so fucking me. <laughs> uh, I didn't realize I was in this game. <laughs> A bad feeling risen up the hair of the on the back of my head. I've seen boys like him before, unsettled eyes, cackling laughter. The girl who was a smaller copy of the teacher warned the boy with a wave of her hand and entered the room through the clearing in the crowd. Some other guy stood in the way of the crowd, and the redheaded the redhead immediately shoved him. Move your legs, moron! Okay, maybe maybe it's not me. The boy flew headfirst, flailing his hands, trying to keep his balance. Okay, that's definitely <laughs> the fat. So burst out laughing, and a couple of kids joined his nasty cackling. All right, now we're entering um, R.L. Stein territory. <laughs> Fucking fat shaming and shit. Here we go. I like how they, <laughs> whatever, whatever, I'm not, I'm, whatever, we're just going to keep going. <laughs> Their laughter rounded like someone was snipping with huge garden scissors. The classroom sucked all of the kids in, the corridor stood empty. I wanted to grow roots and stay on the windowsill. Just a handful of lampposts outside were battling the darkness, writhing like fluorescent fish in the black ocean. Maybe I can still run away, go outside, dissolve in the dark. I imagined myself running through snow, how it squeaks under my boots and how I'm becoming lighter and lighter with every step. Ow. The ringer's trill blew the, that illusion away. I tore myself from the window with great effort. Then took a couple of breaths, trying to at least calm down my mad pulse, and entered the classroom. The prim teacher looked at me over the frame of her glasses, clearly annoyed. Well, fuck you too, then. I'm the transfer student. I was told to come here. The snowy forest trail was winding in front of my eyes. The pines rustled, but it didn't sound predatory anymore. Hmm. Hmm. She buried herself in the register and flicked through the pages. Your last name? P Petrov. Petrov. Huh? What are you mumbling there? Say it clearly. Petrov. Petrov. 
Hmm, you're not on the list. She measured me with a long and heavy stare, as if trying to see if I was lying. I wanted to sink through the floor. Hazy faces observed all that all that from the left. Hazy faces observed all of that from the left. The classroom breathed and snorted in unison, like a living organism, like a dangerous beast. Are you sure? I don't have you in my register. My knees chose the worst time to start shaking, and I felt dizzy. I clutched my fists so hard, my knuckles became white, like my hair. <laughs> they told me to come to classroom 204 to ask for Lil Lilia Pavlovna, class 6C. <laughs> Apparently, everyone in the classroom took my words for some sort of joke because they were all laughing. What's wrong with this school? The classroom fell silent. The kids hid their smirks uh, for a better occasion. Why do we hire so many interns? They all, they all know, know how to put lipstick all over their bulging lips. But when it be comes to real problems, I have to solve everything. How did they send you here without any proper paperwork? Ugh. We've had the same thing happen so many times already. Wait here. I'll be back. After I have a little chat with them. The teacher flew past me, mumbling something to herself in righteous anger, and I was left standing at the center of the classroom. Like a convict in front of a firing squad, I lowered my gaze, feeling the mocking stares from all around the classroom directed at me. They prickled my skin, danced on it like laser sights. Boy tummy. <laughs> Once again, I imagined running far away from this place, fighting the clawing wind soaring high above the plains in one long jump, like a tiny bunny, <laughs> with the wind in my back as my only companion. The eyes of my future classmates were asking, this new boy, is he one of us or an outsider? <laughs> Somebody whispered something and stifled laughter rolled through the classroom. <laughs> Wipe the board. It was easy to guess who the main prankster here. Who was the main prankster here? Hey, four eyes. Are you not only blind, but also deaf? I said, wipe the board. My knees weren't the only shaking part of my body anymore. I was trembling from head to toe and I prayed for the teacher to come back sooner. My prayers were answered by the powers that be. Oh, well. Well, never, well, fuck me then. <laughs> and what should I do with you now? Is is the twi Why does he have white hair? Like, is that? I keep thinking, like, is he a ghost? Is he a g -g -g ghost? <laughs> is he like some? Ah, oh, man, I don't know. I, am I? Am I? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Might be reading too much into it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Stress. That could just be like a, a stress thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what kind of ghost is Anton? Uh, let's go through him. Um, hmm. Uh, could be a Yure. Um, what about what about a phantom? Um, Zazo, I think him and Olya are implied to be albino, but that's it. Okay. Zazo, I don't buy that. You're a liar. <laughs> I think you're fucking with me. Where will you sit? Oh, well, you can sit with Semyon, I guess. Sazo is always lying. <laughs> He's alone anyway. No way. The fatso put his backpack on the seat behind him in defiance, scratched his belly and smirked. Are you back to your old tricks? Should I call your grandma here again? The classroom went silent. <laughs> and what's she gonna do? I'll be the one to do something if she doesn't. Put away your backpack now. Semyon didn't move a muscle. He started studying the portraits of writers on the wall, looked looking bored. <laughs> I needed to do something to resolve this somehow, to save myself. I... I cleared my throat and continued in a stifled voice. That sounded nothing like me. I can sit in the last row. I think there's a free seat. The teacher snorted loudly. <laughs> she 
He looked at me, then at Semyon, then back at me. Fine. Go there for now. And you, Baburian. Baburian? Is that like uh, uh, Russian for barbarian? Yes? No? Maybe so? I'll have a talk with you later! Come to me after classes. You'll be on cleaning duty. Got it? <laughs> I can't even... Get... <laughs> Semyon. Forced out a twisted smile. Juicy pimples were growing on the tip of his nose, ripe for the taking. Oh! Oh, fuck, no. <laughs> God. Ugh, I take everything back. I take everything back that was nice about the writing. Ugh. Ugh. So Anton walked up to Semyon and just, <laughs> just his whole nose. Ugh, ugh. Uh, I walked carefully, afraid to stumble and fall, causing another outburst of laughter from everyone. I took my seat at the back at the last. <laughs> you did that exactly at the at the when he sat down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so. I took my seat at the back at the last table, where I was met with a pile of old posters. The outcasts took their seats, and the class was ready to start. Now this is settled, let's start the class. Today's theme is traditions of Russian and international literature in Zoshenko's Don't Lie. <laughs> the fatso turned back to me. His stare informed me of the coming days, weeks, and months of bullying. I've got my eyes on you, said his watery look. He died. After just a couple of periods, I had noticed a huge yellow spit stain in my notebook. Then at the cafeteria, the Semyon accidentally spilled a glass of compot on me. Wait, no, go back. Compot, a dessert drink brewed from a mix of dry fruit, fruit and berries. Interesting. Um, and then he flailed his hands around after exiting the toilet so some of the liquid from his hands would get on me. Just before the final period of the day, Semyon pushed me into a buzzing crowd of girls from our class. It's Evangelion. Uh, they made way cursing, but I couldn't hold my balance and ended up ramming my face into the girl I took for the class rep before, right in her chest. Oi. Ow! I immediately stepped back, dying from embarrassment. I'm sorry, are you all right? Yeah. I... Then she suddenly put her hands on her hips. Will you look at him? Groping me in front of everyone. I'll tell my mom! They'll expel you, pervert. <laughs> oh god, what kind of game is this? There was some, some sort of sadistic pleasure in her eyes, as if she was a child who was about to put a lit up match to the chafer beetle. To the chaf chafer beetle? I wonder if that's an expression that would that would like translated translated a little bit better as like uh, as if she was um, like frying ants with a magnifying glass. Like does that does that make sense? Hmm. I'll just keep going. I didn't mean to. He pushed me. We all saw that, you know. No blind among us. She stared at my glasses while showing me a creepy smile. I started to fume on the inside, but Semyon's laughter cooled my head. I pushed you? You sure? He swaggered up to me, enveloping me in the smell of sunflower seeds and rotting teeth, and then pushed me to the ground. <laughs> Like this, huh? What you gonna do now? The bully towered over me as if saying, Come on, hit me. Let me see you try. Mm. What we do, chat? I'm saying fight him. Fuck him up. I'm saying fuck him up. Child violence. 
<laughs> One punch in the face. Oh, no. Oh, v right. Oh, God. Oh, that's actually making me queasy. <laughs> I just thought of uh, if <laughs> if Anton punches Semyon in the face and then he takes his hand back and it's just covered in pus. Oh, oh. Oh, why did I eat right before this? <laughs> oh, I'm fighting him. Listen, you. My throat went dry. My lips were moving on their own and my voice was akin to a stifled squeal. <laughs> Simeon wore a mocking smile. Go on, four eyes. Why'd you stop? We're all waiting. If you ever touch me again, Samian slowly stuck out a finger and poked my forehead. I did. So what? If you ever do it again, here. <laughs> Once more. And again. And again. And again. He was poking me with his finger so hard. And my head tilted backward. I must not cry, or I'll be done for. What will a wimp like you do to me? Hmm, what can we do? Maybe something in the backpack? Hmm, I don't know. We'll see. My vision went blurry. My soles tore off from the floor. I rushed toward uh, forward and threw a random punch without looking. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! What I saw when I opened my eyes was beautiful and horrifying at the same time. My fist covered in puff. <laughs> Semyon was holding his ear and blinking in amazement. No pain, you used force. Was I the first person to rebel against this? his absolute rule? I needed to run, but I was already surrounded by his cronies. Lilia Pavlovna. Lilia uh, Pavlovna Petrov just hit Baburin. Uh, Semyon's cheeks grew even redder and his pimples even whiter, like the heads of a larvae. Uh, a larva. Uh, but a smile flashed on his face that was only noticed among his comrades. He got really close to me. The smell of rotting teeth washed over me. You are fucking done. His voice was evil and dangerous, like someone tore off the lid from a kettle while, while with boiling fat. I was waiting to get hit, counting the thumps of my heart and guessing where the fist will go. The solar plexus, the jaw, the nose. But he just turned around and walked off. A thought, cold and sober, extremely rational, popped into my head. I'm going to get killed today. <laughs> I'm in danger. I was late uh, to leave the school after classes on purpose. Semyon didn't attend the last period, so I was hopeful. What if he decided to dodge the cleaning duty and ran home, forgetting all about me? I heaved a sigh of relief, like someone on death row whose execution was delayed for, by a day. But I didn't let myself forget his tone, his vengeful gaze, and his scary, electrified smirk. While the other students were leaving the school laughing loudly, I was pretending to skim through the books near my near a window. I was staring outside, nervous. Semyon was nowhere to be found in the front yard or near the school gate. Okay, question. Um, so when Anton went to school, it was clearly nighttime and they, they showed the moon. Um, this, this is one of those things where I just haven't thought of it before, but I guess in, in Russia and uh, like the way that time or uh, the way that time works the way that uh because you're further north i guess yeah that would make sense right i assumed it was like 6 a.m or something yeah but the moon was like super high up it was very very early in the morning okay all right i was just thinking like maybe uh, maybe kid because yeah um i don't remember i have one memory of coming back from school after an after school event during like I forget when it was, but we, we came back at like 6 p.m. and it was like really dark outside. And that's like, I, I don't think I've ever gone to school that early. So, No, you're right. Time moves at slower speeds in Russia. No, no. What I mean is like the, the shift, like 
the the sun i was thinking for some reason it's it's uh, like um alaska maybe or, or or um because i hear that like you you go to school like uh, the, the, god damn it it's just uh, the sun sets and uh, like the, it's more extreme is what i'm trying to say it's like it is definitely a visual trick uh elise oh gorwing up it would often be dark going into and coming back from school at 8 to 9 p.m it is it still can be dark during the morning yeah 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 schism schism that's basically what i'm saying um it's just that i didn't know if that was like um more extreme i guess in russia but anyway um lexicon devil like during dawn venus projects uh, oddly so that it looks like it's rushing down from the horizon like a ufo cool that's fucking sweet winnie winnie knows what i mean winnie's got me simian was nowhere to be found in the front yard or near the school gate i didn't really believe i was this lucky so i decided to be extra cautious and stayed from uh stayed for some more time in the corridor that was gradually getting less crowded all of the bustle moved to the first floor there was a skeleton peeking out of the biology classroom. Some jokester put a cap with the American condor on its head. The sound of running water uh, were coming from the bat was coming from the bathroom. I was the only person left in the whole school. I'm not alone. A sudden thought came to my mind. I remember the missing boy. His portrait was on the notice board near the schedule. <laughs> I remembered his smile. <laughs> the cat with the black eyes. Him looking at me. And the fact he's mostly likely, uh, most likely already dead. Hello. I shuddered and turned around. God? <laughs> At first, my eyes stumbled upon the black violin case. Then I noticed a girl from my class was holding it. Yo. <laughs> She sat in the first row of the second column. I uh, could swear I caught her looking at me a couple of times. And I was sneaking glances at her myself. Oh, you kids. Sometimes it just feels nice to look at something pretty. <laughs> the spring, the sky, or a girl that's not in the crowd that laughs at Semyon's jokes. Oh. And she wasn't whispering the dirty laundry of other people to Katya. She spent all the breaks just like me, staying in the classroom or looking in the window or drawing something in her green notebook. Hello. I turned red and pretended I was studying the pattern on the wooden floor. Kid, you gotta work on not turning red. <laughs> it was cool the way you hit him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hell fucking yeah. <laughs> It was just an accident almost. Anton! Wait, what was it again? Hey Siri, what is boy in Russian? My chick. My chick. My My chick. My boy. <laughs> just. That was fucking sweet. Hell yeah, it was. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> I started shoving books into my backpack to at least put something in my hands. Semyon wasn't like that before. He also transferred here just recently. That's how it goes. His grandma told me that it was almost, it almost felt like he went mad. Even the upperclassmen fear Semyon, did you know? But you're different. You're brave. <laughs> I mumbled in reply. Yeah, right, me, brave. A hero that has been standing around in the hallway to avoid a beating. The girl looked at me with her clear, attentive eyes. Did you live over the river? You live in the van? In that wooden house? Yeah. Duh. Must be scary living there. If they say, if one of these kids says, that place, I heard that place is haunted. Y'all, I ain't fucking around. <laughs> they have white hair because they're dead. They're all dead. Something happened. Oh, no. The kids, the children. 
And also, uh, and you also have to cross the forest. Oh, that's another thing I, I forgot to mention. A uh, little, little um, fun fact, Zazo, you might appreciate this. Um, my parents um, got together in the Air Force, and they had me um, when I was uh, when they were stationed in Berlin, Germany. So um, they uh, guess what? My parents are pretty familiar with <laughs> uh, Russian. They were they were uh, in the Air Force, so they they have a lot of. Uh, uh, they, my mom especially tries to uh, keep up with uh, her Russian, but yeah, my mom was, was basically doing a lot of that stuff. So I, I actually have a little bit more knowledge of the Russian language than, uh, you might expect. Um, so anyway, oh, wow. Winnie and Beaver, y'all, y'all are Air Force, uh, Air Force kids. Y'all are, uh, uh, Air Force brats. Clover Femu, yeah, easily the big week to me. At least it's contained basically to this chapter. Oh, uh, what, what? Sorry, I, I love reading a comment that's clearly like responding to something completely wildly different than what I'm talking about. Oh, the fat stuff? Yeah. Is it contained to this chapter? Well, that's good. The fat stuff is really... Uh, um, in a word, fucking annoying in two words, <laughs> but yeah. Jan, what's up? Jan uh, says, I grew up near a base, but didn't have any family in it specifically, but fuck man, there were a bunch of uh, planes all over town, multiple museums about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, actually for um, a holiday gift, I, uh, my, my parents loved, because I believe they were working on it, um, it to, to some extent, but um, the SR-71, um, uh, they love that plane and actually for a gift um, for the holidays like um, like a decade or two ago I got them a um, a, uh, a drawn uh, like a, a framed uh, picture that uh, someone did of uh, the like it's a really dramatic like rendering of an SR-71 first uh, taking flight uh, suborbital I believe um, but anyway Beaver, yo, we should probably talk at some point <laughs> because uh, I think uh, your your parents might actually know my parents. <laughs> um, that, that's that's kind of crazy, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, when he says mine met in Germany, but I think they quit before I was born. Yeah, yeah. No, actually, um, it, funny funny enough, uh, if you if you actually you see that little guy, you see that. That little mark on my tooth. That guy is, um, I got that because um, when my parents were stationed in Germany, they the, the water was, um, it didn't have um, a proper amount of, um, what was it? I forget what it was called. It was like a, um, um, what was it? It, they they had to basically supple fluoride exactly yeah so fluoride so they had to manually put fluoride into the water into my and not the water the um, the breast milk and they uh, put uh, too I think they put too much in and it stained my uh, my adult teeth so fun little fact fun little story if you ever yeah you ever look at that it's a giant weak spot on my tooth <laughs> so anyway fun. Um, yeah, normally when people, uh, yeah, I remember actually going to work once and a new guy was like, Hey, Hey, you got something on your tooth. And I'm like, that's just my tooth, buddy. <laughs> it's, it's just how it looks. So anyway, Nick Cage, I got scarlet fever three times in Germany, but no cool reminders. Oh, <laughs> that sucks. I have so much tooth lore. Hell yeah. <laughs> Winnie tooth lore stream. When, when we doing that, um, yeah, so, yeah, and that's why I was talking about um, having p a piece of the Berlin Wall. We actually got a couple pieces of it. Um, yeah, my parents kept those. Actually, um, I had to do a bunch of bullshit with um, uh, my, um, what is it? My, um, for something that you, you all will find out about, hopefully this year, when the Medium video releases, I had to do stuff with my passport um, last year, and... Um, in order to get um, my passport um, properly done, it turned out that, you know, um, <laughs> I had to get a passport when I was a tiny, tiny baby. <laughs> and uh, my I, they literally kept my old, old, old passport from when I was just born. And um, 
they, it was so funny because like, um, it's just a picture of me as a baby, and it's like, uh, mil uh, like this kid is military. <laughs> it was, it's just the weirdest, it's the weirdest document. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's just a picture of a baby. It's just me as a little baby. Uh, Lexicon Devil, um, I will not answer that question. Stay tuned. <laughs> I will answer that question later. But anyway, all right, I've I've definitely said too much. <laughs> so. <laughs> Anyway, all right. Uh, and you also have to cross the forest. I wouldn't be able to do that. I shivered at the mention of the forest. I thought of intertwining branches of a snake-like trail of endless darkness that like sp that spread like mold among the crooked trees. So I straight up lied. <laughs> so I straight up lied. It's not that scary. What's so scary about it for you? She smiled after a brief pause as if brushing off a daydream. Well, actually, never mind. My name is Polina, by the way. Polina. And I'm Anton. I already know that. You fucking idiot. Polina. Hey, Anton. She stumbled as if trying to decide whether she sh should continue. What are you doing after school? My chest felt prickly after her innocent question, yet somehow it felt pleasant. Nothing much. I stumbled and didn't finish my sentence. What's happening? <laughs> oh. Elise's predatory smile flashed in front of my eyes. Her playful eyes and the slits of the mask were probably just a product of my imagination, though. What if that fox girl is waiting for me after the school? Or was it another of her weird jokes? I wonder if she's hiding a big red tail under the under her coat. I suddenly got covered with beads of sweat, like after a PE class. I wanted to take a shower as if just thinking of the foxy, foxy girl made me dirty. Soiled my clothes, lured me into the forest's embrace. <laughs> I have a violin lesson, and then I'll be free. Is Polina? No. 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 My grandpa hired me a private tutor. Our music teacher is a violinist, and he doesn't have any anyone to teach here except for me. She waved her free hand in the air, imitating the movement of a bow on violin strings. I could almost hear the music. It chased Elisa out of my head. I looked at Polina's lips catching her every word and was frozen from the unusual sensations. They were warm, soothing, and tingly. It felt like I was very small and the feelings were immense and they couldn't fit inside of me. Aww. Okay, way to kill the mood. <laughs> they say there's a serial killer on the loose in the village. Normally, Grandpa would escort me uh, home from school, but he's been sick lately. How much you want to bet the 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 hanged man in the in the courtyard that uh, Elisa was talking about is maybe um, uh, the 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 bully, whatever his name was. I completely forgot about his name. <laughs> um, I snuck a glance at Vova's photo. <laughs> his eye wells were studying me his lips were wearing black lipstick just like the portrait on a gravestone I mean I'm not a coward it's just I think I'll be safer with you will you go home with me Anton of fucking course I will there it was finally everything that I read about in the adventure books everything that I dreamt about was seeping into my life a mysterious crime a beautiful stranger and a heroic duel a duel thinking of Semyon instantly sobered me up returning me back to the earth and it started shaking under my feet like a deck of a ship if I could only rise to the occasion in front of Polina 
because no matter how brave I was trying to act, it was obvious for both of us I wouldn't be able to stand a chance against a big guy like that, and him knocking me out won't even be the worst of it. The worst part is that Polina will see all of that, and she'll laugh at me like everybody else. I don't think she'll laugh at you, bud. No, I don't need anybody to see me in such a shameful state. I doubt I'll be able to today. No, you fucking... <laughs> Anton. You know Semyon is waiting for me outside. I need to deal with him one-on-one, -on -one, like a man. Nonsense. Polina brushed off some hair off her forehead, and I sensed a weak uh, aroma of blueberry. What? Hold on, sorry. I just got a ring notification about a missing cat. Oh. Oh, it's... It's someone... Oh, okay. It's someone showing pr uh, showing their backyard footage of a cat saying asking if it is a missing cat. I thought for a second I was like, oh shit, I, maybe I can help with a, find a cat, but no. Anyway, uh, Polina brushed off her hair off her forehead and I sensed a weak aroma of blackberry. Oops, hit the wrong button. No, go back. Okay. Polina was like water when you were thirsty. You gulp it down and still wanted more. Anton. <laughs> My might. <chick. laughs> I remembered the summer evenings at the country house, the fire's pungent smoke, the berries hanging over our fence for the, from the neighbors, and a soft cover of pine needles under my soles. Those few peaceful days when I felt completely safe. My mom resting in the hammock, my dad putting meat on a skewer. Could I have foreseen the upcoming catastrophe and the crackle of the coals? in our parents' laughs, in the smell of the fleeting July. Could I have seen how fragile that world was? Do you really think that savage will give you a fair fight? Mm. He'll just swarm you with his friends without giving you a chance to catch a breath. Dude, I'm fucking with Polina on this one. Um, Polina suddenly flashed a devious smile. Though if we go together, they will be put off. Not only the first violin of this village, I'm also a girl. I've heard from a delinquent, I know. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard from a delinquent, I know, that he'll never attack someone when there's a girl around. Oh, I guess that's, I guess that's true. Because he didn't like overtly fight us when um, uh, when uh, class rep was around, he just like was messing with us. He he pushed Anton into class rep. He, Anton fell down, and then he was just put like touching his forehead. He didn't like beat the shit out of us or anything. Yeah, and yeah, and he totally backed off. Yeah, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Can you imagine? They have the weird this weird code of honor. <laughs> A delinquent, you know. I thought worried. <laughs> Same. Anton. 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 <laughs> Is he better than... Okay, Anton, I take that back. <laughs> Is he better than me? Taller, more handsome? Oh, I have to go to music class. She made a couple of steps and stopped. Amazing, Polina didn't look like those beauties from the magazine posters or the actresses from the movies. But in the flickering light of the ceiling lamps, she looked much more alluring... Can you play anything? My parents bought me a guitar a couple of years ago. I immediately remembered my meager attempts at making music. Uh, am, 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 change, we're all waiting for change. Soy's song echoed in uh, my thoughts and my desire to change something. Victor Soy, uh, Soy. A singer and a frontman for the popular Soviet rock band Kino that played a mix of new wave and post-punk. Their hit song P Perimen Changes is one of the most popular rock tracks of the new Russian era. Era died in a car accident. Ah man. 
That sucks. <laughs> you heard it here, folks. I'm against car crashes. <laughs> that guitar lost somewhere and got lost somewhere as if refusing to move to the old house near the forest. I think my parents gave it away to someone that needed it more. I don't, sadly. <laughs> the pity. Oh, well, I'll be going. Bye. Did she say Baka? Her shout was captured by the loud echo. Her echoes also echoed. Her shoes. Her echoes also. Her shoes also echoed through the school hallways. A uh, Baka. Stupid. <laughs> I wasn't sure if Polina heard me. I looked out the window again. The schoolyard was empty, just a couple of grade schoolers throwing snowballs at each other. Nobody who looked like this, the hulking Semyon with his cronies. This was giving me hope. What should I do? Polina could become my friend, the first one in this new place. And besides, she may be in real danger of meeting a killer and I'll be her defender, her knight. And even though my inner voice was hesitant and whispered about uh, running aw away from the killers lurking in the woods at night, Polina was worth that risk. But the red, cunning fox was also intriguing. She promised me to help look for Vova, and this will bring me a reward. More money will almost guarantee peace in my family. Gifts for Olya. I imagined my sister happy like those girls who got prizes from uh, Supanev uh, in the finest hour. Have I mentioned the music in this is really good? I really like the music. Sergei Supanov, a Soviet and Russian TV host, the most prolific showman, uh, of the Russian kids TV uh, of Russian kids TV in the 90s. He hosted teen quizzes as well as computer entertainment shows. Supanov died in on uh, December 8th, 2001 when he crashed his snowmobile into a river pier. What is with these people getting got? Like there's a lot of death. <laughs> She'll be dancing with the famous singers, maybe a new popular boys band like Ivanushki International. What? Well, let me guess. They all died in a car accident or plane crash. Uh, Ivanushki International, a Russian boy band that was popular in the 90s and early 2000s and consisted of three singers. Its songwriter and vocalist Igor Sorin died to a fall from the sixth story from a six-story balcony. The official police report claimed it was a, it to be a suicide. Oleg Yakovlev, Yakovlev. Um, substituted him in the boy band and later died from cirrhosis. <laughs> eh, a lot of death. There's a lot, a lot of death going on. There's it's a lot of, lot of, a lot of people dying. <laughs> um, Zazo, yeah, I think they sell the OST as a DLC. Oh, I might actually have to get that. This is really pretty. Yeah, I really like it actually. Extreme sports were very in during the '90s. Yeah. You're not wrong. Um, Jan, honestly, I did want to include a glossary in my game, but I kind of ran out of time and I figured there wasn't enough importance to require it. D Jan, I think that also comes up in like the uh, discussion of the game. I think for this, um, I think for this game, it makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of really specific cultural touchstones um, that Americans and other cultures may miss, um, uh, you know, in, in translation. I don't necessarily like depending on how your story works. Like I, I, I don't think necessarily it's it's needed really. Also, how common? Uh, like this is like my <laughs> this is like my th is this my third? Okay, so Doki Doki Literature Club, Higarashi, Tiny Bunny. Is this my third visual novel? Is that real? Uh, my point being, my larger point being, before I forget it, um, is that I don't know how common glossaries are in in uh, visual novels. Are, are they like a thing? Uh, Beaver, I I quite like VNs. Like they are they are quite nice. I, I actually quite like this. Um, Lexicon Devil, I was watching an absolutely insane true crime doc breaking down how the Russian mob was extremely proficient at setting scenes to look like not a murder oh i would imagine yeah uh zazo russian uh, russia is a hellhole to be fair so it makes sense that most russian work is very dark oh yeah i mean um we we just had um uh oh god i feel terrible for getting his name but yeah that that um reporter uh die 
like very recently. Um, God, what was his name? It's on the tip of my tongue. It's on the tip of my fucking tongue. Um, yeah, Alexei uh, uh, Navalny. Yeah, Navalny. Navalny. Yeah, yeah. No. Dude. God. Some things don't change. Even though they fucking should. Anyway. She'll be dancing like... Um, oh, wait. I wanted to... Uh, Jan, I did include a character index, though, just because I'm aware there's a ton of characters and I want to allow the player an easy way to check who's who. Yeah, yeah, that totally makes sense. Like having a character index or like, um, I mean, what did Doki do? It was like the saving stuff. I, see, that's the th that's the kind of thing where I would, Jan, any kind of stuff like that, I would like to fuck with, you know? Like you have like, some like character like sheets and stuff like that and if you've got like a larger mystery going on hiding some like important details about them or like some mysteries in the character sheets at certain times in like specific chapters that might be super fun that might be a, that might be a lot of a lot of fun Ooh, i'm getting ideas <laughs> maybe i should do my own vn what the fuck would i do it about what would my vn be it would definitely be anime <laughs> Ah, who am I kidding? I just make Dream Daddy again. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, she'll be dancing with famous singer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom and dad hung dad, not dag. Mom and dad hugging in the Ostankino Pavilion, and then all of us going to Disneyland. I'm going to Disneyland, Polina. I'm. Are you fucking kidding? We're absolutely going to Polina. Somebody left their school shoes on the window still. Sill. Window still? Window sill? Have I talked about that before? Anyway. Uh, judging from their size, they belong to a boy my age. Turn me around and I'll tell you who's stupid. I bet something offensive is written on the other side. I wonder how long uh, would Semyon keep turning it around if it fell into his hands. See... A abandoned zinc bucket with a rag on the bottom of it, filled to the brim with a murky tap water. It reeked of salty chemicals, and the stench was so intense that I felt sick. I staggered away from it, praying that I don't meet the same fate as the person on cleaning duty. <sighs> my gut is, like, my gut and my brain are telling me go Polina. Because here's here's my here's my rationale. Um, Tetrion, shameless self promotion, but I do plan on putting out my own game soundtrack on Bandcamp this month. Hell yeah, Jan, we we totally need to play your game. Could you could uh, 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 could you go ahead and just uh, uh, link it in the chat so people can uh, uh, quickly click it and or and for the VOD, people know what we're talking about and they can uh, go to the link as well. Um, but yeah, like um, okay, so here here's my here's my kind of. Here's my thoughts on this. Um, there it is, Yudashi Peril. Shout out to Yudashi Peril, y'all. Go check it out. It's on uh, itch.io. Itch.io? 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 How do people say that? It's like a reset era, resetera thing. Um, Winnie, yeah, there's so many good choices, so we can't be mad at whatever you decide. I. <sighs> Look, the only reason that I'm thinking maybe possibly about going with Elisa is um, I think the game may be fucking with us because Polina seems to be I want to say it I want to say if okay so let's think about what's going on here we've got a f weird fox girl who I don't think is who is it's possible they're not even real, that they're like some sort of a manifestation of some kind of demon or ghost or something. But they are wearing a mask. Although when she yawned, that that was a that was a that was a fucking fox's mouth. Um, here's the problem: we can't really trust Polina either, because. In the same way that Elisa can be a manifestation of something, so could Polina. It's just Polina could be entirely deceitful, deceptive, versus Elisa, who's just like showing like some of her cards and showing the fact that she is deceptive, but 
may also be, you know, trying to help us in some way. F like, from a, just like a baseline, I want to say, I want to say that I want to go with Polina purely because let's think about this like in terms of pure like pure logic I guess um Polina is um a girl who has to go through the woods on her own anyway or she needs to go home and she's going to do it alone she also gave us the information that like you know there might be um you know, the, the bully might come over and try to do shit, but he can't with her around. Although that would just make me think, why, why don't they just like grab us and take us away from her so that then they can do shit. Link attack. Here's that's the problem. My, I think my heart is being manipulated. <laughs> I, I think Polina is the most like going with Polina just makes sense. Not only in terms of like their strength and numbers, but also in terms of making a new friend um, for later. For later, you know, definitely making school more tolerable. But also, um, I get the I get the feeling that it's very possible that she's fucking with us, or like she's like another. Whereas Elisa is a fox, Polina could possibly be a wolf. Is what I'm saying. That's that's kind of what I'm throwing out there. So anyway. Certainly better for Anton's development. Yeah, 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 exactly. Also, I, I don't entirely buy that Elisa wouldn't help us if we if we bail on her. Um, I think we gotta go. Uh, the, the hanged boy, though, that's fascinating. That's really interesting. <sighs> Save and do both? Okay. I totally forgot that I could fucking do that. <laughs> All right. First choice. Snow danced on in the air outside the window, following the rhythm of the music that was flowing from around the corner. I jumped off the windowsill and started walking along the hallway, curiosity eating away at me. The half an hour I'd spent here waiting crawled at snail's pace. I wanted to see Polina again. The music became louder. It streamed out of the half-open door at the far end of the corridor. My music taste was limited to Letov, um, Shevchuk, uh, the timeless classics and pop songs I saw on TV. Sorry, there's a lot of spit in my mouth. Igor Letov, um, a singer and a frontman of the band, uh, oh God, uh, Grzad, Grzdanskia, Grzdanskia, Grzdanskia. Grozdanskaya Oborana, um, civil defense, um, that played a mix of garage punk and psychedelic rock. Letov is posthumously um, considered the godfather and the patriarch of Russian punk rock and of the most influential members of the punk movement in Russia. Died peacefully in his sleep. Okay, something's going... There's a lot of... There's a Died, 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 died. There, I'm, I'm sensing a, 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 a pattern. <laughs> Along with uh, music videos that would sometimes be put on tapes and teasers before a movie. Um, yeah, no, Spicy Men, yeah, absolutely. Died in sleep. <laughs> make a separate save. Yeah, okay, I already did that. Um, oh, should I make a separate save now? Um, along with the music videos that would sometimes be put on tapes and teasers uh, before a movie. But this violin melody captivated me. It felt like a master woodcutter working with delicate wood, a fragile crystal toy, a gust of warm wind. Yeah, I won't overwrite it. Smash Smash got to me overwriting it later. <laughs> a la the fucking, um, what was that called? Um, Outlast 2. <laughs> was that what the name of it was? Outlast? I think it was Outlast. The one with the boys with their dicks all out. Anyway, it felt like a master woodcutter. I feel like if you don't have context for Outlast, you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> in in the game, there were two uh, two very burly men with no clothes, and the game just showed you the, what they got. They, it showed you what they were packing, and it was very entertaining. <laughs> and I think more games should do that. Do not be afraid to show 
that kind of thing. Except this game, obviously. Fucking Christ. Anyway. <laughs> Entire dick and ball. <laughs> Takes and or balls. Uh, it felt like a master woodcutter working with delicate wood, a fragile crystal toy, a gust of warm wind. I pressed my cheek against the doorway. Oh, uh, Critis, well, one, Outlast is, Outlast is the epitome of entertaining, except, okay, I see what you're saying. I was thinking purely in terms of Outlast 1, where only, it, it's problematic in parts, but it largely drops that in favor of just becoming B-movie schlock bullshit by the end, which I won't spoil it, but oh lord, that game, <laughs> it is one game at the beginning and com becomes a completely different game at the end. <laughs> it like, and I, I worry about spoiling it, but like, it, it's like, it starts off as, uh, God, what it starts off like paranormal activity esque mixed with like God, what would you even call that? It starts like a found footage horror movie and then it becomes a Resident Evil movie by the end. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh shout out to the wall rider writers out there. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, uh, no, you're totally you're totally right when it comes to Outlast 2. That and Whistleblower, the, the DLC for Outlast 1. That Good lord, they, whoo, what the fuck happened there? <laughs> they hired some writers who thought they were, <laughs> who thought they were the shit or something. Like, hell yeah, we're deep, bro. <laughs> Jesus, Outlast 2 was such a fucking, oh. Mm. Wowie. Anyway, I checked, I pressed my cheek against the doorway. Polina was hiding from me in the far end of the classroom, but a shadow that fell on the wall definitely belonged to a girl with a violin. The movements of her bow were so graceful that I felt like I was getting carried away on the waves of music. My heart broke the barrier of my ribcage and started hopping around. Faster and faster, it jumped on snow piles, gliding between the pines toward the fiery sun above the windfall. Is this Michelle? Got tired of waiting? I was so deep in thought I didn't hear her hear the approaching footsteps. After bathing in music, Polina felt even more magical. <laughs> oh, no, not really. <laughs> I just... I was just thinking about my comic. For some unknown reason, I lied. <laughs> you draw comics? Yeah, well, I mean... I want to draw one. Oh. And what will it be about? About the most charming and kind girl that plays a violin who somehow happened to be in this house of horror. <laughs> Aww, about a fox. Oh, I mean, about talking animals who help children who get lost to return home from the woods. And then they, they dance in the night. Wow. Sounds interesting. Did you come up with it for yourself? You should make it into a video game. We can call it Tiny Bunny. <laughs> I lowered my gaze. I got inspiration from looking out the window. Nightly vows. You went on a date with Polina. No, no. We descended to the first floor. This isn't a date. I'm just helping her out <laughs> I opened the door in front of Polina dad told me how essential it was to be a gentleman <laughs> y'all open doors I open doors for everybody I hold open doors all the time don't matter who it is if you're like my rule is like if you're within I would say honestly 20 25 feet I, I just hold it open no matter what I open doors for peeps hell yeah we got a we got a whole chat full of uh, door uh, door holders in here. I do it even sometimes when <laughs> you ever do it, and then you realize that you're just now the the dude holding the door <laughs> for the next like minute or so. <laughs> like a bunch of people are coming in, and you're just like holding it, and everybody's like, oh. <laughs> the dorder, <laughs> the order of the dorder. Oh, I stopped doing it for large crowds. Oh yeah. I try to hold, I, I 
yeah, I, generally speaking, I don't do it for doors, but sometimes there are more people than you expect and they come around like a corner. For me, I just, uh, yeah, I hold the door open and then I look behind me to see if there's someone there who can catch it. And then if I can, I like hold it open for them until they put their hand on it and then I let go and then bada bing, bada boom, it's good. Social stuff. Cheers. I love social. I love being social. <laughs> I open the door in front of, uh, yep, yep, yep. So you're an artist, huh? That's dumb. <laughs> I had a hunch you were different. <laughs> Special. Are you joking? Me? I am absolutely average. Anton! <sighs> we gotta talk, kid. <laughs> we gotta work on your we gotta work on your confidence, little man. <laughs> Simeon is the average one. An average idiot. And you carry something kind of kind and fluffy inside. Aw. Hi, long live Chow. Uh, Twitch scam three. <laughs> long live. What the fuck? Okay. Uh, I take everything back. Um. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't even want to read that. <laughs> what the fucking hell? Uh, all right. Uh, get banned. Hello. Hell doesn't exist. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, have I told y'all that, um, uh, my brother um, is very into um, scamming me. <laughs> my bro my brother, okay. I've got three brothers and one of them ha has a habit of, um, how do I say this? Trying to It f it fuck with me, basically. He, he enjoys fucking with me. And every time something like that happens where it's just like, like if that was just spam, it's like, oh, that's just spam. But if that, uh, the way that that was worded, and there was another one that happened like last week where it was like, um, someone said like, uh, they, th that they were uh, like their name of their Twitch account was like something hyper specific. And I didn't catch it until after, but it was like, that's clearly a joke. Um, I forget what it was about, but like every time that shit keeps happening, it's like, is that, is that my brother? <laughs> He's done it before. And it's, it's I, I don't know. It's, it's, he's, he is, uh, no, he's not into NFTs. That's the joke. He's fucking with me. Like he, that I can't tell if it's him or not. And so I'm not going to, but he has, he has, um, gaslit me so much and so often that every now and then when shit like that happens where it's just like that's the kind of shit that he would find hilarious to himself because that's for him as long as it's funny to him he'll do it it doesn't matter what it is he'll just fuck with you <laughs> so i am not an only child or maybe i am <gasps> i'm a or, i'm a ghost i'm a, g a g g ghost anyway The payment felt pointedly at me because that's demonic to me. Offensive as fuck. <laughs> well, that's the other thing. Um, my brother uh, has said offensive shit and really awful shit. He, I remember uh, because he thought it would be funny. He, I remember when he, um, Rachel and I went to my parents' place for um, Thanksgiving. I think it was Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was Thanksgiving. And uh, we, were, we were playing a um, board game. And I think uh, we got a little heated. And then my brother turns to me and goes, um, I hope <laughs> he does this completely seriously. No, like hint of like that. He's joking on his face because that's, that's how he, he jokes. He, he, I, I can't explain it. You have to meet him in order to understand. But he, he said to me and Rachel, he said, I, he looked us, he looked us straight in the eyes and he was like, I hope you wrap your car around a, a tree on your way home. <laughs> like completely seriously not laughing. <laughs> like, me and Rachel are just like, 
<laughs> I started laughing because I know him. I know he doesn't really mean that shit. But like Rachel was like, what the fuck? And so, yeah, Rachel doesn't come to my parents' place anymore. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's like, Jesus. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, uh, and now people are talking about Genshin Impact and I immediately lost interest. All right. Something barked near my leg and when we were crossing the schoolyard, interrupting Polina. Eek! Don't worry, it's just Zulka. I stood on one knee and rubbed the barking dog behind the ear. Buddy! It was frantically wagging its tail like it was some sort of propeller. I looked around the yard trying to find Elisa. But the fox girl was nowhere to be found, neither in the yard nor on the road. Leave it be. It's a stray, you know. What if it has pests? No, this one has an owner. I think. <laughs> okay. Polina looked at the playful dog with disgust, covering her mouth with a handkerchief. Do you have any food on you? I think I have something left. We'll feed it and go, right? She took out a sandwich from her bag and threw it at Zulka. The dog rushed to her banquet. <laughs> Swept away the bread uh, with her nose and started eating the bologna. What a picky eater. Come on, uh, uh, eat everything. Polina tugged my sleeve, egging me on. Hey, what's wrong? <laughs> it's, it's just repeat. <laughs> she replied with laughter. Oh, it stopped. The violin girl had literally dragged me out of the school gate, stifling laughs into a fist. Bye, buddy. See you later, Zulka. It, I turned around. Zulka followed us with sad eyes as we were leaving. The dog looked especially lonely with the school as the backdrop. Oh. And then Polina just stopped laughing. She walked alongside me with a blank stare, completely silent. Don't spread pests. Her remark turned out pretty harsh. Was it really the stray's fault she had to live in the street? They always attack people later. Grandpa? A pack of these almost killed my grandpa last winter. Oh, grandpa. That's horrible. Is he still not feeling well? He's paralyzed now. He will never be able to walk again. I remember the scary pack of dogs that was chasing me just a while ago. I, I'm sorry. It's okay. Polina showed me another enchanting smile, her eyes half closed. What matters is that we understand each other now. I forgot uh, all about Zulka after she said that. Oh no! Some third graders were throwing snowballs at each other and singing. One, two, time to play with you. Oh man, we got tricked. We got freaking got. Oh, I knew, I knew it, I knew it. The owl? Oh yeah. An image of my sister sitting near the window, bored, looking at me, for me in the twilight, flashed before my eyes. I promised myself that I will go home as soon as I escort Polina. What's the song the kids are singing? It's the second time I heard it today. We were walking down the main street. Somewhere near, a tractor was grumbling, cleaning snowdrifts. Ravens flew across the ashen sky. A flock of blackbirds circled above us like scary crosses that ran away from graves. The owl one? It's just a local nursery rhyme. Grandpa used to sing it to me when I was little. He's very knowledgeable about local history and folklore. Yo, we gotta talk to your grandpa. And what does that rhyme sound like? That, listen. She started walking backwards, facing me and smiling. One, two, time to play with you. Three, four, five, the owl will arrive. Six on end, the wolf's gray fur will stand. Seven, eight, stomp your hooves and wait. 
for the fox and for the bear. Bunny tasty meals prepare. Huh. So if the other girl... Damn it, I dropped my shit. So if the other girl is the fox... Is she the bear? I thought that I'd already met a fox this morning. Thankfully, I hadn't met any wolves or bears. As I was looking at the girl by my side, I became strangely brave, so I said something unexpected. You have a beautiful voice. Polina adjusted her hair, slightly embarrassed. Thank you. And is that the end of the rhyme? Did the bunny prepare those meals? Who knows? Nobody will be able to tell you now. It's really old. I'd even say ancient. There's a legend related to it, though. Want me to tell it to you? Of course. All sorts of tribes had lived in the taiga back in the day. Taiga, taiga. <laughs> Grandpa told me... Grandpa told me they had this instant, instant, well, some sort of right when a boy was ready to become a man. Inst oh, in uh, initiation? I listened closely. I mean, I was already really close to that age myself. They would lead him into the woods where he needed to spend three days hunting. There's a legend about a young man who went into the taiga and never returned. Taiga. And then suddenly came back when they were already stopped looking for him. He was covered in scratches, dirty, cold. Hmm. What are these footsteps? It's like someone's hopping. I imagine sleeping among the pines and uh, bear layers. Bear layer. <laughs> bear layer. His family rushed to help him, but he just fell unconscious. They brought a shaman. He looked at the young man and his face became grim. He told them that he was in bad shape. Well, no doy. The young man convulsed until the morning, repeating the rhyme over and over. Over and over. One, two, time to play with you, as if Taiga itself was whispering it to him. And when the sun came out, he died. Cool. But the shaman said that he was already dead when he returned. He came out of the woods as a living corpse and whispered that rhyme with his dead lips. I froze in fear. Are you sure it's not some horror movie? Folklore can be way scarier than movies, believe me. Grandpa said that this tribe just uprooted in a hurry and left to the south. They must have been brave if they lived here. Polina kicked one of the snow piles with her small boot. Brave but stupid. Do they need a corpse to appear from the forest for them to understand? Understand what? That they needed to get out of here. There's the big world. And then there's our village. The world. She spread her arms wide. The village. She showed us a distance that was almost invisible with her two fingers. I often imagine big cities. I can look at the globe for hours. Or at Around the World magazines from the library. Or listen to Red Hot Chili Peppers Around the World. They have such pretty names. Just listen. Reykjavik. Tel Aviv. Music to my ears. <laughs> she started circling her eyes shut dreamingly. 
The forest towered before us, touching the low clouds. The road fell into the semi-dark between the trees. I could have conquered the stage, performing in front of thousands. And I have stage fright. Oh, you'll get famous another way, by drawing. We both have a future. What do you say, Semen? Semyon? But what about, say, Semyon? He may just get fatter. And he'll be selling Perovsky. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Made from dogs? Bruh. <laughs> we burst out laughing, exercising worry from our minds with lighthearted fun. If somebody will even trust him with selling them. Oh, you're right. He could probably eat a whole lot of them in one go. <sighs> like I thought, the forest is less scarier when you're not alone. I looked around. The snow was sparkling, reflecting the last rays of the setting sun. My pulse fastened uh, from the thought that we were alone. Yeah, you were right. <laughs> oh! Well, look who it is. Is he like a copper? It's probably like Polina rushed through the fire break. Don't fall behind. I never fall behind. You know the way you speak. Just like a hero from adventure books. Was she complimenting or mocking me? Bruh, just... Ah, just take the compliment. <laughs> just take it. It's so easy when you're on the outside, not the one receiving the compliment. I didn't want to look for the hidden meaning, not when we're on such a wonderful walk. I mean, I like books. Oh, well-read man. Intriguing. A man, really? <laughs> Winnie, yeah, basically. I got embarrassed and my cheeks turned beet red, but I still thanked fate for being able to wander around the forest with Polina like this. Aww. The girl suddenly st stopped and stared into the darkening thicket without making a sound, as if waiting for something. I felt uneasy all of a sudden, and then she asked me in a cold voice, Have you been here? Where? Deep in the woods? Uh, Polina burst out laughing again, shattering my anxious thoughts. No, silly. In the big world. In cities with musical names. Those Moscow <laughs> musical tea. Moscow. Actually, kind of the Moscow. Yeah. To me, it sounds like the croaking of a frog. Polina froze and looked at me in disbelief. You've been to Moscow? Yeah. When I was little. Polina's eyes started sparkling. What's it like? Well, it's beautiful. Noisy. Neon lights everywhere. Neon lights. Neon. It felt like she was savoring those words. Have you been to the Red Square? Of course. It's so bumpy. I've been to Tsum and Vonk too. So, uh, that looks like <laughs> something something happened there or me oh no they're okay they're acronyms never mind <laughs> okay uh central universal department store uh one of the biggest department stores in europe uh situated in downtown moscow it was founded in 1885 as moore and Mir uh, mirilis mirilis co after the Soviet Union, the store was nationalized and given its contemporary name in 1933. Is this where, um, this isn't where What's-His-Name went just, like, a little while ago, right? Like, uh, that one, that one shithead from Fox who just interviewed, um, Vladimir Putin? Like, what, well, uh, forget his name. Thankfully. Uh, is that, that's where he went? I just, I watched a daily show, like, um, 
yeah, Monday this week, and I think they ta- they he went there. He went to a store there, but I don't know if it was the specific one. Vonk exhibition of uh, achievements of national economy, the second biggest exhibition complex in Moscow. It's present in the top fifty biggest European exhibition centers list. Forty nine architectural pieces on the complex's territory are considered cultural heritage monuments. Cool. I love the metro the most. It smelled like... Cock. Like what? <laughs> Did she just say cock? <laughs> um, she ran up to me, grabbed me by the sleeve, and stared, and stared into my eyes with clear interest. I can't describe it. And can you draw it? What, a smell? Great musicians can play smells. Ah... <laughs> uh... It stinks! <laughs> You're lying. I'll give you the cassettes later. She started twirling in the falling snow again. I'll definitely go to Moscow. Man, this whole village is like full of kids like who are just about to retire. <laughs> is there going to be more child death? But first to, uh, but first to Vienna. It's my dream. The capital of music. Beethoven, Strauss, Philharmonic Orchestra, opera. National Opera. I'll be performing and you drawing. Her enthusiasm spread to me. I wanted to do something right this moment. And where do you want to go? I sighed and confessed. Disneyland. To Disneyland. I remembered the finest hour show again. Olia preferred Call of the Jungle, but I was always spent uh, but i always spent my mondays in front of the tv colorful tables with numbers on signs and a charming mr suponev on, uh, suponev on at the wheel and the prizes oh the prizes chocolate eggs video equipment and the most exciting one a trip to disneyland for the winter my parents promised to take me there but they never did to the land of the mouse to the land of the mouse <laughs> to the land of the mouse and I believed them at first. Well, maybe they also believed it back then. Now they just reply with silence every time I ask about it, and it saddens me to no end. You know, they keep talking about, um, or um, this kid keeps talking about, uh, Anton keeps talking about Disneyland. I just watched a video, um, like, a few hours ago about how, um, how like, costly it is to go to Disneyland right now. It, it costs, like, uh, what was it? It was, like, just about a thousand bucks. It was like just under a thousand bucks to just go to Disneyland for a day. And that's not including the plane ticket. So it's like <laughs> for a day, Jesus Christ. <laughs> like, oh man. And then like uh, they were talking uh, about how doing it for a week would be like around, I think they said like, I think it was like 6,000, 7,000. So anyway. I always get Disneyland and Disney World confused. What the fuck is the difference? <laughs> like, uh, uh, the one in Florida. I don't know anything about Disney whatever. <laughs> I'm not a Disney person. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not like getting frustrated with you, Lexicon Devil. I'm like getting, uh, because I always, I always forget the difference. I always, I have no idea. Florida is Jai fucking Gantic and is Disney World? See, that's what drips me up. You would think that Disneyland would, well, I guess that's very a, a very America-centric view of it, but or well, no, because Disney World is in where is Disney World? L.A. Disneyland is in Calif. Disneyland is in California. Disney World is in Florida. Okay. Okay. Nick Cage is trying to give me a mnemonic device, but I. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say I am too old for for mnemonic devices. <laughs> this dog has learned all the tricks. I don't need any more. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Okay, so it's uh, f- in Florida. L comes before W. C comes after F. That's how I remember. Okay. C comes. I think I'll remember it by th- by thinking. Florida is a 
<laughs> I don't know if I should say this out loud. <laughs> this is the, it, my brain work. Uh, mnemonic devices in my head work better with like extremes. So if you go really hard in one direction, like and make and make something like ludicrous, like it'll you'll remember it easier. So if I remember Disney World is in Florida because Florida is an embarrassment to the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can remember it that way. <laughs> anyway. Oh, no. Sorry if you're in Florida. <laughs> Florida also chooses princesses that are prettier, and LA chooses girls uh, who look cartoonish with exact. What? Huh. Florida man is offended. Not Florida man. No. Tetrion, I don't think anyone in Florida would disagree with you. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well. Uh, now they just reply in silence every time I ask about it, and it saddens me to no end. I have just three words on my mind in those moments. But you promised! Polina had seemingly read my mind. Getting there is easier than we think. Everybody has the power to mold their fate. She picked up two handfuls of snow. What, what are you going to do? Start telling me about the fucking secret? And then as if she forgot about everything, showed me a sly smile. Want to make a snowman? Давай. Sure. When I uh, get back home, I'll make a snowman for Olya too. She'll be so happy. But for now, oh, we were almost done with the first ball, rolling it shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> Polina was laughing. I can tell. <laughs> Locks of her hair fell on her lo lively face. She was so cute when she blew them away. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Translated. Ha 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 ha. Uh, why is your ball so small, Anton? Don't. Don't. I, I know what you're fucking thinking. Stop it. It'll only work as a head. Make it bigger. Don't be lazy. I couldn't remember the last time I had so much fun. Rachel and I actually just made, like, a little while ago, we made a snowman in the front yard. Yeah, it was, it was great. <laughs> Beaver, I know who you are. I know, I know who you are. <laughs> Polina swept her now crimson lips. Did you ever wish you could go to another planet? <laughs> Something flashed in her eyes when she said that. I couldn't really put my finger on what it was. In another universe, even. To another universe. Polina sighed in what felt like a relief. Then you should understand me. Our palms glided across the ball of snow, straightening in, out any bumps it had. An almost ideal white ball rose up from the middle of the clearing. Then another one popped up. We lifted it from two sides and placed it on the one that served as a foundation. Hell yeah! Look at that dude. <laughs> I'm th uh, Nick Cage. I'm thinking that Anton looks shockingly like the Page Master. He's got he's got an extreme Macaulay Culkin look to him. Finally, Polina helped the third ball to get on top of the other two. Getting the head to the right place is what I do best. Do you, by any chance, have a carrot? <laughs> do you, by any chance, have a carrot? Alas! <laughs> no one says alas anymore. <laughs> um, we need to start saying alas more. Uh, there was no fear, no worry at this clearing. I became more daring, ran uh, toward the thicket to crack a couple of branches. I pulled at the intertwining windfall, but Polina's voice suddenly awakened me from my delusion. Anton, someone is standing there. I turned around, puzzled. Polina was looking at me, no, at something behind my back. She stared at it, her br brows furrowed. Not a single trace was left of the cheerful atmosphere we had a moment ago. Polina? She slowly raised her hand and pointed at the darkness that was approaching the trees in the distance. Is she fucking with us? Someone is standing there. A crooked silhouette, see? Rubbing the pine with her huge hands. I turned around to recommend my eyes to where she was pointing to. The area around the dry raspberry bushes was empty. There's nothing there. It hid. Behind the tree. The collar of my coat felt suffocating. I pulled out on it instinctively. I felt a spasm in my stomach. I smiled weakly and asked, hoping for a good answer. Is this a prank? 
Polina seemingly lost all her words. She just continued staring deep into the endless forest. She's not answering. Bravery check, I thought. So I stepped toward the glossy black truck trunk, Polina's gaze pushing me into the in the back. I was trying to muster all the courage, but my inner voice was telling me to stop, to curl into a ball, to play dead, even anything but go there into the writhing darkness. The twilight was sucking me in, limiting my vision. The clearing was a deep well, its walls prohibiting the sunlight from reaching its bottom. I heard the air ring, or was it ringing in my ears? Vibe check. One step. Two steps. <laughs> Three steps. Four. Uh, I bit my lip to stop myself from screaming if anything happened. Dot, dot, dot. There was nobody behind the pine. I sighed. And turn back to Polina. Polina, there's nobody. Jump scare. Let's do it. Oh. Yo, Antoshka. From the darkness behind the pines, just like cavemen from their cave, appearing smirking Semyon with a bunch of his cronies. And who do we have here? <laughs> Check out this four eyes freak. Eh. Polina let out a shriek when the bastards shoved her away from me. <laughs> they surrounded me like a carnivorous pride, making me step back. No! They're not gonna fuck up. Don't fuck up the snowman. What happened? <laughs> oh, God! Semyon's heavy leg blasted through the snowman's belly. The balls were rolled, crumbled, became a mushy mess with just a single broken branch poking out. <gasps> Polina gasped angrily, and I also felt the touch of scalding hatred. The smell of sweat and tobacco attacked my nostrils. The inside of my mouth felt salty, as if I'd, I'd licked a battery. Polina, you, you licking batteries, bud? <laughs> Polina, don't be scared. I shuddered after hearing my own voice. It sounded unnatural, rough, and scary. Polina, Why would she be scared? Ha ha ha. Worry about yourself. The fatso spit through the gap in his teeth and pushed me so hard I hit my back against a tree. No cock. Well? Pissed your pants, sucker? I heard Polina's angry voice from behind. Stay away from him. I would have been better if Polina wasn't around. I wish she wouldn't see me in such a shameful position. Look at this, guys. A girl is defending him. <laughs> yeah, what a fucking wimp. <gasps> Look at that ring. You fuck with the wrong guy, transfer student. Semyon was moving toward me, readying his fist. In that moment, the other delinquent in the track uh, in track pants made a loud whistle and the hulking boy lowered his hand. It was unexpected. Seems like Barburin uh, wasn't the leader of the, this gang. In reality, they were all listening to the boy who was looking like a small carnivore with very strong and sharp teeth. I just had an idea. They decided against hitting me. They probably wanted to humiliate me in front of the girl first. Damn it. <laughs> hey, F word junior. Is this fucking, is this fucking, what's his name from, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, what, what is his name? The guy from, um, uh, oh God, what's his name? Uh, fuck, what is the, uh, 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 hold on, hold on. Name is on the tip of my tongue. Kuno. <laughs> this is fucking Kuno. Kuno doesn't care. <laughs> Kuno doesn't fucking care. <laughs> fucking minging. <laughs> and who's that? Another of your girlfriends? He has a fucking harem, eh? Only then I noticed Zolka behind my legs, trembling from the cold, snow plastered all over its fur. Zolka, get out of here! I probably ran all the way to the schoolyard searching for her smell. The delinquent squatted in front of the dog and beckoned it with its hand. Oh my. Come here, you fly-ridden bitch. 
<laughs> got Jay Leno in the pack. The others let out nasty laughs. <laughs> Come here, you firing! <laughs> the dog's ears perked up and she started carefully moving closer. Oh, you're going to kill the dog, aren't you? Yeah, come here. I've got something for you. Yeah, come here. Uh, just FYI, I'm worried about what's going to happen. Um... <laughs> yep, uh, there. Yep, yep, yep. The dog didn't even have a chance to sniff him when this animal abuser caught it by the ear and kicked it right under the tail so hard it flew into the nearest snow pile squealing. <laughs> The whole gang burst out laughing and my heart got encrusted in ice. Even the birds that were perched up on tree branches let out frightening, frightened caws. What? Then I noticed something strange. Plina could hardly keep herself from smiling. Does she really hate dogs so much that that was that what the skinny guy did amused her? After locking eyes with me, she changed her jubilant smirk to a thoughtful grimace. Why isn't she running away, I thought in horror. At the edge of my vision, I saw something flash in the illusory twilight of the sleeping forest. Or were they, or, what, or were that just branches moving their icy branches in the wind? Bushes, branches, whatever. Romka, it won't be able to shit after this. Let me kick the fucking thing one more time. Two negatives will make a positive. I don't think we're supposed to like these kids, y'all. <laughs> but the stray was already nowhere to be seen. What, are you an idiot? Go and show the four eyes his place. In a way, he'll understand. Yeah, he fucking owes you. This went whacked you in front of the whole class. Sure thing. Semyon brought a sizable uh, signet ring with uh, some geometric shape carved in it up to my face. In a moment, I'll hit your F-word face so hard it'll leave a mark for the rest of your life. Where did all of my inner strength and bravery go? Stop, Stop. a whizzy whisper uh, left my lips and my head tilted forward, hitting Semyon's fist. Red sparks flew from my eyes. They're going to gang up on me and beat me up. Roma, Roma tell them to stop. Прости, tell them to stop. Sorry, but the boys need to sort this out man to man. And you just stand aside and watch. Biasha, give me a hand. Semyon gave me a rough push toward the bastard with the slanting eyes, and he tripped me. I fell up on a sharp uh, crust of ice, and the fatso stepped on my hand, preventing me from getting up. A painful groan escaped my throat. Did you hear him whimper? Is he actually a F word or something? Cool. <laughs> I started to lose breath from anger and resentment. The pain was growing. My ear was hot and pulsating pain was shooting through it like it was cut off and a ball of nettle was sewn in its place. Why so silent, Antoshka? Come on, tell us. Are you a F word? At this moment, I felt pure, unbridled rage, the amalgamation of my anger. Like the sprout's ink, it rose from the depths of my mind, filling my all my thoughts. Morons! Did you know that my dad is also a F-word? Semyon burst out laughing. This became the last straw. Fear and anger were grappled inside me like mad dogs. He knows Aiko Aikido, got it? And he's a vet. He'll kill the likes of you with his eyes closed. One word from me and he'll... Uh, Romka lifted up his arm, stopping my torrent of lies and made a couple of steps forward. Simeon slowly backed off, giving me an opportunity to stand up. Pines were swaying back and forth like solemn guardians. Did he believe me? Or was he confused by my face, twisted with rage? A vet, you say? My dad also fought in the war. In Afghan. And yours? Mine too. Oh, really? And what force did he serve in? 
I stumbled, fear chomped at my rage's foot and made it my rage's throat and made it bleed. He's full of shit, Romka. Sure as fuck, eh? Do you think did you think I'm so easy to trick? Я тебя, сучонка, насквозь вижу. Three or all your lies, you little bitch. Uh, there was a nasty smile on his face now. This didn't bode well for me. Ты сам себе приговор подписал. Well, you've asked for this. В школе тебя училка спасла. Ну а теперь все. A teacher saved you at school, but here, I don't know if the smoking dude will um maybe show up here, maybe. He 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 he. You're fucked. Во -во. That's right. Pray that they find your dead body come spring, eh? If only you'd stayed silent, uh, wouldn't have lost a hair. Hitting fatso is one thing, but fucking around with stuff like Afghan, where my dad spent time under fire on international duty in fucking Dashti Margo. Dashi Margo, a desert region in the southern provinces of Helmand and uh, Nimruz in Afghanistan. Its name can be translated into English as Plain of Death. During the conflict in Afghanistan, the Soviet army destroyed countless drug caravans headed to Iran there. Give him a good pounding, Sioma? The delinquents closed in on me again and I f uh, ended up in front of Semyon. Blood was pumping in my temples. No, Romочка, no, Roma, please stop them. You've proved your point. Let us go. Ты иди, иди. You can go anytime. А мы пока мусор приберем. And we'll take out the trash in the meantime. What bugged me at that moment wasn't even the humiliating attitude from Romka, but rather how sweet Polina had addressed him. Hmm. Mm. The delinquents were pushing the girl toward the pines. Branches were swaying back and forth as if whispering something, giving me hope. I gritted my teeth, fighting the thought that I looked silly, and took a boxing stance I often saw in movies. What are you, fucking Mike Tyson? Oh, this was my first ever fight. I'll remember it for the rest of my life, if I don't kick the bucket, of course. At the edge of my vision, I noticed the darkness writhe again, as if someone was walking back and forth there. I sensed Roma's claws grab my backpack. Manatki, Antoshka. Give me your shit, Antoshka. It'll get in the way. I was about to refuse, unwilling to cooperate with the bastard, but then he fished a butterfly knife out of his pocket with one swoop motion, spun it as if showing off, and put the blade to my neck. Hey, easy, buddy. I can make it painful. I let out a cloud of steam instead of words. Romka pulled with all his might, and my backpack ended up in his hands. <laughs> Polina shrieked. Romka winked at her as if saying, don't worry, I've got this. Calm and relaxed. <laughs> An insidious smile on his face, he looked into my backpack. <laughs> Are you hiding something from us? <laughs> Some rat stole my school shoes. <laughs> Let me see if it was... <laughs> and what's this? Romka gave me a dubious smile. Oops. So what do we have here? My text and notebooks fell in snow. He was holding my backpack in one hand and some and uh, something weird in the other. It looked like... Oh, a mask. Ronka lifted it high as if showing to someone else, to someone in the treetops in the twilight among the trees? Wait. Huh. An old bunny mask. Long, worn-out ears, barely visible nose and whiskers, mangy fur on the sides. Where did it come from? Who put it there? <laughs> Simeon laughed. It's way past New Year's, moron. <laughs> Are you really a loony? <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> How come it's not? It's in your backpack. <laughs> Rumka was watching the scene unfold with an evil smile on his face. <laughs> Savages. <laughs> Is this the first time you see a mask? As shitty as this, yeah. I, is she... Is she... Uh, well, I, for, I already forgot her name. 
А знаешь что? You know what? Надевай. Put it on. Зачем? Why? Надевай, говорю. Because I'm telling you to. Попрыгаешь перед нами. You'll hop like a bunny for us. Давай, давай! Yeah, come on. Или без станов домой пойдёт на. Or I'll leave you pantless, eh? <laughs> this guy's supposed to be Canadian or something. Or I'll leave you pantless, eh? <laughs> Не надену. Not with Polina here. I won't. Сёма. Сёма, put it on him. Biasha um, rushed to his friend's side and took the worn-out mask from him with a buffoonish bow. Then he passed it on to Semyon, who was already uh, rubbing his hands in anticipation. I looked around the pine woods, as if waiting for help, as if the shadows that writhed around us would take pity on me and take my side. Branches looked like arms twisted in unusual angles. Uh, blackened bark was their charred skin, and the darkness was the smoke they produced. I can't run, won't get away, they'll catch me. And then... No, I won't run, won't abandon Polina. Let me warn you, Sioma. If he won't hop, you'll take his place, got it? This piece of shit won't. Just look at him, he's a total loony. This loony had already smacked you in the face. Romka's right. Come on, fatso, assert your fucking dominance. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll make you hop so hard your pig tits will fall off. <laughs> he must indeed be scared of Romka. Semyon swore silently and glared first at me, then at Polina. Here. It'll fit better this way. He hurled a huge ball of spit on the inside of the plastic bunny face and put it close to mine. He spit, his spit looked like a squashed spider. Romka's face twisted. He spasmed like a beast, like he wanted to tell Semyon something, but he suddenly stopped. Hmm. <laughs> Polina covered her face with her hands in terror. Semyon was still close by, with a disgusting smirk on his face and a terrible smell coming from his mouth. <laughs> put it on fast, <laughs> or you're dead. The mask almost looked even more disgusting now, yet, despite everything. I felt like it was a chance for salvation. It could become my second skin if only it, uh, I was to put it on, if only my face was to touch its bumpy surface. I'm sure the fur will glitter, the ears will tremble like they're alive. I just need to put it on and Simeon and his friends will be gone forever. You're gonna make me choose? Uh, I don't know, guys. I hate those kids. Yeah, they're, they're pretty shit. <laughs> those kids are pretty shit. Um, I mean, my gut says tell them to fuck off. But part of me is like, I kind of want him to put it on and then just like fucking murder these people. <laughs> just not murder them, but like fuck with them, you know? I can save, you are totally right. Hmm. 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 What do we think? A common writer, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's got spit in it. It's gross. I'm kind of interested in what'll happen if he puts it on. Well, is telling them to fuck off, like fighting back, or will that just enrage them? And because if I put it on, it might freak them out. Okay, so telling them to fuck off is fighting back. Putting it on isn't fighting back. Okay. I'm telling him to fuck off. For some reason, Romka's disappointment with Semyon made me feel brave. Something was wrong in their crew, some old disagreement. I should cut this w old wound open. You know what, Semyon? My own voice, smoothed and determined, uh, was a huge surprise. <laughs> I stepped forward and calmly proclaimed, Fuck off. 
it felt like the whole world was paused for a second and they unpa and then unpaused right away. Samian's pupils widened and uh, the mask fell out of his meaty hands. He took a while to process my words, looking stunned as if he was trying to solve a difficult math problem, but the answer he got made him mad, judging by the bulging veins in his forehead. The others just observed the scene silently, waiting for the inevitable payback. I noticed Polina's face stretch in horror. You, you. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, no. Oh, no. How do I go back? Oh, no. Oh, no. Auto. Where's the... No, god damn it. Hold on. Where? Where's the goddamn backlog? There. Okay, you're dead. Semyon lunged at me like a hawk and clawed at my face with twisting fingers with gnawed fingernails. I threw a kick toward the layer of fat under the coat. Yes, get him. Okay. At the same moment, the world became fuzzy. The black trees and faces of my classmates all blurred. My, my glasses. What, can't see anything without them, sucker? He threw up his hand that was holding my glasses toward the sky so I couldn't get to them. Give them back. Give them back, right? Oof. I was interrupted by a leaden fist with a sharp signet that hel that hit me in the brow, producing a cracking sound, throwing me to the frozen earth. A circle of blurry faces dying from disgusting laughter was mocking me, uh, making me want to puke. And as soon as I was almost able to catch my breath, a blurry figure rushed toward me. But instead of a new hit, I was offered an outreached hand. I immediately grabbed it, hoping it was Polina, but I soon realized how wrong I was after I felt the sting of dry blisters in my palm. <laughs> It was Romka helping me stand up. Can't see anything for real? His voice sounded compassionate, which surprised me. I squinted, trying to find Polina in the fog before my eyes. She was gathering my things and putting them back in my school bag. And what about your hearing? Huh? He leaned in close and asked with a voice that was way less friendly. Can you hear me fine, Antoshka? Yeah? I blinked in bewilderment. Well, then listen closely. He brushed off my coat and then hit me in the jaw with all his might. My jaw clicked. If my tongue was between my teeth at that moment, not I would not only be blind, but I would also talk worse than Byasha. I staggered. The world around me spun like a peg top again. Romka held me, uh, held me by the elbow, preventing me from falling over. Anton! Byasha! Um, locked her in his arms, preventing her from running to my side. Consider this a warning. If I, if I ever see you anywhere near Polina, even a meter close, I won't let it slide. Got it? Yeah. And this is to make it stick. His fist landed on my temple. The world turned upside down. It felt like I was falling into the sky, uh, the color of decaying meat. I grabbed the roots to stop myself from tumbling more. My consciousness was drifting on top of the abyss, gliding to its depths like a deflated balloon. I tried to get up. A blurry silhouette that probably belonged to Polina was fighting back, but two others held her by the sides and dragged her away. We'll take you home. Don't be scared, eh? Yeah, who knows what kind of psychos roam this forest. And Tosha here uh, should rest for a bit. Polina. Romka, Romka's boot met with my face. <clears throat> my hand got twisted. The back of my head hit the ice. My eyes obediently rolled over. The darkness jumped out, took a stance just to devour me. <clears throat> Ugh, cough. Tough luck, you overestimated yourself. Uh, I turned around, dug my nose into the bed sheets, forced my eyes open with great difficulty. Paintings on the walls, books, a pile of comic magazines. I felt up my chin, afraid that it w will respond with sharp pain. My fingers slid across my face, saw my temples, no bumps, no pain. I sat up, blinking in surprise, fixed my glasses, studied my hands clean without any mud under the nails. My school bag was reclined against the table. I heard bits and pieces of a conversation through the door. I was at home, in my bedroom. Did I get here myself? 
And what about the glasses? Did Semyon return them? Polina, maybe? Or an unknown friend? I decided to leave that question for later and looked out the window. The forest had so many had many secrets and it wasn't in any hurry to reveal them to me. The clock on a nightstand showed 10 a.m. The sun was already above the field, but it didn't bring any warmth. The thicket moaned uh, from its cracking bones. Was this our mind palace? Or was it all a dream? Tell me it was all a dream. That would be super funny. <laughs> I went out in the hallway and the conversation became clearer. Laughter. Uh, I haven't heard mom laugh in, laugh in so long. Yep. In a silent house among sneaking shadows. Such an ordinary but dear laughter. I sneak through the ladder to the lower floor as if afraid to spoil that moment. And then I ask him, do you have any comics? I want to buy some for my bunny. And he goes, your rabbit reads comics? <laughs> Mom burst out laughing. Olya followed suit. <laughs> well, yeah, I tell him, my bunny is well trained. Gosh, you're the best. <laughs> Did you doubt me? Not even for a second. Mom and dad sitting in a tree. When I entered the kitchen, Mom was kissing dad on the forehead and he was uh, gently stroking her shoulder. Olya sat between her parents, armed with a fork, a polka dotted cooking pot. Uh, emanated a pleasant aroma, even with the lid on. Ah, вот и он. Here he is. Привет, Sonia. There he is. <laughs> hey there, sleepyhead. Took your uh, took after your father in that. The white canvas of fr of a frosted window uh, behind mom's back made it uh, look like she was on someone's painting. Садись, садись. В ногах правда нет. Come on, sit down, take a load off your feet. А завтрак – самое важное для здорового человека. Breakfast is the most important thing for, a for any healthy person. I sat down, a charming smile on my lips. Olya winked at me, and the lamp on the table flickered in unison with her. Заспанный какой. You look so sleepy. Какой есть. Наш родной. В детдом сдавать Oh, what can you do? He's our child. It's already too late to hand him over to an orphanage. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Dad let out a dry laugh to show he was joking. Mom slapped him on the shoulder. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Do you think you're the only person who's dripping saliva over here? <laughs> Big bro, will you eat like this? How? I caught the sparkling gazes of my parents on myself. If I had a camera at that moment, I wouldn't. I would have taken a snap so I could always look at these smiles on a photograph. <laughs> I wanted this beautiful moment to last forever. <laughs> the light bulb went out and then came back. The window glass shutter shuttered slightly. Take the mask off, son. It'll get in the way of eating. What mask? A silly smile got stuck on my face. Dad showed me his sturdy white teeth that looked like piano keys. Come on, take it off, bunny. <laughs> I slipped my hand across my cheek, let out a laugh. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> the whole family was laughing now, pointing their fingers at me and slapping their knees uh, and the tablecloth. Dad wiped his wet eyes with his knuckles. <laughs> well, good job making us laugh, son. <laughs> now take off your mask, please. I touched my face again. My skin went numb. <laughs> but I'm not wearing a mask. Mom fidgeted on her chair. She tilted her head and squinted. The canvas behind her back turned gray and kept getting darker with every passing moment. Oh! <laughs> we can't start until you take it off. I can't wait anymore. Take off the mask. Stop fooling around. His voice was kind but firm. Mom, Toshi is scaring me. Your legs scraped against the floorboards. Olya moved away from me. <laughs> Do more. Do more. Oh. Scream. <laughs> I like that a lot. I like that a whole lot. She wasn't smiling anymore. Actually, there wasn't a single smile left in the room if you don't count the cracks in the walls. What have you done? You made your sister cry. But... Olya sobbed, her eyes downcast, sneaking fearful glances at me. Mom slammed her fist on the table and almost fell to the floor along with the chair. Oh, what a disgrace of a son. We were all having fun and then you came around and ruined everything. Splashes of saliva flew at me. Oh, 
what the fuck? I turned to dad, begging him to explain what was going on. Sticky syrup trickled down dad's beard, falling on his shirt. His eyes were looking in different directions. Cool! <laughs> there was a loud sound in the attic. Water pipes grumbled. <laughs> the house is alive. Every room had some uh, someone wrestling, moving around, breathing in it. Uh, the light bulb started flickering like a stroboscope. The faces of my parents disappeared into the darkness only to appear again moments later. Outside, a tall shadow walked past the window. I was able to jump up and run away, but my body wasn't listening to my commands. My hands just obediently stayed, at the, stayed on the table. I was just an onlooker. The lights went out. I spent three heartbeats in complete darkness. Cool. Then the bulb flashed with blinding light. Three masks were looking at me with their gaping eyes. A fox woman where my mom was just a moment ago. <laughs> a wolf man at the head of the table. And a bunny girl, my Olia. I couldn't even ask why they were uh, why they wore these strange, scary animal faces. Does that make us the bear? And why the fur on them was moving as if there uh, was something writhing behind the masks, making the paper mache bulge. <laughs> my tongue didn't listen to the commands my brain sent to it. I could only shift my gaze between the masks, watching the long, twisted shadows behind the backs of my family. Bon appetit. She tore the lid off the pot. Was it my face? Yay! A cut-off head was lying in bloody gravy. A pair of gl glazed eyes were drilling at me from inside the pot. Its mouth was open in a silent scream. The head of the uh, the head at the bottom of the pot belonged to me. Blood ran down the agonized face of the cut-off head. At the same time, something hot started streaming from my nostrils. Scarlet drops falling onto the tablecloth. Yes. Eat up. Ah! <laughs> ah! I screamed. <laughs> I jumped up. My jaw was burning, as were my temples. The kitchen, the beasts, and animal masks, the dead head. Everything had disappeared. Everything but the goddamn mask that was haunting me. One of the delinquents put it on me for laughs. I tore off the bunny, ma uh, bunny face that had already stuck to my face, threw it into the darkness, and realized I woke up near the crumbled snowman in the forest, covered in snow and carnivorous needles, without my glasses and my, um, with, my smashed, with a smashed face, so I blacked out, horrible. Pulsating pain seemed like a gift compared to the horrors I just witnessed. I stood up, spitting out blood. The forest seemed like a prison that was keeping me in with its wooden bars. I didn't know how long I was out. My limbs were numb from the cold. My pants were soaking wet. I pee peed myself. Um, I stood alone in a ring of towering trunks, excuse me, not being able to see anything. Everything around me moved, trembled. My ears went numb from all the rustling. The treetops melted into the darkness of the cosmos. Um, the bushes became empty cells whose occupants were suddenly set free. It felt like a clawing fang would could fly out from the darkness into my stunned face at any moment. I heard a scream somewhere far away. Anton! Anton! Someone was looking for me, just like that boy who went missing. Tears stung my eyes. A big drop fell from my lashes. Anton! Anton! The scream was closer now, and for a moment I even believed that I was about to be saved. Yes, yes! I'm here! The light hit my face. I covered it with my hand. Flashlights, uh, flashlights, Ray slid down. Anton, oh, Anton oh, there you are. Are you out of your mind? What's this about? What's this all about? My dad walked out from the shadows. I went toward him, hoping that he won't melt, that he's not another trick that my insane mind played on me. He turned out to be real, warm and alive. Cat got your tongue? Я встретил твою одноклассницу на дороге. Она сказала... What? Did you hear that? There was like some running around. I've met a girl from your class on the road. She said... Branches cracked in the distance. I pressed myself into my father's chest, engulfed by fear, and he started looking around, alerted. 
and spoke in a tone of voice that was much more nervous. Okay, let's get out of here. If your mother learns of this, she'll be so mad at us that we and that we'll never forget this day. I reached out for my father, still feeling the chilling embrace of fear. I grabbed his firm hand, felt his quick pulse with my fingertips, then stood up and wobbled along behind my father, following his barely discernible footprints. Back to civilization, back to light, back to the road where my dad parked his car. And not a word about this at home, got it? Don't even hint at where I found you. All right, Dad. Pop. I heard pop. He was holding my hand as if it was the most precious thing in the world and kept telling me how afraid he is to lose me or Olya. I nodded and moved my legs. Only when we got to the car, Dad noticed my scratches. Somebody hurt you? I felt up my cheek. I got into a fight. Over what? A girl. Dad replied with a thoughtful nod. I heard the low hum of the engine. My dad wore a fearful expression. It wasn't that sticky fear that paralyzed me in the nightmare, though. His fear was noble, like crystal clear diamond. He opened the glove box and got some napkins out of there. Fighting for the girl you like is right. Yeah, sometimes, uh, normally you try to resolve things with words, it's just sometimes words don't work. Dad flashed an encouraging smile at me. Right as he was about to um, close the glove box, I noticed a handle peeking out from under, of, from under of a rug. He was carrying a gun around. My dad, a true intellectual, had a pistol with him like an action movie hero. Or like an ordinary thug, some voice whispered to me. Pines were flying by in the window. The car's light were um, the car's light was struggling against the darkness. The car carried me back home, dad cautiously studying me in the back mirror. I was thinking about the gun, about my dreams, about people in animal masks that pretended to be my parents. Nyong. <laughs> And the white snowflakes just kept dancing in the starry sky. Look what the cat dragged in. Mom was going down the stairs, piercing dad with her trademark glare. Her face showed something between wrath and condescension. Suddenly her gaze shifted to me and stayed for a dangerously long time. Hey, what's this? Where are your glasses, Anton? Did you lose them? This dummy probably just forgot them at school. A venomous pause followed. He's your son, all right. Damn. Dad glared at Mom and then mischie mischievously winked at me, reminding me of our deal. Well, we have spare glasses, so we'll manage somehow. My parents stood in silence a bit longer, and then uh, both of them went uh, to mind their own business. <laughs> Olya threw herself into my arms before I could even take off my coat. I saw a fox! Surprise akin to a shotgun blast. I can only flap my lips in reply. A cup shattered into many little pieces with a loud thang. <laughs> a loud thang! My mom let, uh, let it fall from her hands. Her face was pale and her eyes were glued to the ground. This pause, just a split second, felt like an eternity. Then my mom spoke with disappointment. First it was an owl, now it's a fox. Will you ever get tired of this? But it's true. She was so fluffy. She stood on her back legs near the hedge, just like a person. The fox called my name, but then mom came and she fled. There was no fox. Stop making things up. She dropped the freaking thing. She dropped it. It's real. It's real. She dropped it. That's why she dropped it. Don't go near her. If it was necessary, I was ready to shake my sister as if she was a doll made of cloth. 
What's wrong, Tosha? Don't go, you hear me? Mom entered the hallway and gave me a surprised look. I hesitated. Well, a fox will bite you. I remembered fairy tales where foxes used to kidnap children. I imagined Elisa, liberated, carnivorous, running through the night forest and a, with a dangling sack in her hand. It wasn't a real fox. Tell him, Olya. She stood on two legs and she wore a dress. <laughs> and she was real. <laughs> See? Mom showed us a tired smile as if it was the only explanation needed. <laughs> her, her fucking smile. That's good. I also forced myself to smile. My smile was like a thin piece of soap right before it dissolves completely on your palm. Uh, but then I was left alone with my sister. I whispered. I guess it would. Yeah. If, if you see her again, run. <laughs> scared the shit out of her. Memories about my family and disgusting masks attacked, bombarded me like the uh, underhanded blows of my classmates. The furry faces of my family stood before my eyes, their toothy mouths full of thick saliva. What's happening to me? What kind of tricks is my mind playing on me? This bunny mask was real. It just appeared in my school, uh, school bag out of nowhere as if I never threw it away in the forest. Did we throw it away in the forest? What? Am I missing something? Am I forgetting something? Did we ever have that mask in the previous episode? I don't remember anything about this mask. Like when they pulled it out, that was like the first time. Oh, wait. All right. All right. Yeah, it appeared in our bag. It just appeared in. Uh, oh, is he talking about like right now versus like previously when it happened? It's still in his bag. I shut my eyes and threw vitamins in my mouth, washed them down with water. Please stop driving me mad, please. I barely managed to force myself to do homework, but those math problems just refused to be solved. Numbers in my notebook tumbled around and mixed in a whirling dance, sometimes running over the lines. My head became heavy from the uh, pandemonium, and I almost dropped it into that chain of numbers. So as the mast appeared in this episode, we threw it away in the forest. He found it in his bag again just now. Okay. Thought they would maybe denote that a little bit better. Is that a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? Is that a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle right there? Yo, <laughs> is that a TMNT? My head became heavy with the pandemic. Yeah, I already said that. Um, my eyelids felt like they were tiny weights tied to them, the type used in grocery stores. And right at that moment, I surrendered and closed my notebook. The memories of my day started flashing before my eyes. I was in the middle of the stuffy school corridor. I could see the literature classroom from here, the faces of dead classical writers on their portraits, the prim and regal pose of our homeroom teacher, Lila Pavlovna. Um, and around that corner was her daughter, Katya, a snitch and a gossip eagerly waiting for me. Hey, transfer student, transfer student. What do you want, Katya? She got on her tiptoes and started swaying uh, while hiding her hands behind her back and then asked me with a fake smile on her face. Can I ask you something? Why did you get transferred here? I might have told the truth about this to Polina, but Katya will sell it on the market for three kopekas. Uh, kopekas? Kopekas? Um, uh... It would be the same as printing all my thoughts and hanging them near Vova's picture for everyone to see. So I reverted to an answer I knew by heart. It's all because of my parents. Dad has a new job here and my mom, my mom, but Katya didn't even listen to me, she just rushed toward the perked up ears of her friends, whispered something while stealing glances at me and giggling. Yeah, right. He takes us all for fools. I've heard it's all because of his father. He crossed the road of some big shot and now their family's hiding in our remote little village. That's not true. You're lying. And did you hear? Did you hear how Barboran beat him up? <laughs> and all he could do was look pathetic and take it. 
Прекрати! Ты знаешь, он не один Stop был. it. You know he wasn't alone. And if that wasn't enough, there are rumors that this weirdo carries a bunny mask with him wherever he goes. Who in their right mind would do something like that, huh, girls? I see, I see. Our Antoshka must be truly special. Maybe he's an autist? But what if he's a serial killer? I'm sure you'll be able to find an axe in his backpack if you look hard enough or something even worse. Yes, yes, yes. Shut up. Look at him scream as if something bit him. His pupils, look at how wide they are. I hope he won't go insane and resort to violence again. I mean, there must be a reason for why his mom always feeds him those pills, right? I just stood there in confusion, trying in vain to understand how she found out about my medicine. And what scared me even more was the possibility that her nonsense had some truth mixed in. Yeah, that's right. He's as insane as his little sister. Hmm. Can you imagine that she says a human-sized owl visits her every night? Yes, yes, yes. But not a single healthy person has seen it. And this simpleton believes her. Can you imagine that? And then I caught a single kind look from the smirking crowd. How can it be, Anton? <laughs> are you really? Are you unwell? Paulina, please listen to me. Yeah, right. Don't listen to her, this liar, Paulin Paulinochka. Paulinochka? He's probably never even been to Moscow. This loser can't even stand up for himself. And he won't be able to defend you if it comes down to it. He'll run away to protect his own skin. Weakling. <laughs> Polina slashes as someone kicked her in the stomach and then burst out into tears and fell onto the dirty floor, wailing and screaming. <laughs> no! No! Why, Anton, why? I couldn't understand her reaction, but I still rushed to Polina's side before getting shoved violently by Katya. Oh. Get your paws off her, you monster! Rage was building up <laughs> under the veil of my fear. I started. Oh, there's there's your <laughs> there's your Arthur meme. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. Uh, it slowly rose uh, from the cloudy mist. Uh, I felt my upper lip uh, lift creep up, showing my teeth. The fact that your father beats your mother doesn't give you the right to do the same to girls. My fists became hand hammers. I couldn't unclench them. Nobody can speak like that about <laughs> speak like that about my family. I came to my senses when I already lunged at the angry Katya. Aha! Uh -huh, he went nuts! Nuts! Help, help! Petrov went completely insane. At the same moment, the crowd around her became louder. It started uh, whistling and roaring and growing. Whee! The subtle silhouettes of my schoolmates uh, became larger, wider. They shot upward toward the ceiling, turned into a giant black forest chock full of toothy faces. It shrank, I shrank into a tiny ball of fur and started shaking in fear before the might of ulcer-ridden trunks that belonged to either trees or humans. It was impossible to tell. Oh, so you finally show your animal nature. Coward. Katya's face was twisted with jubilation and ecstasy. Anton! Why, no! Why did you do this to me? Polina screamed while choking on her tears. He is just an animal, an outsider. <laughs> A scary flapping of wings came from the forest. A pair of giant white ears descended somewhere from above and I dug myself into them. Anton, Anton, please wake up. I jumped up, almost falling out of bed. Apparently, I was thrashing around for hours on these sweat-soaked cheats. Olya's scream pulled me out, set me free from the tentacles of fear. Anton, please, wake up, wake up! It took my eyes a while to focus on the silhouette near the window. Olya's voice was distant, my head was still ringing after the fight. Sounds got distorted as if my ears were stuffed with cotton. Why is she behind them? Um, my sister, as distressed as ever, just kept on repeating the same phrase. 
The owl, the owl! Please! I'm scared. Her tears poured, uh, poured on my heart like boiling water, but I almost uh, was almost thankful for the owl's appearance. Otherwise, the scared Olya wouldn't have woken me up. Wait a second, Olya. Want me to read Morzilka for you? What is Morzilka? A Soviet and Russian monthly illustrated magazine for kids. It was published in 1924. The magazine uses an unidentified yellow creature wearing a scarf and a red beret as its mascot. Uh, writers like uh, Samuel Marshak and Agnia uh, Barto contributed to the magazine early in their careers. Give me... I placed my bare heels on the cold floor, felt around for my glasses, remembered Semyon, his underhanded act, and sighed. Anton! Anton! Please, please! Look! She couldn't tear her eyes off the window as if it was a staring contest. I found the light switch uh, with my hand. The lamp poured bright all light all over me. I got up. My vision fooled me, moving the window closer only to push it farther the next moment. My sister was just a blurry spot. I took a hesitant step forward. Olya, what's there? What happened? Do you want me to open the curtains? No, please don't. The owl is there. The voice was coming from behind. I turned around and froze from terror. Teary-eyed Olya stood in the doorway. Who? Who are you talking to right now? She stared at me uh, with eyes that were red from crying with her hands wrapped around her shoulders. Her voice was nervous, as if she was afraid to hear my answer. I was talking to you, to someone who pretended to be you. The ledge outside my windows creaked ominously as if something huge was sitting on top of it. And the thing that pretended to be Olya started spreading, changing shape, growing, uh, grow to scary heights under the light of the carnivorous moon. Please. <laughs> come closer, come here. The voice didn't belong to my sister anymore. The thing that had uh, that was hiding behind my curtains got tired of pretending, making me look like a fool. I pinched myself as hard as I could, hoping the silhouette near the window was just a continuation of my nightmare, a hallucination brought upon by the cursed house. And those don't bite, do they? The silhouette was towering before me and under the veil of mist. I heard Olya's shrill scream when someone had knocked on my window. <laughs> knock, knock. <laughs> it came to get us. Another knock. I stepped back from the middle of the room, as if there exists nooks where I could hide from this horror. Knock, knock. The sound was sharp, metallic. The lamp started shimmering when it suddenly lighted, uh, lighted the whole room and went out. Like a candle in the strong wind, the filament inside it snapped with a ringing sound. <laughs> The darkness that was waiting for that exact moment poured from all angles and enveloped me. There was only this window left in the whole universe. The moonlight poured through it, painting everything the color of bones that were exhumed from a crypt. <laughs> Olya started squealing and pressed herself into my back, seeking protection. And then an eye, burning with a carnivorous fire, st stared at us from the window. Knock, 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 knock. No, it wasn't trying to break the window. It was toying with us. It just kept on knocking, driving us mad. As if a giant clock was measuring the time left for us, its pendulum swinging above the abyss. Go away! Get out! Shoot! She was screaming in desperation, her hands clutching my arm like a pair of pincers. Anton. Anton. Come closer. I could barely make out the pair of wings that spread ab out above the black spot. Tell her, Anton. Tell it that I won't be a bad girl anymore. Never ever. I just wanted to leave. Please. The moonlight suddenly disappeared and the room descended into darkness. We couldn't see the burning eye anymore. I swallowed the stingy lump. lump that was stuck in my throat. I stepped toward the curtains, entranced by the call of uh, this disfigured guest. <laughs> Olya was standing behind me, mumbling, I'll be good, I'll be good, I'll be good. The bleak window was creeping closer. Curtains rustled. 
I reached out to move them aside so I could look at my fear in the eye. At that moment, I heard a noise coming from our parents' bedroom. Without thinking, I pulled the curtain to the side with one swing. Nothing. Though there was something shining on the ledge among the scattered feathers. Was it his glasses? Yeah! My glasses! The ones that Semyon took from me. How did they get here? Was that a gift from the gurgling night? Did that owl really bring them here? I looked at the front yard, at the foreboding clearing, at the toothy forest. Uh, not a soul, not a trace of a like, uh, guest. What are these little, are these cro like feet? Interesting. Only the old lamppost dreaming like a lone watchman among the snowy desert. The dry window frame creaked. I tore away the insulating tape and stipe, stipes of glued newspapers? Window insulation uh, before plastic uh, windows became widely accessible in Russia. The cracks and frames and wooden windows were filled with cotton or pieces of cloth and sealed with self-adhesive tape or strips of newspapers soaked in soapy water to conserve heat in the winter. Hmm. Open the window with big trouble. Frost pinned me with its little needles. The paintings on the wall on my walls moved from the draft. I touched my glasses, sure they would melt in my hands, but they were real. My brain was scrambling for an explanation. Simeon and his gang just pulled a prank on me. That was it. That's it. <clears throat> a smooth white blanket was glittering under the street lamp just outside our yard. If anybody was to get close to the house to climb the pipe to the ledge of the window, they would surely leave footprints, but there were none unless it was rain, uh, snowing really hard. I cautiously took my glasses. My wrist was still intact. Nobody pulled me into the darkness, full of restless writhing. Why aren't you in bed? Uh, I swayed from surprise and almost fell out the window. Are you out of your mind? Did it feel hot in here? Do you want to catch a cold? The owl was here. Tosha scared it away. Go to your room immediately and get in your bed. And you. Mom paused, directing her seething eyes at me. She was thinking of punishment equivalent to my crime. In the end, she just waved her hand, took Olya to the sh um, by the shoulder, and left, throwing gloomy words my way. We'll talk tomorrow. I managed to get the frame back in place with a couple of hits, pressed in the latches with all my strength so my fingers could muster. I left, uh, the cold left the room, but the fear was still present. I placed my glasses on my nose and started studying my reflection in the window. It didn't look like a face, more like a death mask, just like the one worn by the boy from the notice board. That night, I was on the edge of joining him there. <laughs> a black and white face was staring at me through the clearing between student heads. And it wasn't Vova. His face was right beside it. I recognized the fat cheeks, the damaged skin. Samian. Barbarin's photo was printed out and placed under the glass like an exhibition piece. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> hate to leave it there, but uh, my voice is getting messed up. It is almost midnight and I need to uh, exercise for the night. So we're going to call it there. Um, uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to make any promises, but I um, want to um, start this back up soon. Um, I want to say tomorrow, but I, I've said that again. Um, you know, I've said that before. Uh, I want to do like it's some point soon. I'll just say that some point soon. Keep posted. I will, I will tell everybody when we're coming back. I am very interested in this and what's going on. I also kind of want to mess around with like the, the other like options. Actually, can I just load this? No, 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 no. Uh, can I load? Yeah, load. I'm just curious what happens. I reached out my hand. That wasn't shaking anymore. <laughs> Somebody had handed me the mask and let out an evil laugh. The fur felt warm to the touch, just like I expected. I got goosebumps. Electricity flowed through my spine. This is it. My salvation. A voice whispered to me from the well of subconscious. 
subconsciousness of just put it on, put it on and nobody will hurt you. The forest froze, gazing at me with cracks in the bark. I acted slowly. I took off my glasses. Got rid of them and of the nasty spit on the paper mache. There was movement inside of the bunny face, as if someone was trying to break out, and it, I needed to help it. I lifted up the mask and started moving it toward my flaming cheeks, just like in that movie with Jim Carrey. <laughs> You can't... No. The mask had power. This mask had strength. A carton, a carton touched my skin. It enveloped my skull. My nose took the shape of my face. It smelled like an animal lair and pine. My lips touched some sort of hard, wavy material. My armor. Strangely enough, through the slits of the old carnival mask, I was able to see as good as through my glasses. A trio of boys frozen in the clearing. Snowflakes frozen in the air, the trees whose shadows formed black streams toward me, and a weird silhouette in the early twilight behind the windfall. In all that silence, Semyon nervously whispered, uh, What's on that? Hey guys, what's up with him? I broadened my shoulders. My muscles felt like they were made of steel. Invisible plumes of fog flew toward me, breaking off the trees. I was absorbing the forest's power and every uh, with every pore of my body. I smiled underneath the mask. No, I showed my teeth. My fists were itching. My stomach was growling. He's turning. You asked for this. I made a step forward. Semyon carefully stepped toward me as if he, he was walking on thin ice. A trail from my dreams snaked in front of me again. Endless alluring, it was beckoning me away from all the problems to the new wonderful world, the world of Magic Neverland. I pulled the zipper, opened my coat, and threw it in the snow with a fast motion, then growled. I felt like something was frantically looking for an exit underneath my skin. I went towards Semyon. He's turning! Fuck! Turning. Into a, f into a fucking arsler. The clearing blew up in hysteric laughter. <laughs> Biasha was clutching his stomach. Roma smirked, shaking his head. <laughs> and Semyon, laughing the most out of the three, spat on his knuckles and waved his fist like a club. You're such a moron, Tosha. A fist collided with my mask. The fur didn't dampen the blow at all. <laughs> there was no power, no magic smoke coming from it. I flew toward the bushes and landed on my butt. To my horror, Polina, pale in the face, stood back behind the back of the jeering trio. She looked at me with a mix of surprise and bewilderment, and maybe even disappointment. What else did she did I expect? That I would turn into a superhero and save her after putting on a piece of old carton on my stupid face? My vision, bolstered by adrenaline at that moment, returned to normal. All right, yeah. yeah. FYI, these, uh, Zazo says, FYI, these three roots, Polina, Elisa, and the loner root, um, putting on the mask slash not fighting back in episode two, puts you on the loner root regardless of the previous choices and is by far the shortest route in the game. Okay. Loner root. Interesting. All right. Well, um, let's load this guy. All right. Okay. Uh, well, that was that was fun. Um, I'm excited to keep going with this. Um, so yeah. Uh, hope you all have a great night, and uh, I will catch you on the next one. Cheers. Episode three on end. The wolf's gray fur will stand. The space bar. Yeah. He's the one who hated Barburan. You think he did it? I've heard. I've heard he's a weirdo. <laughs> Me? I'm a weirdo. I hurriedly rubbed my glasses. The glasses! Simeon was clutching them in his fist while I was getting beat it up. And in just a couple of hours, this lost item was lying on the ledge of my window. It was hard to imagine that uh, Sioma. Uh, suddenly got guilty, uh, got guilty conscience, got a guilty conscience, <clears throat> and returned my glasses in such a strange way. 
I was shocked, but kept walking toward the classroom, accompanied by nasty whispers all around me. That photo still stood before my eyes. Semyon has gone missing. Semyon is gone. His f- <laughs> His fat fingers will never get to my throat. His signet ring won't smash into my chin. He'll never humiliate me again. Wasn't that what I wished for? On the other hand, did I really wish Semyon to become a murky stain on the notice board? He was still someone's son, or grandson, and he went through the same struggles as me. It's his fucking dad, isn't it? It's his fucking dad. Did I really wish for my uns unseen companion to dispatch him in such a brutal fashion? I didn't know the answer, or I was just scared of it. The fuck was that? <laughs> kind of glitched out. Nonetheless, school still had something nice about it. Polina, the girl with the violin, was like a mountain spring, like well water that you gulp down, pressing your lips against the zinc outer ring of a bucket and can't ever get enough. Remembering our walk yesterday cooled off my head. Polina's hatred towards dogs, while understandable, was still alarming. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who doesn't like dogs, just show them this screen from this game. <laughs> it's perfect. It's just, it, uh, yeah, yep. <laughs> uh, could a charming girl like, could a charming girl like her really be nesting something so repulsive inside her heart? I mean, I get being scared of dogs. I get it. Like, uh, but, <laughs> but at a certain point, it's like, Come on, man. They're just little dudes. They're just little guys, and they just want love. They just want scritches and fucking love. God damn it. <clears throat> I remembered... Him. <clears throat> Excuse me. This coffee is fucking me up. Speaking of which, cheers. I can fix her. <laughs> Winnie. Uh, I immediately remembered my dad's shady past that recently resurfaced. See? I'm, I'm telling you, it's the fucking dad. It's the dad. Elisa, oh, I just posted my new weird dog in your Discord server? Oh, shit. I got a new weird dog. Oh, I'll look at it later. Um, I immediately remembered my dad's shady past that recently resurfaced. The person I idolized was the reason for us moving to this bleak countryside. At least he was according to mom's screams that were coming from the other side of the wall. Still, Polina tried to defend me from a delinquent gang, even if she failed at it. She was pleading for Romka to leave me alone and gather my belongings that were strewn around the forest while fighting tears. And when those bastards tried to drag her away, she resisted with all the might she had in her fragile body. In the end, she was the one to find my house, lost among the taiga, and told my dad that I lied there alone in the dark, abandoned in the middle of the forest after the beating. Maybe I'm being too harsh on her. What if I make her one of the characters in the story I'll draw? The protagonist will save her from terrifying monsters. As soon as I thought of monsters, a bunch of my classmates slid down the rails, smirking like the xenomorphs from the alien. It's just called Alien, my guy. Fucking dang. <laughs> Got him! I immediately felt larvae of fear writhe in my stomach. I didn't want to cross paths with Romka and Biasha after what happened yesterday especially since Semyon suddenly went missing. Polina seemed eager to walk to me, but her expression soured after noticing the aforementioned duo, and she walked past, leaving me a single worried look. Sorry look. <laughs> I entered the classroom and went toward the last row. All the chatter suddenly died down when I walked there in complete silence. It felt like my classmates pushed and poked me with their stares. They they carefully observed my every move. They looked at me like um, a mortifying, with a mortifying mix of pity, ridicule, and derision. Like a scientist looks at an ugly representative of a newfound species of worms. Oh, scientists don't do that. Well, yeah, yeah, whatever. I stared at the desk with a huge pile of library textbooks on top, my fists clenched. It felt like I was the one who disappeared in that snowy forest and my desk was finally used for something worthwhile. 
Semyon's empty chair stood in front of me, the chair that once belonged to Vova gathered dust somewhere in another classroom. Sit down or look at other th stuff. I'm going to look at other stuff. I looked at the portraits of classical writers. My eyes stopped on, on Ezanine's photo. Last year, I was uh, tasked with learning any poem, and Dad suggested I learn uh, one about the dog Jim, written by Ezanine. Ezanin? Ezanin? Um, I don't remember all the stanzas by, stanzas by now, but the last one was somehow deeply ingrained in my memory. I'm sure she'll come here in my absence. Please catch her eye. Go kiss her hand for me. For all my real and fa or fancied errors asking forgiveness of her humility. Uh, what else we got? Every boy my age I knew had something like this in his arsenal. Powder firecrackers that blow up with a very loud sound. Especially inside an archway. It is said that they are produced in China and that a single one of them can blow your fingers off if you light it up and clutch it in your hand. Especially the black corsair type. They won't be enough to blow up plastic soldiers. But when it comes to stuff made of plaster, they should work. <clears throat> An old, cheap slide projector. I called this model a tank because it looked like one. There was a time when I had a lot of cool fairy tales that we used to watch with Dad in complete darkness. I remember Little Raccoon and One Who Sits in the Pond, Kipling's Mowgli, and many others. I was immediately swept away by the memory of the projector's hum, of its hot casing, of its bright rays hitting the wall, turning it into a screen. It's a pity that the school's slides were mostly about minerals and PSAs. Man, what else we got? Is that it? Right. After a moment of hesitation, I sat down at Barburin's desk, the place where I was supposed to be assigned to by uh, Lilia Pavlo Pavlova first. Pavlovna. The chatter resumed as if someone just unpaused a movie. Бабушка Бабурина такой кипиш устроила, когда он домой не явился. Бабурин's grandma made such a fuss when he didn't return home. Сначала в школу прибежала, потом ментов вызвала. First she ran to the school, then called the cops. Да, да, да. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Katya snuck a cunning glance at me, then leaned into her neighbor and whispered something. Girls from the second row also leaned in. She shared something with them, too. Whispers, nods. I kept catching her stare on myself. <laughs> I kept catching her stare at me. Her neighbor stared, too. The whole class was watching me. It was like they felt the need to watch me because... I'm dangerous. They were searching for traces of blood on my fingers. I wanted to defend myself and shout, Guys, listen, I'm innocent. Guys, come on! I'm innocent here! The delinquents turned around and stared at me in silence. Their looks were dripping with malice. But why? What did I do to them? Their friend went missing and they're still focusing on me. Suddenly I noticed Biasha drilling a hole in my nose with his eyes. It felt like he was about to point his finger at me and shout at the top of his lungs, Everyone, look! Barboran snatched his glasses yesterday, and now he has them back. Murderer. But he remained silent as if there was nothing special at all about my glasses. I may be going mad, but I think Biasha knows something. He knows something, but he won't tell me what. Roma gave me a meaningful glance, as if reminding me of his promise. My aching temple reminded me of it. I needed to stay away from Polina. As if looking for protection... I clutched the ruler until my hand hurt. You don't have to be Columbo to solve this. Who's Columbo? Columbo, an American crime drama te television series starring Peter Falk as Columbo, a homicide detective with the Los Angeles Police Department. Oh, that Columbo. Sorry. Who held a grudge against Barboran? Who hit him yesterday, bullied him, and then... The metal ruler fell out of my weak fingers. It hit the floor with a jingle that made the other kids shudder. Katya bit her tongue and squirmed nervously. 
Chair scraped against the floor. My classmates dr moved away from me, closer to the exit, toward the teacher's desk. I was not the only one to catch wind of that change. Romka and Biasha looked around and winced in contempt. Too bad that they weren't afraid of me like everybody else. Shut it. I bet you Barboran just got a whipping from his old hag and ran off. He'll find him soon. No, find him all right. In a ravine with his stomach cut open. I gulped. <laughs> Rip. I imagine Sioma on a snowy blanket, his face white like a fish belly, split down the middle by the uh, crevice of his mouth, snowflakes falling on his glassy eyes and filling up his throat. See? I could almost hear his condescending tone. It's all your fault. But why was Semyon the only one to get his just desserts for bullying me? Weren't all of them supposed to disappear? Romka, Byasha, Katya, along with every laughing onlooker? Of course, Semyon did me a favor by disappearing. Thanks to him, my classmates now stared at me in awe. But that was only one side of the coin. What if I'll have to repay that favor soon? The door creaked. Polina entered the classroom. I straightened up in a hurry so she wouldn't see me looking like a scared critter. Polina found me with her eyes, gave me a short nod, and went to her seat. Katya rushed to her neighbors again like a lab rat that saw a treat and started whispering, switching her gaze between me and Polina. Messages on pieces of paper started jumping around the classroom. The ringer's trill announced the start of class. Alright, stop messing around. Class, stand up. Petrov, you too, Petrov. Lilia Pavlovna uh, went to her desk, followed by a policeman in a uniform. And then goofy music started to play. <laughs> it was the man that visited us just recently. Tall and his stare so sharp you could get cut on it. Здрасте. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hello there, kids. Where does Hack go? Hi. You can sit down, kids. This is Senior Lieutenant Konstantin uh, Vladimirovich uh, Tikhonov. He's going to ask you a couple of questions and give you a small PSA. Okay, kids are saying shit. The class livened up. Talking to a policeman was way better than studying. I, on the other hand, was ready to sit through hundreds of hours of Russian literature just to escape the lieutenant's oppressive stare. Uh, his brown eyes felt around the classroom looking for me. Her hair stood out on the back of my neck and an icicle had lodged in my gut. Is it true that Barbourin got killed by a serial killer? Yekaterina, no katsits. Shush, Yekaterina. Let the adults ask the questions here. Просто нам всем страшно. We're all scared. Может убийца бродит где-то рядом. Maybe the killer is somewhere close. Или сидит у нас за спиной. Shut up, Katya. Maybe they're even sitting among us. Maybe there is an imposter among us. Sus. <laughs> Her sly stare was directed at me. I'm not the imposter. I'm not the imposter. Dikonov stepped in between the rows of desks and started walking at an excruciatingly slow pace, brushing his fingers against the chairs he passed by. Some of the students almost broke their necks following his movements. That's how a crowd of commoners would gleefully anticipate a public execution in the Middle Ages. I know, I was there. And he just walked, getting closer and closer to me. I gritted my teeth to stop myself from screaming. <gasps> Calm down, breathe. He didn't kill or kidnap anyone. He already knew the answer to his question, but the policeman still asked in a stern voice. Petrov, Anton? Anton Petrov? Da. Yep. Stand, Petrov. Stand up, Petrov. My muscles turned to stone. I got up, unglued myself from the chair. I felt like I could hear all my joints creak in the process. I only wish that Polina wouldn't turn around to see the grimace of horror on my face. This, this, this is, this is a grimace of horror. If only I could be somewhere far away in the forest, digging myself into a snow pile, rolling up into a ball there. 
The, the officer stared at me as if he was about to lock a pair of handcuffs around my wrists. I wonder how cold those bracelets are to the touch. I imagined myself getting jailed and put into a juvenile detention center where tens of semyons would constantly harass me. I don't know anything. I have nothing to do with this. Nobody is accusing you of anything. For now. Only then I noticed the file said case no in his hand. It had a great cover made from rough carton. It flopped onto the desk like a guillotine blade that slid down on someone's neck. With a measured motion, Tikhanov opened the file, still studying me with his gaze. Don't show... Are you going to do the fucking uh, Higurashi thing where the cop shows the fucking kid some gruesome fucking crime scene photos? Bruh, stop it with this shit. Cops suck. <laughs> Maybe it makes more sense, though, because cops do suck. Uh, I caught a glimpse of... Uh, I caught a glimpse... I caught a glimpse of documents and photos. They showed prints on the snow. They looked like animal prints. The fuck was that flash? flash? Have you talked to Semyon Barburin before? I only knew him for a day. Everyone knows that Petrov hated him. I turned red. You ugly bitch. <laughs> I wanted to stick my teeth into Katya's face and chew on her cheek. Oh. Instead, I replied with the calmest voice I could muster. We had a fight yesterday! <laughs> but he started it! So I hit him! You like my voice acting thing? <laughs> How hard did you hit him? Not hard, I mean... I waved my hand indecisively. Tikhanov looked at my fist as if he was surprised that I managed to hit the big kid from the photo. Surprisingly, Lilia Pavlovna came to my rescue. Barburin is a troubled teen. A true pain in the rear. Always picking fights with other kids. The officer replied with a meaningful nod and fished out a notebook out of the file. Algebra. Algebra. Uh, is this yours? I averted my gaze. It was the math notebook with my name on it. My classmates devoured me greedily with their eyes. It felt like even the writers of the on the portrait squinted at me in suspicion. Okay, hold on. Hold the fucking phone here. Why is he being uh, interrogated in front of his classmates? <laughs> like, what? Come on, man. My, my, uh... Yeah. We found it in the forest. In the area where the tractor driver who was plowing snow there last saw Barburin. I started blinking in bewilderment. Romka ransacked my school bag. This notebook probably just got lost somewhere in the bushes. The lieutenant knew about the school brawl, but was he aware of the fight in the forest clearing? I had witnesses that could testify to Semyon and I walking in different directions after that. Also, like... Not only would there be evidence of the scuffle, but uh, like just in terms of like I, this item in particular, but shouldn't like uh, our guy uh, Anton have like a f completely fucked face? Like he was, he was, he was rough last time we saw him. I looked toward the boys, hopeful. Romka, who sat behind Tikhanov, put a finger to his lips. And when the officer quickly turned around, he pretended to pick his nose. I deciphered his signal. Boys like Romka would probably say something like, snitches get stitches in a situation like this. I frantically fixed my glasses. Wait, Semyon took them away yesterday, but now they're... So what were you doing in the forest yesterday, Anton? I go to school through the forest. I could have easily fallen out of my bag. Easily, just like me producing this half-truth. Be careful out there. Before I could realize whether it was a genuine piece of advice or a veiled threat, the teacher said, Class, 
Class, the officer will now tell you about some rules you should follow. So the killer does exist. We can't make any of this public for now. Even though we just fucking did. Whether the criminal really exists or not, you should be mindful of your safety. The police, your parents, and your teachers all watch over you, but no one guard you. No one can guard you better than yourself. All right. Any questions? A stockade of arms rose from the desks. The kids shouted over each other, swarming the policemen with questions. In an attempt to calm down that chorus, he moved toward the blackboard. The gray file was left lying in front of me. I stared at it, my breathing so ragged that it might, that I might have looked like someone who just ran a 100 meter sprint. Beads of sweat rolled down my back. I looked around the classroom. My classmates were catching officers every word. Only Ramka was saying something to Biasha. <laughs> Lilia Pavlovna was staring in the w into the window, fighting back yawns. Oh. Oh man. We shouldn't open it. We shouldn't open it. We shouldn't open it. Oh, I'm opening it. Nobody paid me any mind when I slowly opened the file. My fingers started sifting through the documents. Ksenia Talal Talalevna, six years old, left her home one time in December. Identifying features, okay. My heart almost jumped out from my ribcage. A round-faced girl no older than Olya smiled at me from the photo. The first victim of a serial killer? The first child to disappear in the forest without a trace? I turned another page. Vladimir Matukin, 10 years old. Vova was the second. His mitten hanging from the branch. His name called out by desperate adults and reported by sneering echo. What the fuck? Just... <coughs> There's like weird fucking glitches. Lilia Pavlovna coughed, trying to calm down the rowdy students. I yanked my hand away and the file closed. Uh, I guess we could skip now. The officer finished his lecture and started searching around with his eyes. Finally, he noticed the folder he left on my desk, put it silently under his arm, and went uh, toward the blackboard without looking back. Let me say this again. If you see anyone suspicious in the village, be it near the school or the forest trail, contact the police immediately. Even if you're in the middle of getting killed and you can't get to a phone, it's your fault because you didn't contact the police. You got it? You know our number, right? Zero two. Thanks for listening, boys and girls. Thank you, Lilia Pavlovna. And <clears throat> we'll find your classmate. Oh, oh, please. Oh, please don't. <laughs> yeah, right. A thought flashed through my mind. <laughs> yeah, uh, I want the option to shout good luck, pig. <laughs> uh, dig through enough ditches and uh, slam in the back of my Dragula and maybe you'll be able to piece them together like Legos. My thoughts turned evil for some reason and I couldn't control them. I tried to switch to my lieutenant's speech about suspicious individuals. What if I saw the killer before? What if I was a hair's breadth away from them? What if they were my father? Suspicious people. Hmm. How suspicious was that fox girl that wandered in the darkness? A weirdo that always appeared out of nowhere and then dissolves into thin air with her riddles and rhymes? Well, could she really be uh, really harm the hulking Semyon? Should I tell the officer about her? What if lives of other kids depend on this? Of the cute Cassinia and Vova too. Wait. What if I get mocked for speaking out? What if they'll start whispering behind my back? Or what's even worse, think I'm insane? Rumka gave me a stern look over his shoulder. I doubt someone like him would approve of cooperating with the police. Koch's braid dangled nervously behind the delinquent sitting in front of me. My hand was glued to my desk. Tikhanov was saying goodbye to Lilia Pavlovna. He was about to leave. I'll be too late soon. I don't like I don't like framing it like this, but I do think that it's a fucking I I I'm thinking I, I'm not gonna say anything. 
some black femme. Bob's thoughts took over him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The slam in the back. My, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm always saying that about myself. Slamming and Draculas and stuff. I say we stay silent. I don't I don't like the framing because it makes us want to uh, like tell him purely because this fuck wants us to stay silent. But at the same time, it's like, it's shut the fuck up Friday. <laughs> uh... Yes, yes, thank you. I keep forgetting that I can save. It's a problem. I'm staying silent. No way. I've had enough humiliation. I'll keep my head down. Like a bunny! A lock I locked my fingers and zipped my mouth. The bell rang. Quiet as a mouse. Lilia Pavlovna passed by without looking my way oh she died that sucks polina left after her oh they're both good my classmates went silent at the same time as if someone muted the sound on a tv they followed me with their eyes the whole time i was passing between the rows judgmental looks i felt like i was in the scopes of so many sniper rifles i squeezed through the brigade made of desks looking for polina but i stumbled into my new buddies instead Romka swaggered up to me. Decided to rat us out to the cops. I didn't say anything. But sure as fuck thought about it, eh? Well, yeah, you guys fucking suck. <laughs> Romka towered over me, breathing out a faint smell of tobacco. Ooh, so cool. You're very wrong if you think that without uh, Sioma... You'll have a better time here. We'll make this place hell for you. Got it? See you, four eyes. My head tilted forward from his slap. What a loser, eh? I wasn't surprised. Really? I wasn't surprised to find a note to the back of my uh, back dur during the break. It said, kick me. My nightmare clearly wasn't about to end. Really? <laughs> Kick me? Really? Really? It's been seven days since the lieutenant visited our class. At first glance, everything was still the same. The forest still held out its gnarly claws toward the village, and the wind whipped up at white fangs weaved from powdery snow every night. When my parents argued in the other room, I would turn up the TV's volume to silence their muffled voices and sit close to Olya. Vova and Semyon's photos were still two black spots on the notice board, and round-faced Senya hasn't returned home, too. But something did change. I could see how different the looks of my classmates were. They met me with, they met me with a new portion of pokes and insults. Contempt, mockery, and loneliness became my faithful companions. But most importantly, a shadow slid across my desk, leaving behind a mysterious note. I glanced into the space between rows, but the messenger was already nowhere to be found. Who sent me this note? What could they? What could this carefully ripped out and neatly folded piece of paper be hiding from me? More threats or humi and humiliation, or, or girls. I took the pa a piece of paper and carefully inhaled the wafting aroma. Blackberry. Inside was a message in beautiful handwriting. I'm waiting at a dead end near the dressing room. Come alone. Oh my god! Bruh! Wait, I'll be waiting at a cul-de-sac. That's the... That's not doing. Drunk on the sudden call, I immediately started walking, looking over my shoulder from time to time, making sure nobody is following me. Yo, this might be a trap, though. Even though I suspected it could be another trap. Oh, well. When set by Romka and Biasha at first, that buzzing thought soon left my mind. The two of them didn't have enough combined brain power to fake Polina's note so carefully. Yeah, but she could be working with them. They could have forced her to write it. I didn't even notice how I almost broke into a run and jumped around the corner. As soon as I did that, I rammed into somebody inside the dark nook. Oi! Ow! Pfft. Like a magic bird, a green notebook gl uh, glided to my feet. Polina puffed her cheeks in exaggerated Petrov. anger. 
Petrov, have you lost your sight completely? I fixed my glasses. My nearsightedness wasn't that embarrassing anymore. I bent down and picked up the notebook. Sorry, I was in a rush. Were you waiting for me? Did something happen? <laughs> Polina's attitude changed from fake anger to softness. She stood there silent, probably picking out the right words. She had a worried look, worried and sad look in her eyes, and she hoped that I'd continued the conversation and stop us from drowning in this awkward silence. But I didn't say a word. I was just staring at her trembling lips. Finally, Polina heaved a deep sigh and started talking meekly. Anton, tell me. Anton, tell me, are you mad at me? I couldn't reply before she continued. Oh, no, of course, of course you are. What's with the stupid question? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for anything to happen, honest. When Piatifanov, when that abuser kicked the doggy, it felt like I wasn't myself, you know? She sniffed, and even <laughs> though it was already quite dark outside, I could see her ocean-colored eyes sparkle. I know that it's wrong. It's wrong laughing at animal abuse. I don't even want to think of what your opinion of me must be. But I just can't help it, Anton. I love watching dogs get the shit kicked out of them. I just love it. It's the most fun. I just realized I shouldn't be saying this because it can be clipped and used out of context. Uh, as soon as I remember Grandpa and the horrors he had to endure on the night when he got attacked by a pack of stray dogs, my mind becomes foggy. <laughs> <laughs> Polina's notebook in my hand was still waiting for me to return it to its rightful owner, but I just couldn't find the right moment to do that. You probably think I'm crazy, right? She looked at me with hopeful eyes while I was absentmindedly going over all the crazy stuff that my subconscious was producing lately. I clearly wasn't qualified to judge someone's sanity. Sometimes I just can't control myself. But I'd never harm anyone, you hear? Not like that sadist Romka. Please stay away from him, Anton. Something clicked in my head. I stared at Polina with suspicion. You called him differently a week ago, when we were fighting. Romchka. Say, are you two dating? Oh. Oh. Ooh, my guy. <laughs> Polina jolted as if struck by lightning. No way, that asshole stuck to me like a leech. People like him are not even deterred by direct insults. Hi, Zazo, goddammit. Uh, her voice became calmer when she noticed the bruises and cuts on my face. Again, I'm very sorry for that that happened. I, well, I really thought I would be able to help you. It was my mistake to think that the bastards like them can have any sort of moral code. Here, I have a present for you. What? She unbuttoned the top of her jacket and instantly got embarrassed after noticing my stunned look. <laughs> she then took an amulet on a thick leather thread with a big animal claw off her neck and held it out to me. Grandpa gifted me this charm. He's, he said that it helps against crazy and possessed. He got him from a certain shaman. You don't have to believe me, but the tragedy that befell him happened on the only day when he forgot to wear it. I snuck another glance at the intensely scratched claw of an unknown beast. And who did it belong to? The claw, I mean. I don't know. A bear or a tiger, maybe? 
Кого только не встретишь в нашем лесу. You can find all sorts of animals in our forest. В любом случае, пожалуйста. Anyway, please accept it along with my insincere apology. No, refuse. No, refuse. Absolutely not. You're, you're fucking... I'll let you keep it. This is your family relic, after all. And I'll feel calmer knowing that you're under protection. Exactly. You're always thinking about others. You know, I thought chivalry was exclusive to books. Until I met you all. I felt a bit embarrassed, so I started shuffling my feet. <laughs> That's a big overstatement. I'm serious! And what about my apology? Will you accept it? And my flashing? And how I'm flashing? Like, <laughs> what the hell was that? I'm having all sorts of graphical glitch glitches. I, I just, like, restarted my computer. There's no reason that the, like, I updated my drivers, like, a little while ago, but, like, like, yesterday, I think? But anyway. <laughs> Polina flashed me a charming smile, looking me straight in the eye. I turned even redder. I wasn't even mad at you from the beginning. Why would I? Polina studied me with her eyes and clicked her tongue. Do you know what you look like, Antosha? Hmm. Like blues improv. What? I blinked in bewilderment. What? What do you mean? <laughs> I always associate people I know with something. I do that too. But why music? Why not do it like cooler stuff like uh, like Pokemon? Like what kind of Pokemon am I? Can you tell me that? You're like a, you're like a, um, you're like a, hmm, you're definitely a, a grass starter, but I don't know which. You're probably like a, hmm, I want to say like a Bulbasaur to me. Anton is more like a, um, hmm, hmm, That's actually a tough one. I'm going to get back to that. It can't be anything other than music. Some people are like guitar solos. Some are drums. People like our Lilia Pavlovna, our war mar marches. A litten, yeah, yeah. And you're so thoughtful, so mysterious, sometimes even a bit sad. You're definitely blues. And what about the improv part? It's when the listener has no idea where the melody will go, what tempo it will adopt. Of course, some of the things Polina said uh, went completely over my head, but they'll make sense to the person playing me in a video game. But I couldn't stop looking at her smile like the like a light like light like a breeze in May, and her eyes deep and blue. One needs to have experience and taste to recognize the music in you. You're not some pop music. I don't even know what blues is. <gasps> Polina gasped and frowned, which made her look even more beautiful. Then she kicked my ass. <laughs> don't say something like that to my face. I'll make you get. I'll make sure to give you a cassette. You piece of shit. Grandpa used to bring me so much music from the city jazz swing and classical, too. He was the one to notice my musical mindset. And you're a piece of shit. When I was still very little, I tried recording the sounds of nature on paper, the songs of the rain and the forest. I wish I had ears like yours. And I'd love to have your eyes. I'd love to have your eyes. I tensed up, worried that she would take my fucking eyes from my sockets. Uh, uh, that she was making fun of me, but Polina shook her head. No, no, I'm serious. You have the eyes of an artist, of an artiste. You're so good at picturing things, I can't do that. Sup, bitch? Katya walked past us with her trademark frosty glare. We dove into the shadows trying to escape it. You understand why we're hiding here, right? Because of people like her. And what kind of melody is Katya? <laughs> Polina flashed me a sly smile. The squeaking sound of unoiled door hinges. 
you know, you know this nasty uh, desk discon what desk i've never i giggled covering my mouth i've never seen that word before probably heard it des descant de this an independent treble melody usually sung or played above a basic melody oh Kachi didn't hear our whispers, but she suddenly glanced over her shoulder, clearly annoyed. A moment later, she sighed and went her way. Desukant? I remembered about the notebook I was still clutching in my hand. I turned, uh, I turned it in my hands. Instead of a subject name, the, fr the front side had the name of the owner um, and two words, friends only. Curiosity killed the cat, you know. I'm sorry, is this a questionnaire? Have you ever filled one? I lied that I had. In reality, girl classmates from my previous school had never asked me to fill out their questionnaires. It was quite upsetting. <laughs> I mean, it was a girl hobby. You just answer a set of standard questions about your favorite actors and colors, but uh, entrusting someone with such a notebook was the sign of friendship. And maybe of something even more, something I only had a vague idea about. You can fill in mine if you want. My heartbeat quickened. I do. Thank you. <laughs> Polina giggled. Actually, there are so many secrets there. You'd be better off not knowing what we girls think. She reached for the notebook, playing with me. I tossed my finding in uh, my, I tossed my finding into my free hand. Polina tried to intercept my move. Her hair briefly touched my face, tickling my nose with its silky locks. I sensed an aroma that immediately filled the world, the whole world, fragrant, alluring, lovely. Too bad she's fucking dead. She's gonna die, I'm calling it now. If only I could picture it, steal it for myself. I felt dizzy, but I gathered myself and spoke in a voice reminiscent of Lieutenant Tikhanov. Your questionnaire is an important piece of evidence, so I'm afraid I have to confiscate it for further examination. Lena covered her mouth that rounded in fake horror. <laughs> and what are the implications of concealing evidence? We'll decide that in the course of the investigation. I surrender, Mr. Belizeman. Just promise you won't read anything. You're lucky, I can't fucking read. <laughs> It's full of sensitive information. I'm afraid I'll have to investigate whether someone is in love with Mr. Petrov. <laughs> Polina burst out laughing and pressed herself against my chest, showering me with the aroma of her hair and her milky skin looked almost transparent with tiny threads of veins running under it. Uh, her whisper was hot like a piece of butter sizzling on a pan. Then swear that you will keep the, this information private. I swear on my police badge. And now we need to hurry, Antosha. <laughs> Spicy man, yeah. It's a little much. It's a little much. It's a little, it's a little, a little much. A little extra. I believe we call that flowery prose. L little... Like, anyway. I took out the notebook during class. Questionnaire. <laughs> I skimmed through it, reading into other people's preferences. I was quite surprised to discover uh, Romka's jerky handwriting inside. Don't trust, don't fret, don't ask. DuckTales! What, what about duck, DuckTales? Roma? 6B? His letters bulged out of the cells as if uh, embarrassed by their shapelessness. Here's some Romka found time to, for something so silly. I chuckled uh, into my fists after I found out what Romka's favorite cartoon is not even Darkwing Duck, but DuckTales. Yes! Yes, Santosha. Yes! Yes! What a bitch. <laughs> Somewhere in the distance, a teacher was reciting pieces of Andreev's snapper. I paid them no mind. 
Polina's a, uh, page was uh, decorated with flower drawings and clippings from the Cool Girl magazine. Oh, hell yeah. 11, Grandpa. Her favorite musician is Schubert. Uh, her best friend is her grandpa. Aww. Her hobby is not violin like I expected, but a much more mysterious listening. Can such a mundane process really be someone's hobby? I looked at Polina over the heads of the other students. She was focused on taking notes. I flipped the pages until I found a blank one, armed myself with a pen. An an Anton Petrov, class 6B. I took a long time to decide my favorite musician until a trendy pop band, Carman, came. <laughs> Darman? No, Carman! Uh, came to mind with the cool dancers in the music videos. Uh, I gotta know more about Carman. Carman, a Soviet and Russia, a Russian techno pop band, most familiar uh, from the late 80s to early 90s. Founded by Bogdan uh, Titomir and Sergei Lemo Lemoch. Uh, it is mostly remembered for unique dancing performances and for writing a music theme for the Captain Pronin uh, cartoon. Interesting. <clears throat> Car Man, the favorite holiday. This one's easy, New Year's. My hobby is drawing. My dream, going to Disneyland, I guess. I guess. My hero. My hand moved on its own, started writing dat. I stopped on those two letters. What if those uh, who read this after me will find my man answer laughable and stupid? After thinking a bit, I decided not uh, that not everything should be disclosed on paper. <laughs> That's how I turned da into spider man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the spelling was wrong, but who cares? Spider man. Your biggest fear, huh? I immediately wrote, losing a person who's dear to me. Your phone number. No secret here. 30395. Your favorite cartoon. Transformers. There we fucking go. My boy. Your best friend. I hesitated, gnawing on the pen's cap. Your best friend. I read, uh, I read the question out loud. It was easy, but at the same time, very important. My answer consisted of three letters, and I filled them into the cells with care. You. You, I repeated when running out of the school. Squee! Refreshing frosty air made my cheeks turn beet red. It was bright outside, and the sun looked uh, like a whole egg yolk. The road looked as if it was silvered. The snow sparkled under the, uh, the sunlight. I smiled, squinting from the blinding whiteness. There was also something magical in my chest that beckoned me, because friendship can grow into something bigger. Hey, what's up with that stupid grin? My numb lips immediately shrank. Biasha was shuffling his feet in the middle of the yard, his boots restless on the ice. It's not a grin. I tried to go around him to no avail. Lady Fortune waved me goodbye, disappearing in the early twilight. In a hurry, eh? A little bit. Dad is waiting for me. I'll shoot him a pager message. Oh, don't tell me people need to know what a fucking pager is. Ah! Oh, oh, no! Oh, I'm old. Fuck. All right, show of hands. Who in chat knows what a pager is? Do you all know what a pager is? If you don't know what a pager is, please tell me. I need to know. You all know what what a pager is, right? Yeah, we're all old here. Hi, Remy. Bro had one. <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, as long as everyone in here kn uh, knows what a fucking pager is. Old, we're all old, fuck. At a certain point, you... <laughs> You either become old or or die. <laughs> uh, my eye flinched unwittingly. My skin dampened. Let's go, eh? We have a small business to discuss. I felt chills run over my body. I didn't like the sounds of that small business. Ah. 
on second thought, maybe the coffee was too much. Um, those words accompanied by spitting normally hid various dark deeds underneath them. Strangers that used to, used to call our apart, old apartment used to say, get your old man, we have small business to discuss. Biasha turned around. He looked like an astronaut in his tight hood. If I were to imagine him as a sound, he'd be a deafening whistle, a signal given uh, by someone who stands watch. To my demise, uh, there was nobody at the backyard. Apart from the grim-faced Romka, he stood there, his feet wide apart, with his right hand hidden behind his back. Romka's dry lips were tightly pursed. He kept shooting glances at me as, uh, as he looked around. From the bottom of my heart, I hoped that Romka hadn't seen me with Polina. There he is, eh? I can see that. Well, hello there, Antosha. What do you want? He slowly took out a thin, carnivorously shiny blade from his back. A knife, the steel butterfly of death that flies toward the victim's heartbeat. I stepped back instinctively and rammed my back into Byasha. Romka's minion pushed me back. We wanted to know. Do you have any hard feelings for me or Byasha? Romka started picking on his yellow nail looking at me with an evil smirk on his face. Well, there in the forest, we kind of roughed you up. It's just our poor upbringing, you know. <laughs> yeah, not as cultured as you city folk. So we get feisty sometimes. I nodded, I nodded my eyes glued to the knife. Say, Antosha. Did I, by any chance, go too hard on you last time? Not really. Wonderful. I almost got worried that I damaged your brain and you forgot about the lesson I taught you. I remember. The blade glowed under the setting sun and Romka's eyes had the same evil glow. He stepped toward me. His knife traveled inches from my coat. One movement and the steel uh, could cut the cloth and if he pushes deeper, a little bird told us that you were snooping about Polina again. I was so scared that it took me a while to remember who Polina was. My brain was malfunctioning. My knees were shaking. I pissed my little baby face, my little baby, <laughs> little baby pants. Suddenly, our class rep slowly walked up to from Romka from behind. Bitch, <laughs> I see you boys are getting along quite well. I owe you one, Katya. Oh, no need to thank me, Romcha. Uh, I'm always fighting for true love. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'll kill you, I swear. I can't hear you. Were you near Polina or not? Da, da, da. Well, we, we didn't hang out or anything. Only thing hanging out here will be your guts when I cut open your scum. Okay, do it, bitch. Do it. Fucking do it. I don't fucking care. Fuck you. <laughs> the fucking headbutt is stupid ass. The fucking uh, do it. Fucking do it. Kill me. You stupid idiot. You fucking moron. <laughs> fucking kill me. <laughs> the, the blade slid across my sleeve uh, with its dull side and reached my collar. Uh, the wind made my face cold, but a bead of sweat uh, still trickled from my temple. I guess I need to explain it to you in a way you'll understand. The, the split up handle and the blade spun in a dangerous dance, just like helicopter blades that sweep away everything in their way. Please, please have him cut himself. <laughs> so he's like a fucking idiot. Ha! Ha! I tried to dodge, but the sharp edge of the blade grazed my shoulder. Ah! <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> We're taking off. We. I watched in shock as the blade sunk into my skin, tearing it, uh, filling with the gash with blood. <laughs> the rush brought by adrenaline faded away, and the piercing pain escaped my mouth in the form of a pitiful scream. <laughs> Romka pulled the knife out with a rough motion, and I ran away without looking back, trying to cover the bleeding wound. Don't you dare forget again. Antosha. 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 
the aftertaste of horrible water I drank uh, down with my meds lingered in my mouth. A cut that was covered with iodine nagged uh, under the wraps with fluffy ends. I didn't tell my parents the truth about how I got it, saying that I just stumbled onto a sharp branch in the forest. I waited for a chance to get attention from my parents who were always so busy. Bruh, how bad of parents do you need to be? Like, the, the dad, at the very least, should fucking... So, okay, so if one of the kids dies, if, if like, that fucking kid who stabbed him uh, disappears, it's it's the dad. It's the dad. It ha it has to be the dad. There's no other way. No, no, dude. <laughs> no, dude. My thoughts were focused on Polina. I wandered around the house feeling intoxicated and nodded to everything my sister said without trying to discern her words. <laughs> Oya was talking nonstop, at times lifting her arms and laughing, only uh, to then suddenly go quiet and give me mom's signature gnarly look. I was yanked out of the prison of my own mind where seething thoughts pecked at my brain like harpies stopped me from coming back to reality. I stared back. Olya looked like a mini version of our mom right now. <laughs> well, to be precise, she looked like the person mom turned into when we moved here with her in in intimidating posture and her eyebrows directed toward the ceiling. You weren't listening to me, were you? She tried spitting out those words at me, copying facial ex expressions of the person she spent almost all of her free time with. For a moment, I felt like the light Olya exuded all those years waned and wavered in the wind of prolonged changes. Very soon, my beautiful princess will turn to the dragon that was once guarding her prison tower. That thought was much scarier to me than any other horror sneaking up to me from the future. Olya, Sorry, Olya. I didn't want to make you mad. I just got lost in thought. I looked around the room, my gaze jumping from one object to another like a hungry beast, trying to find anything that could I could that could distract Olya. Let's play the console. I love console. Olya pouted, but there was a spark of interest in her small emerald eyes. The Snow Queen's ice shard inside them started thawing. And what about the second controller? It's not working. Sure it is. Yeah, it's totally worry working. It's fine. <laughs> and Dad has no time to fix it. Mm. We can play with the light gun. What do you want to play? Cowboys? Ducks? You're better than me at both. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. You must have been practicing the whole time I was away from home. <laughs> Olya burst out laughing. Her heart was once warm again. <laughs> How did you know? But I'm a good shooter now. You've already lost. You picked the wrong fight here. Come on, turn it on. Little Olya jumped toward the TV set, and after flicking the power switch... Uh, don't let us down. What? Am I doing it? Oh no, I'm doing it, aren't I? And after flicking on the power switch, I uh, started uh, blindly feeling around the backside for of the photon, trying to plug in the uh, cable with the antenna input. Hell yeah! A bit of TV show started flashing on the CRT, so who the fuck? Uh, and I armed myself with the remote to look for it. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> for the, uh, the the channel with the sought out Dendi signal. Did anything interesting happen at home? It was a mundane question for me. I didn't pay and have any actual meaning behind it. But Oya's expression suddenly changed. She lost all of the childish nonchalantness she worked so hard to acquire before. What happened, Olya? My sister managed to put the cable in its place and started brushing off her dust covered hand. Uh, she was clearly looking for courage to continue the conversation. Mama. Mom, she... Olya went silent, and for a moment I saw tears welling up in her eyes. She had this scary thing happen to her again. My sister looked at me with wet eyes. Mm. She had a fit, huh? This had happened before, but it was a rare occasion. Now that we'd moved to this godforsaken place, Mom's fits rose in frequency. She turned into a fish. Dad brought home a big fish. 
It was wrapped in a newspaper and had a foul smell. Mom got angry again, and then she took a knife. Olya squirmed, looked fearfully out the window. They started screaming at each other. I froze immediately, my, uh, imagining my sister, so small and unnoticeable, standing in the kitchen doorway. She wasn't even trying to hide. Her parents just paid her no mind at all. And then mom struck it. Like this. Olya slightly moved her fist downward, imitating a strike. She hit the fish. It was still alive, Toshia. It must have been in pain, and mom... Mom... It was easy to imagine what happened next. The writhing fish with the blade between its fins squirted some foul-smelling musk into mom's face. Whenever got, death got close to my mom, be it when a person was hit by a bus in front of us and their blood was smeared all over the windshield, or when grandma chopped off a chicken's head, mom would always get into a weird, dreadful fit. Oh, geez. Her eyes would roll over, she would fall. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, flashing. Wow. Um, she would uh, fall on her face and start uh, writhing just like an attack. All right, I'm going to move that. And what about dad? Did I help her? Lily shuddered, uh, remembering the pain hurt. Yes, but at, the, at first, okay. He started laughing, Tosha. He let out an evil laugh when he saw that mom was in trouble. But then he cried. Olya's story made me raise an eyebrow. It seemed like the forest's oozing badness had not only completely consumed our mom, but also infected our strong and courageous dad. I quickly stepped toward Olya and locked her in a tight embrace. She dug her face into my chest and I could feel my shirt becoming wet. Why are they bullying each other, Tosha? Are they crazy? I stuttered, unable to justify the actions of our parents. I had run out of words, and all I could do was hug Olya even tighter. <laughs> Olya screamed and hid behind me. <laughs> Turn it off quick! <laughs> no matter how many times uh, she saw this intro, she would always react the same, just like when she saw that owl. <sighs> I mean, I also got goosebumps every time that ghastly face appeared on the screen, so I immediately complied with my sister's request. What is, what the fuck was that? Vid, a TV company logo depicting a ceramic head of the Chinese philosopher uh, Guo Jiang with a three-legged toad on top of his head. It instilled horror in a whole generation of 90s kids in Russia. <laughs> play. Of course we play. Is there anything else? We have any other option? Time to play. Finally, the game selection screen showed up in the cartridge with the cartridge that was bundled in the console. Goose Hunt. Too bad most of the names here were just different levels of the same game. I picked up the gray rectangular controller and started uh, looking around the pixels to find the familiar English word for duck. Background music from the menu soothed Olya's mind, and she asked in a calm voice, How are things at school? I became friends with a girl. Is she pretty? I got embarrassed. Well, I don't know. Ah, oh, you're red. She must be very pretty. <laughs> Stop it, Olya. You got a crush on her. Olya, keep acting like this, and I won't play with you. Haha, <laughs> I was just joking. Will you introduce us? Um, maybe. And what's her name? Paulina. You turned red again. <laughs> Where will you live when you get married? <laughs> Are we playing or not? I plugged the light gun into the second controller port. Listen to my sister's laughs. I go first. It's not a duck, man. Oh, wait. Okay, all right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, wait, how do I? Oh, 
тебе подала. I was going easy on you here. Get fucking wrecked. <laughs> Boo, it's your fault I missed. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <sighs> Should I let her win this round? Yes? Okay. <laughs> Oh no, I still won! Yeah, Fuck! <laughs> oh no, I threw the thr- Aww, damn it. Oh man, I'm sorry. This doesn't count, you were closer to the screen. I'm not playing with you anymore. This is so accurate. Jesus Christ. Anyone who hasn't, uh, who doesn't have siblings, um, very, very, very accurate. Very close to what actually happens. There was a fucking achievement. Ah. Wow. Oh, I want to do that again. Oh. Damn it. Ah, eh, whatever. Antoine. Antoine. My mom only managed to get uh, through to me on her third attempt. Antoine, Antoine there's a call for you. It's a girl. I sobered up, fell down the stairs in anticipation. Uh, I sobered up in an instant and rushed to the hallway. Watch your step. I grabbed the phone, pressed it to my chest, looking at my mom. She shrugged and went to the other room, gathering the toys thrown around by Olia as she went. Hello? Hello? Your mom has such a young voice. Oh, yeah. I mean, she is young. Are you busy right now? No, of course not. If only she knew how costly this conversation could be for me. Oh, uh, what risks I took just answering the call. There was a pen and a shabby notepad lying by the no nightstand. I picked them up and started moving the tip of my uh, a pen across the paper, producing chaotic doodles that always ended up turning into hearts. <laughs> I've read your answers. Do you really like Carman? I like Russian rock more, to be honest. But I was too embarrassed to put it there for some reason. And do you want me to be honest with you too, Antosha? Of course. My pen drew the outline of a girl's face, her eyes, her long eyelashes. Polina spoke in a hushed voice, probably to keep her grandpa, grandpa from here. I'm bored to death here. At home? In the village. There's nothing going on here, and if there is, it's always something nasty. And it's not even about the missing kids. There's almost no music here. Do you have your cassettes? I'm not talking about audio records. I mean, this place is voice. It's not melodic at all. It's rustling like a record player needle. It just squeaks and moans from time to time. It feels uncomfortable, suffocating. I don't know how else to explain this. My pen's tip draft at a house surrounded by tall trees. I think I know what you mean. My little sister says that she feels like a prisoner here. Me too. But I love my grandpa. I don't want to abandon him. Sometimes I just want to escape so badly somewhere far away. Into the forest, I thought half-heartedly, to run under the falling snowflakes that make your fur white and the branches that hide you from prying eyes. When I draw, I feel like I'm transported to another place. It's the same for me and the violin. <clears throat> I ran up uh, the bow straight to the sky. I realized I was drawing a butterfly knife. I crossed it over. Thinking of Romka ruined my mood. Before I could reply, Olya descended the stairs. She was holding some 
book and a pink cover. Encyclopedia of a young lady. Will you take long? I covered the handset with my hand. I'm in the middle of a conversation. What happened? Read me a bedtime story, please. Mom fell asleep. Go to your room. I'll be there in a minute. Just be quick, okay? Fine. <laughs> my last reply sounded excessively annoyed. I sighed, watching my sister running up the stairs. Sorry, I need to run. Me too. Thank you for lending an ear. My ear vibrated with the buzzing sounds. I dragged my feet to the second floor, thinking of the girl I shouldn't talk to if I don't want to die from a knife wound. I wish I could tell Dad, ask for his manly advice. Yeah, kick his ass! <laughs> but he doesn't show up home until late at night because of his new job. Bullshit! He's murdering kids! Turn, turn off. There. My parents don't have time for me, to put it lightly. Well, where's your book? I stuttered. The kids' room was empty. Oh, yeah. She probably snuck into my room. I started walking to the corridor. Corridor. The room was infested with shadows. The blinds were wavering like there was someone hiding behind them. I smiled, sneaking toward the window and threw open the curtain. Gotcha. There was nobody behind the cloth. The window and the TV screen uh, showing winter scenery. The lamppost, the field, and a couple of walking figures in the middle of it. Oh, Elisa, uh, Elisa and Olya. I gasped and pressed my uh, fist to my mouth, sinking my teeth into it. Elisa was leading Olya into the thicket. Uh, I needed less than a minute to hurriedly, hurriedly dress and rush out of the house. Marit was beating like a firing machine gun. The wind carried the cold, uh, resinous smell of coniferous trees in the forest. Freezing air crackled somewhere in the field. Two shadows loomed in front of the gate. I could only recognize them as my sister and the fox girl because of their height. I ran toward the fence, listening to the howling wind and squeaking snow. One of the fingers, uh, one of the figures moved and slowly glided toward the thicket like an ice skater. I slowed down and touched my glasses, trying in vain to adjust my vision to the uh, surrounding darkness. Worry landed on my shoulders like a weightless snowflake. A snake woke up in my belly and started writhing. I felt nauseous. I thought about my home, the flimsy fortress I'd left behind. I finally caught up to my sister dressed in a coat. That's not your that's not your sister. Dressed only in a coat. Olya. Have you seen the foxy? Olya, why did you go outside? If mom finds out my sister froze in place, facing the taiga. She was in a hand's reach, and I put my numb wrist on her shoulder for some reason, probably to make sure it wasn't just a dream. <laughs> A pointy beak was directed at me, strewn with feathers like, that formed an owl face. Something wearing a bird mask was staring at me. Oh. Hoot hoot, she won't. The voice sounded exactly like Olya's, but there was somebody else hiding behind the feathers and carton. I sprinted away as if I got whipped. The masked creature only pretended to be Olya just to lure me out. I was running like crazy, drowning in snow. The house in front of me was rapidly growing. The yellow light in the windows granted me hope. My mom and sister are there, my salvation. I couldn't hear anything from behind me as if nobody was chasing me. Maybe it's because the owls can fly? I was already climbing the porch when I noticed another figure. Hello? From the soot black shadow of my house, a scruffy wolf cub scrawled out and stood in my way. Its movements were jerky, chaotic, as if it was performing some terrifying dance or convulsing during a stroke. And even though I couldn't clearly see the wolf face was a mask, something in this werewolf's convulsions made me freeze in place. The boy in a wolf's costume rubbed his side against the porch and fell to his knees. He bent his back so hard that, it ex that I expected his spine to crack. The beast's eyes shone, but he didn't attack. He kept crawling around, running on all fours. I shifted my feet, my mouth agape, trying to keep him in my line of sight. Something was trickling from the slit in the mask. Vis viscous drops fell to the wood planks. Saliva. Some unknown force pushed me back, whispering me to save myself. The fence was flashed by the, at the edge of my vision. I was running in another direction, this time toward the toothy edge of the forest that smelled of pine. My heartbeat measured time. I started to rhyme. It was... <laughs> I needed some time. Uh, 
I started to whine and commit a crime. <laughs> the scent of pine. I did a line. <laughs> anyway, grr, grr. My, <laughs> my right leg got stuck in the snow-laden cavity. I yanked it out, cursing under my breath, and fell to the ground. Plastered snow prevented me from standing up, from propping myself against anything. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> but my uh, unbound thirst for life uh, helped me get out of that trap. Darkness was creeping closer, like the toxic fumes of burial pyres. I ran again, gasping for air that stung my throat. My hair swayed in the wind. I lost my hat when I fell down, and my ears were now hot from the freezing cold while most of my body was still sweaty. The field finally ended. After realizing that running into the forest wasn't the smartest decision I could make, I dove into the line of trees. I ran without stopping, my face covered uh, with one of my palms. I didn't want to lose an eye to some random branch. Well, you got glasses, so you're basic. Branches whipped my clothes, pricked my skin like butchers that were uh, herding a pig to the grinder. A knot of roots sprouting from the ground grabbed my foot. I rammed into the scratchy trunk, slid down to its base, and looked around in a panic. Whew, you're so fast. My first desire was to dash toward her and hug her. I resisted it and squeezed myself tighter into the pine. You, what are you doing here? This and that. She was holding the hat I lost. Working part time and lost and found? Put it on, or your ears will freeze and maybe even fall off soon. She giggled. I squinted into in suspicion and shifted my gaze back and forth between her and the hat, scared that Elisa might be holding a severed head or something even more sinister. But in my in the end, my hat turned out to just be my hat. Refuse. Nothing? Okay. I took it and pulled it over my forehead, feeling warmer. I didn't reply. There were some children in the yard. And? Did they bite you or something? No. Then why did you run away? The answer was obvious, but after rolling the thought on my tongue, I mumbled. I don't know. Ah, why did I promise to never call you a dunce again? Oh well, I keep my promises. She walked up to me and grabbed me by the elbow. I sensed the familiar aroma of mint, oranges, and burnt sparklers. <laughs> I wanted to lean into, into Alice to savor the, the minute details of her smell. How many times do I need to tell you? You're safe as long as you're with me. I'm your friend. And they are too. I quickly turned around toward the place the fox girl was pointing to. Kids in masks appeared uh, in, at a clearing. At least they looked like kids since they were all pretty short. A wolf boy, an owl girl, and a bear boy. What is this, Five Nights at fucking Freddy's? Oh my god, it is. They all huffed and gasped for air, clearly tired from running around. I thought you fell through the snow. Started digging around, but couldn't find you. And I didn't. Didn't care enough. Are these, like, supposed to be the missing kids? These are the missing kids. They're, they're totally the missing kids. You see, if you're dumb, you run around and dig. And if you're smart, you wait until the others get tired of running around and digging. Then you start talking. You're a rat. Degenerate rat. Huh? Huh? Don't mind him. He's a weirdo. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's a weirdo. I love that. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's a weirdo. Uh, I stood there. Uh, stupefied, my mouth agape and my hands dangling helplessly. I had no idea how to react to the words of these late night guests, but I managed to squeeze out something resembling a smile. I just stared. Uh, you just scared me, that's all. They started to look at each other and somebody even snorted as if I had said something funny. Yeah, yeah. The, f the fox is right. He's the one. No, this is our... Yeah, have we finally found him? Our bunny. Yes, he looks the part. The wolf boy started wagging a part of his costume like it was his tail in excitement. First. Of course you were the first. 
Wolfie you. Hero is the first to sense the bunny in you. He told us about you. Hello? And you've already met our Hootie before? She isn't that scary, is she? I guess. And the smiling big guy is Teddy. Be mindful with him or he'll chew off your head. What? I see you've already dropped your sense of humor somewhere on the way here. I was still unsure of, the, of these uh, peculiar little animals had the best intentions in mind, so I hid my hands behind my back, trying to look away from the gaping holes of their carnival masks. <laughs> Lisa put her hands to her sides in a theatrical manner and somehow managed to wink with her fox face. <laughs> the next time we come, we'll ring bells for you. That way you'll be less scared of our visit. <laughs> Do we even have any bells? <laughs> I won't be ringing. My paw hurts. My smile was no longer fake. What happened to his hand? Why is his hand completely f like t Teddy Tazbear? What? Hmm. Ah, you showed us your teeth. That's a good sign. I didn't expect you to f you to find us fun. I thought it was an emotion reserved strictly to Disneyland. How did you know that? I read about it somewhere. You read about me. Aren't you funny? No, about Disneyland, darling. You can read human? You think I've been going to school every day for nothing? <laughs> and then she sang in the co in a coquettish voice. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> where to hit kids every week, where to prey on all the meek at your local school, of course, and in your classroom. <laughs> I let out a cautious laugh. My new acquaintances didn't seem scary anymore. On the contrary, they looked friendly and welcoming. Nah, nah, dude. Nah, dude. <laughs> oh, no, dude. There was something about them that attracted me. Just like this clearing, this moon, and the snowflakes that fell backwards uh, from the ground to the sky as if someone was rewinding a tape. The masked kids got close and I felt their touch. They gave me friendly taps, felt my clothes as if checking whether I was real. There was no animalistic malice in their touch, only pure childish curiosity. For some reason, I thought to myself, I can trust them. Snowflakes just kept on floating upwards. Nobody will hurt you anymore. For grand. Yeah, if somebody even tries to. The fox gave me a slight tug and burst out laughing. Well then, Tosha. Will you run away screaming or come with us? Where to? Ah, to the amusement park. At that moment, Tiger's deceptive silence was broken by the sound of a distant flute, mesmerizing and alluring. It brought about the ring of crystal glass and the whispers of a fresh winter spring. If I had any, had any doubts before, the flute song shattered the last of them. I started following my new friends before I could even make my decision. My legs carried me of their own will, and the, and the tunnels made of pines stepped apart. Bushes bowed in front of our pr procession. Everything looked dreamlike. Probably because it was a dream. Because uh, even the clearing we ended up on, I only saw in my dream. The flute soared up to the treetops like some fantastical bird. The snowflakes floated up in a spiral. The moon painted tree branches with silver. Elisa gasped in amazement. I was also in awe. I tilted my head backwards as far as I could. Hoot, what a sight. It's so beautiful. Wolf, Wolfie howled in agreement. This is nothing. I could show you so much more. If you want. I did want. <laughs> I did want. Uh, I wanted to see what the fox girl saw with her eyes hidden in the semi-dark of her cape. Now, I didn't feel weird about these masked kids. I felt weird for being the only one without a mask. I felt like I was naked in the January winds. Why do you wear these masks? I was trembling, but I wasn't scared. My trembling wasn't caused by the cold. It originated from the peculiar anxiousness, the anticipation of something amazing. And why do you ask? I touched my cold cheek. I'm not wearing one. <laughs> ah. 
I love human tails. Human nails? Human fails. I've already told you. All the villagers wear masks. It's just you won't find anything human underneath them. Even me? <laughs> You're so clumsy, Anton. We've already found your glasses once already. And your hat! <laughs> and your real face. I looked at the mask the fox was holding out to me. The bunny mask that looked like a silver ingot under the moonlight. I was curious to see the world through its slits. Hmm. Still, yep, no option. Take. Suddenly fighting its way through the flute's melody, I thought a thought came to me. The glasses they found were on Semyon's possession. My new acquaintances must have known what happened to him. Or even worse. And where did Semyon disappear to? What happened to him? And the other children. The bear and the owl looked at each other. The wolf boy curled into a ball and the fox lowered the pointy nose of her mask. The one who was kept in a cage. The one who cuts into little pieces roar. The one who wears a skin face took them. If I knew how to cross myself, I'd do it. So you're saying it was a human? Were you even listening to us? How can you call someone like him human? There's just one word for him, an adult. It's so easy to get lost in the adult world. Killers, cruel animal trainers, and cold parents. Ah, uh, if you don't want to get sad, better not think about them. I don't know about you, but I definitely won't be sad. Somehow I'm also not sad today. <laughs> what about you, Anton, huh? I was lost in thought, staring at the pines, trying to pinpoint the location of the flute. I was sure that the person who played it was standing straight uh, behind the piney stockade. Someone tall, going over the uh, holes in the flute with their long fingers. What now? Are we going to sit and be sad or have some fun? Lisa wanted to show me something. Let's start with the sweet stuff. The Vox girl took out a hand, handful of candy and uh, handed them out to each of the kids. Covers shuffled, the smell of pineapple, cocoa, and melon wafted in the air. The last treat, a chocolate-covered waffle candy. Elisa put it right in my mouth. Hello? My tongue was engulfed in spiciness. I felt like my body was covered in fur and small sparks were running through it. Oh no, is this lady getting all these kids high all the time? I chewed on the waffle and the chocolate gulped, gulped it down, enjoying the vivid taste. Thanks. My gratitude was barely audible because my lips were already touching the insides of the mask. I didn't even notice how I put it against my face. The paper mache was warm. The mask stuck to my skin, giving it a nice prickle. The kind uh, when you dive into a hot bath after being outside in winter, when you lie there and purr from the soapy water. <laughs> See, I told you, this is yours. Mine. What are we waiting for? The fun won't have itself. The melody kept swirling in the field like a hurricane. I couldn't wait to um, release the energy. The heat that was enchanting music was filling me with. <clears throat> okay. The owl jumped and disappeared into the sky. Sorry. <clears throat> coffee is milk and it's, it's messing up my throat i heard her laughter from somewhere above and then she landed back huffing and sighing you can do it too give it a try i followed suit Whoa! my feet tore off from the ground i flew toward the scards like a rocket and screamed from happiness after seeing my friends from below the wind helped me fly it felt like i was jumping on a huge trampoline the stars looked like vivid sparkles that I could reach and lick up. The moon also got closer, and then I plunged. I got scared that I'd break my legs for a moment, but my soles landed softly on the ground, and I regained balance. You're safe with us. And all your dreams will come true. I'm so happy that I finally found you. 
funny. In a fit of merry laughter, I realized the most important thing. These four are not a threat. My real enemies, and I felt that every single hair on my mask were those who knew nothing about magic. Humans from the village. I also realized how alive my surrounding have become. <laughs> I heard the dry grass under the snow moan. I saw faces of the trees and the stars. The trees were smirking and the trees were grimacing in fear. <laughs> That's right, be scared. I'll jump up to you and... I snapped my teeth, then letting out a jubilant laugh, I uh, jumping uh, up along with the fox. <laughs> we flew higher than the tallest pines and stayed in the air. I swirled, Elisa followed my rhythm. I knew that she was smiling, so I smiled too. And the flute just kept on playing, carrying us higher and higher. <laughs> Polina. Hey, did someone put a spell on you? That someone is standing next to me, I thought, trying uh, to unglue my chin from the desk. My muscles felt slightly sore, but that feeling was pleasant. The whole glass was wandering about for some reason, whispering and passing notes to each other. Their faces looked like discolored masks to me, bleak and boring. I yawned, remembering the time I was soaring high above the forest with Elisa by my side, laughing and squeezing my hand. Perhaps, no, probably, it was all just a dream, because I didn't walk back from the forest, just woke up in my bed and on a normal morning with tea and medicine. Still, I was hardly worried about trying to find a rational uh, explanation for my night dance. That feeling of flight was, so, uh, was much more important. The knowledge of how it feels to be hanging in the air above the treetops of majestic pines and baring my teeth at the moon. Sorry, I got lost in thought. Have you heard about Katya? Huh? Huh? I glanced at the empty seat in front of me. Katya went missing. My sleepiness was gone in an instant. I frowned in suspicion. What do you mean? It can't be! <laughs> All the bitch ass losers are dying. <laughs> Alrighty, that's it for tonight, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and save. <laughs> Alright, uh, so let's defrag. Um Where do I think we are right now? What do I think is happening? Um Well, first off, um I'm really enjoying this game. I'm still enjoying it. Um it is it is definitely fascinating and interesting. I am um yeah, I've got my suspicions on who's like the guy, you know, the killer. Um uh it might not it might be a situation where it's like more than one person, but it's also like I don't know. Right now it's just easier to think of it in terms of like a person who's like fucking uh, people up. But like hmm <laughs> get owned nerd <laughs> it, it's uh, there are, there are things that you know i'm suspicious i mean even the the kids in the woods are are casting their doubts on the on the adults so they're like i i just think the fucking the dad is super sus and maybe the mom too the mom definitely seems um they both seem suspicious. They both have strange motivations, but like, or str like, why are they here? Why is Anton constantly taking medicine? I'm assuming it's because um, the mom has a hereditary condition based on her um, uh, her um, uh, what do I want to call that? Her episodes. Her um, why am I blanking on the word? Her, um, her seizures. Um, I'm assuming that that has something to do, like Anton has that as well. Um, so maybe it's there, maybe it's like hereditary. And so he's taking it and he's taking the medicine too to prevent that. But then again, like, what is the medicine doing? I, I, hmm, hmm. I don't know. I definitely see where this is going, though, because I think that um, 
the kids. I think that um, Olya is going to be put in danger. Olya or Polina or both um, at some point. And that's going to have to cause us to get our shit together. Um, the, the game really, really, really wants me to know, wants us all to know that the kids are not a threat. That the, the kids in the masks, that they are, that they are actually like not the killers, like multiple times in that sequence, um, we're kind of told, Hey, these kids are not dangerous. They're not dangerous. Even though they seem dangerous, even though they've been set up as dangerous. And even though it's very suspicious, um, that they were the last people to see, um, uh, big guy, I forget his name. Um, the game has said multiple times, Hey, no, 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 no. And, th and you know, to be frank, I mean, what they said about adults, I mean, that, that rings true. I, I would, I would say that like, I'm thinking like maybe the cop is the one doing it possibly. My, my, my suspects are Anton's parents. I'm leaning more towards the dad, but the more that I think about it, the mom could also be part of it. Um, the dad definitely has more opportunity, um, and I also think it's odd when he left and then suddenly there's a mitten in the forest and it was that kid's mitten. So I don't know. All right. What's everyone saying? Uh, Curtis, uh, did they say they, uh, what the dad works as a job uh, that they were from Moscow or so originally? I, I think so. I think they were from, yeah, they were, they were part of the city and then they had to move out here because of something, something happened. Um, I think they're trying to get away. From something um clover moo it's interesting that her episodes seemed to act up once moving out here and that's not me le leadingly saying things i have no idea with the route i saw yeah i don't know i'm an adult uh Critis says uh, that's good uh and i can say that absolutely s with certainty don't trust adults yeah I agree uh remy russian five nights at freddy's yep um zazo it was said that he works as an accountant right 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 i do remember that yeah yeah you're right yeah, the forged documents as well. So I guess they're they're getting away from, like, yeah, they they must have done something wrong, um, or like committed some kind of crime, or like are part of some crime situation. Because there was also the talk of you know. Uh, people calling the house mysteriously and Anton answering and then they say, hey, get your dad. I've got I've got a small business to discuss. So it's like, hmm, some weirds going on there. When he uh, asks, do you think there are supernatural forces at play or no? I mean, it's definitely fucking weird. Uh, the, the biggest thing that gives me pause is um, getting his glasses back. How did that fucking happen? Would that have been because see, that's why I'm thinking the dad, because like the dad comes home, drops um, the son off and then goes back out. Get, uh, ki uh, kills the kid, gets the glasses, leaves the glasses on the um, windowsill. You know? <sighs> That's my logical, rational explanation. Like, there's no, like, crazy shit happening here. But, like, it is very weird that that happened. Yeah, at least my guess is supernatural stuff is happening, but it's incidental to everything else. Like, yes, there are tra trickster spirits and the like, but they have nothing to do with the plot. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm worried that the game is leaning more into like all the magical stuff can be explained by psychosis. You know, like that's not. I mean, depending on how it's done, that could be that could be cool, but. I don't know. That seems too tropey for me. I, I, I don't know if I'd like it. It depends on execution. Like everything, it just depends on execution. We'll see. 
Uh, boiled peanuts, says Hayden. Again. <laughs> Not eating them. That's my explanation for what's going on. Of course. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll continue um, at some point in the future. Um, I could buy it. Uh, all right. Uh, so thanks for joining. Uh, I'll catch you all later. Um, I hope this was uh, fun. We've only got uh, how many episodes is this? Five? So two more, I think. I'll wait for someone to say four episodes are out right now. So the next one is like, oh, fuck. When's the fifth one coming out? someday <laughs> jesus y'all have me play a game that isn't even done damn it <laughs> i can't handle this shit <laughs> all right all right y'all take it easy y'all have a great night i guess we'll do one more episode of this and then we'll move on to other stuff but uh but yeah this is really good i i'm quite enjoying it and i i'm excited to see where it goes so y'all have a great night bye hey everybody welcome back to we're doing it again. We're doing, we're, we're on episode, uh, episode four, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited. I'm fucking up my words. Let's do this. <gasps> I couldn't believe it at first, but Lila Pavlov, uh, Pavlovna didn't come to work today. The test is off. I remembered Katya. She was both beautiful and mean. Katya, the first girl in our class whose body started maturing to the envy of all the other females. To... The main source of gossip, a snake and a bitch. <laughs> God damn it. I continued scribbling in my notebook, drawing rows of pines and two small figures, flying between the treetops and the full moon. Shivers ran up my shoulders, sneaking playfully under the hem of my shirt. Even though soaring through the sky felt so simple, there was still something evil weighing me down. The culprit was definitely still in the vill village. They were hiding something horrible under a mask of piousness. What are you drawing? Embarrassed, I covered the notebook, as if there was something shameful about the figures above the forest. Nothing really, just fooling around. Polina put her elbows on my desk. I had already forgotten how light and graceful she was, just like a violin. I wish she could also jump around with us after stripping away uh, stripping away her mask of fake mundanity. I smiled, imagining Polina, a skirt flapping in the wind, the stars sparkling all around us, her asking in bewilderment whether it was all a, a dream, and whether telling her that it doesn't matter, and telling myself that it isn't. Polina's expression grew dark again. <laughs> It's also tragic that I find it difficult to empathize with her. I tried so hard, but then I remembered all her nasty deeds and... Polina shook her head. I'm a monster, aren't I? <laughs> no, I thought. You're one of the most beautiful girls I've ever met. I decided not to say that out loud. It's not okay that I felt worse when I lost my questionnaire than when she went missing. You lost your questionnaire? Yeah, someone out there is reading other people's secrets now. Yes, the forest, I thought, imagining the crooked branches turning notebook pages, touching the childish handwriting with their icy twigs. I hope the search goes well. <clears throat> I was unsure whether she spoke of Katya or her notebook. <laughs> <clears throat> I wanted to ask her about it, but then I noticed Polina's intense stare directed at me. What? You've changed. I smoothed my hair flat, surprised. I just didn't sweep well, sweep well, didn't I? <laughs> You're a different melody today. Some mysterious ancient tune. 
I thought about the flute's melody streaming between the bushy treetops. I hope you haven't told anybody about our chat yesterday. Of course not. She nodded as if acknowledging that she can fully trust me. I was unsure whether I uh, merited such trust. Her hair cascaded down, uh, cascaded down her shoulders, the smell so wonderful that it sent me flying toward the glowing stars of my inner cosmos without any magic. <gasps> oh! At that moment, I felt Biasha's piercing stare. He was clearly watching us. I took my glasses off so I wouldn't be able to see his nasty smirk. Yet a picture of Romka's knife gleamed before my mind's eye. My palms became sweaty. Mom's spaghetti. Did you fall asleep again? Paulina. Paulina. Tell her, a voice in my head whispered to me, and to hell with the consequences. I think Romka has his eyes on you. You think I don't know? But how? Let's say it's my intuition. But I don't care about Piatifanov Piat Piat at all. The wonderful news made me more confident. I think he lacks the brains to win your attention. Plena flashed me an alluring smile. It's a good thing I have you then. Wanna go for a walk after school? Dedushka chistvit sibia lutsha. Grandpa has been feeling better recently. I could return home a bit later. I signed my death sentence when I replied. Yeah, sure. Then I'll see you later. She leaned forward and looked at me with her piercing eyes again, then mumbled as if guessing. Something for Mursovsky? 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 No, probably not. She left, and in her place, Romka's underling started drilling me with his eyes. Nice haircut, idiot. <laughs> uh, no, he didn't say that. His thumb slid under his Adam's apple as if saying, you're dead. I imagine he fucked it up. Like, he doesn't... Like, he, he was like... <laughs> like, no. The bell rang. The rest of the classes flew, bli uh, flew bly, and I was finally able to leave the school. Small whirlwinds rushed across the schoolyard like spinning tops. Big white flakes fell from the sky. Street lights gleamed in the semi-dark. Their shine crystallized in the cold, became firm and pointy. A dog whined in the distance, making me think of poor Zulka. Polina stood at my school steps. The wind played with her hair. I've already forgotten the city's bustle. This place is so tranquil. Oh, and I dream of that cacophony. A Caca what? <laughs> My companion burst out laughing. A cacophony is the chaotic mixture of sounds. Thanks, Wikipedia. Grandpa always taught me to look for a melody in everything. Your grandpa sounds cool. He truly is. I'll introduce you soon. Are you inviting me to come over? You don't want to? A nasty whistle swept across the yard, interrupting me. Two silhouettes materialized from the snowfall, hands inside their pockets and heads kept low. The way the tough duo walked towards us didn't bode well for me. Get your hands off her now. You alright, Polina? Did he harm you? We saw it, eh? Saw what? <laughs> that you were going to lead her into the forest, you psycho, just like Katya. We got here in the nick of time, eh? Polina's frustrated voice flew across the yard like a bird. What's wrong with you two? Haven't you heard? As soon as this asswipe moved here, people started to go missing. Yeah, I saw him offer Katya to walk her home and drag her into the forest yesterday with my own eyes. 
I tried to retort. Lies, I hated Katya. And that's exactly why you offed her. Makes sense, eh? I was taken aback by this injustice. The only positive here was the fact that Romka and Biasha made for terrible actors. Their lives were C- minus at best if I were to rate them. You're lucky we don't deal with cops. Or we would have happily reported your murdering ass. Is my ass the murderer? It's okay. We're about to have a serious talk with him, eh? Grab him, eh? Romka moved toward me, smirking. So you didn't like Katya, huh? Конечно. Кто еще мог ее порешить? Well, of course. Who else could have offed her? Ты, например. You could. I looked at Polina in amazement. That's that's <laughs> that's him looking. <laughs> Romka froze in place with his fists raised. В смысле? What do you mean? Катя, при всем уважении, никого не. Lexicon Devil, exactly. Let's let's be honest. Katya didn't particularly like anybody. Думаешь, Рома она про тебя сплетни не распускала? Do you think she wasn't spreading rumors behind your back, Roma? Что твой отец в тюрьме сидел? Что он тебя? About your dad's jail time? About him hitting you all the time? Oh, rip. <laughs> He's like <laughs> Romka's face turned red and he started flapping his lips like a fish out of water. Uh, Polina continued speaking in a voice that rang with anger. And you, Biasha? Where were you yesterday evening? Katya said you had a few screws loose ever since you encountered the black garage. <laughs> <laughs> Biasha, mentally defeated, his face became deathly white in the cavity of his hood. What? The black garage. Maybe you're the psycho who kidnapped Katya then. No! Biasha let out a voice that almost turned into a squeal. Then he turned around and wobbled his way toward the gate, shaking his head. Wow, I thought. She dealt with Biasha so easily. <laughs> Well, what about now, wannabe Romeo? What other nasty lie will you come up with to surprise me, hmm? Roma gulped, clearly discouraged. What's up with this nonsense? Do you want to play hero? Heroes don't act like this. And boy, you're a poor actor, Roma. Like a C minus. Listen, this four eyes is better than you in every way. And then the poor little baby pissed his pants and shit his britches and went home. <laughs> she said that and did the most astonishing thing. She grabbed my hand and fucking kissed the shit out of my head. <laughs> Let's go, Anton. We passed the stunned Romka. It felt, I felt somewhat bad for him, but I also obviously felt immense joy. He didn't stop us. Just stood there and stared into the growing blizzard. When we crossed the gates, I jumped up and exclaimed, That was so cool! Polina flashed me an embarrassed smile. You know, as Grandpa always says, you live with wolves, you howl like one. He sounds like a philosopher. He's a local historian. At least he used to be. He's long retired, and lately he's not been feeling well. Who is the grandpa? I feel like that's a key piece of this. I gave her an empathetic nod. I kept sneaking glances at Polina. She was like a precious gem, its sides gleaming, shimmering, changing ever so slightly. What? Her eyes, full of innocent laughter, asked me. Nothing, I replied without speaking. You're brave. I like it. I'm brave, but I just stood there, dead silent. True, but you didn't run. Like I did. You remember? You remember when I ran? 
Я до сих пор поражаюсь, как ты нашел в себе смелость послать, а тем более ударить Бабурина. I'm still amazed that you found the courage to talk back, not to mention hit Babruin. Ради тебя, я готов на много. I'm willing to do a lot for you. Вот, я же говорю. See, I told you. Изъясняешься словами из That expression was straight out of some novel. Ради тебя, моя госпожа. For you, I'd do anything, milady. <laughs> Polina started giggling. <laughs> Let me find my fedora. I fake pouted, but couldn't keep myself from smiling in the end. The village looked abandoned, desolate. Rickety fences, ravines full of garbage. This place probably looks nice in the summer since it's full of greenery, but during winter, under the icy crust, under the snowy blanket, dogs barked and clanged their chains behind the fences, but they grew quiet the moment we reached the next house. Try imagining that ghosts are clanging with those chains. Oh, I love ghost stories. Grandpa tells them, them all the time. She stopped in front of a small but cozy looking house with a snow covered roof, then put her hand on the small gate. Her eyes piercing me as if trying to peek into the depths of my soul. Вот я все вспоминаю дедушку. Говорю, какой он хороший, заботливый, умный. You see, только половина правды. I always mention how good, caring, and smart my grandpa is, but it's only half of the truth. Последнее время он немного. Lately, he's been acting sort of. She paused, searching for the right words. Чудной. Funny? Да, пожалуй. Yeah, that's it. Стал таким с годами, так что ничему не удивляйся. He he became uh, like that as he aged, so please try not to be surprised by him. Так точно, ничему не удивляться. Sir, yes, sir. No acting surprised. <laughs> Вольно. Ha <laughs> ha! At ease, soldier. We walked toward the house on a thin, cleaned path. Lena unlocked the door. The long hallway was full of shadows. The door slammed shut behind her backs, cutting off the from the roaring wind and all the outside sounds. The place became so silent that I could hear Polina's heart beating. I wanted to cover it with my hand and feel it with my palm, with my lifelines. What are lifelines, game? Lifeline, one of the most significant lines in the practice of palmistry. A, a divinatory art that interprets the distinctive features of each hand, such as lines and mounts, to obtain information about a person's de uh, density, <laughs> destiny, and personality. <laughs> A palmistry gained wide popularity among Russian youth in the 80s and 90s, influenced in part by the strong presence of the um, G-word culture in the region from which this art originated. I wanted to cover it. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Oh my god. Do you always freeze like this? As if someone pulled an emergency brake in your head? My imagination is running wild. Ah, I see. She took off her coat and hanged it on a wall hook. Come on, take your stuff off. I'll go clean up the room in the meantime. Is her father the is her grandpa the killer, you think? Grandpa always forgets his things everywhere. I'll be quick. He's gonna find like evidence that he did it or something because she, Polina's already saying like he's not acting like his normal self, right? She floated away like light as a butterfly. Another butterfly of a steel kind had a real chance of floating inside my gut in the near, near future. I took off my coat, untied my shoelaces. A tiny squeak reached my ears. <laughs> if there were, uh, if one were to stand in front of the phone, the wallpaper patterns would look like a set of watchful eyes. So this is the place Polina called me from. Oh, I felt that one coming. She stood right here under the electric meter among the shadows twirling the phone cord. Maybe she even played with the light switch, turning the lights off at times and speaking to me in the dark. Sorry, got all gassy all of a sudden. What is this? Oh, should we open? Let's open. Oh no, I think that was a bad move. Wow, there's so much junk in here. It's just like a junk shop. 
Or like at the village cemetery dump where people throw away plastic flower splinters from the rotten crosses and dirty stripes with uh, gilded words of condolences. Do we see anything of interest in here? There's a little doll that looks creepy. Do we see a doll? There's a little teddy bear down there. I hear a, I hear a fly. Why did I think Polina's grandpa uh, bought, uh, brought all of this from a cemetery dump? These don't have toys or a tambourine like in those books about northern shamans. And this, what is it called again? A dream catcher, I think. I didn't catch any dream. It didn't catch any dreams, but it did catch a haymaker spider. And the stench. No wonder I can hear flies buzzing in this place, even if the middle, even if it's in the middle of winter. It smells like thawed lard and wet soil. I guess you just get used to it if you stay here long enough. Hmm. Interesting. All right, what's this? A pair of tourist skis. Dad told me stories of how he would make his own ski and skis and ski poles, and even his own ski wax from beeswax, r r r rosin, and pine resin. Ro rosin? Resin? I, a, a good fit for the harsh winters around here, but the skis are in need of maintenance. The bindings are in very bad condition, and they have dark red spots on them. Probably rust. <laughs> he's, a, he's a killer I know this painting Panini <laughs> Paganini um, the guy was so good at playing the violin that other people had decided he, he sold his soul to the devil the portrait was drawn by Nikolai Fe Fechen um, he was a famous Russian painter that moved to America after the revolution and became famous there too wow Panini has such long fingers and such a piercing stare. What is he looking at? Maybe he did sell his soul after all. Would Polina sell hers, I wonder? Okay. <laughs> sure did. Uh, all right, what else we got? <gasps> it's a Russian nesting doll, a.k.a. a matryoshka doll. I love those. We had a bunch. Weird kids. They're actually neat. Anyway. Suddenly, I'm reminded of that one game that we played. It was a Scream Team game. It was by the Black Curtain Studios, I think. What was it called? The Mard. I think it was Mard. Yeah. And that, that fucking deer kept making the goddamn same sound. That roar. Anyway. I don't get why adults hang something like this in their homes. Crooked, sharp outgrowths. I read that animals don't get hurt when their horns, uh, when their horns that had already hardened get trimmed. Still, it's the same as plastering your wall with clipped fingernails. They're also cornified objects that were once part of a living, living organism. The reflections in this mirror are so sharp and deep, my gaze drowns in it. It feels more like a doorway than a mirror uh, with an identical room with skis and sticky to the touch wallpaper behind it. And the electric meter, which barely worked uh, during the last month as if Polina and her grandpa spend their evening in complete darkness. And then <laughs> few, just a hunting trophy. Okay. Hoggers. <laughs> you caught the hog. Yay. I caught a hog. Um, is that it? I guess that's it. I guess we'll wait. I looked into the deeper part of the house while taking off my boots. Semi-dark masked the corner at the end of the corridor. Something moved toward me, making the dry floorboard squeak. Squeak, squeak. Squeak, squeak. The sound grew louder. I realized that I stepped back toward the door without Polina. thinking. Polina? Hey, Grandpa! A wheelchair appeared around the corner. A stocky old man protruded from the darkness. You must be Polly's classmate, right? Yeah, my name's Anton Petrov. He sh we shook hands. His grip was surprisingly firm. Good to meet you. Very good. And I'm Keraton. 
a name of Greek origin. It means charitable. Oh, That's why you are. My stuff is not charitable. Well, aren't you Greek? And do you know the meaning of your name? Nicole you fucking know. idiot. I've never thought about it. It comes from Latin antio. Someone who goes into battle. <laughs> I chuckled in reply. Apparently my name has brave roots. Apolina. And Polina? Polina, Polina is a name of French origin. Yes, if I remember correctly, it means sunlight. Of course, the sunlight, the enchanting views of France, the Parisian sky, all of that sounded like Polina. <laughs> Critis, I'm Keraton. Ho, ho, ho. You know a lot about names. You're kind of fucking weird. I gave all my dolls unique names. Dolls? Polina не рассказывала. Я же кукловодом работал при театре. Makes sense. Evan Polina told you I used to work as a puppeteer in the theater. Потом сторож с сигаретой тлеющий уснул, сам погиб, и театр сгорел до основания. Then one day a night guard fell asleep while smoking there. He died and the theater burned down. Куклы мои сгорели. All my dolls burned down. Жаль. What a shame. I was pretty sure that Polina told me her grandpa was a local historian. He squinted. Goddamn old men fucking with me. <laughs> they have to do it even in video games. And have you heard, Anton Petrov, that people in the ages past uh, used to have two names, their true name and the one they shared with strangers? I've heard about that. I really like that idea because I got the idea for, maybe I shouldn't say this, but if I were to make a game uh, about, uh, I had an idea for a game about this, right? Where you would, at the name entrance screen, it would like auto-complete on your first character. But then the whole point of the game was to like learn other characters' names. And then once you learn their names, you put them into the name, like the, the name field at the beginning. And then you play as that character in like a looping um, sim where you're like, um, you know, uh, basically the entire premise is it's a it's a game where um, you're it's like on a spaceship. And for some reason, there is an explosion that happens in the spaceship at a certain point. I think it's like a few like uh, like an hour or so into it. And then time reverts back. And so the whole point is to like figure out why time is doing that, what's really going on in the ship, and also to learn more about the characters and stuff and what's going on with them. And uh, yeah, I, I really like that idea because it, it's just fun. I, li I, like, I like thinking about games and stuff. Anyway, uh, Zazo says, the actor who voiced the, the Caraton and another character who hasn't showed up in your playthrough yet is Andre Yaroslav Stev. Yaroslav Stev. Um, the most famous vo voice acting roles include Albus Dumbledore and Optimus Prime. He passed away in 2021 due to COVID complications. Aww. I was just going to compliment him on his voice. His voice is amazing. It's really, really, I really like his voice. But anyway. It was believed that if a person's true name ended up in the hands of bad people, it could spell disaster for its owner. Ah, oh, so it's kind of like it's kind of like doxing, Grandpa. Grandpa, we have that now. Those names could be used to hex or even kill. Uh -huh. Really? What? Yeah, really. And the names they gave to animals were also deliberate. Zayc от литовского зайсти прыгун, то есть, а волк. Zayats come from Zaisti in Lithuanian, a hopper, and Volk comes from the old Slavish Vlek, one who drags. Um, Zayats, Volk. Karatan explains that the etymology of the words for bunny and wolf is Russian. 
The English translation used uh, uses transcribed versions of those words to ensure the comparison to other languages in this line to uh, ma uh, make sense phonetically. Okay. Caraton drove closer and crossed his hands on his chest. I wondered to myself where Polina's parents were. She never spoke about her mom, only her grandpa. I decided to ask a question to continue the conversation. And what about the bear? <laughs> oh, the bear's name is still a mystery. Our, our ancestors were so afraid of that beast, they decided to forget the word they used to call it with. It just disappeared from their language. We were left with a much more recent interpretation. One who oversees the honey. Pooh bear. One who oversees the honey. A pun based on two syllables that make up the Russian word for bear. One of which means honey, while the other means to have knowledge of something, to oversee something. Okay. Interesting. Sounds interesting. <laughs> I'm lying to you. The old man's smile became wider, revealing a stockade of mental implants. He raised his hand and waved it in the air like a rake that was scratching at empty space. Scarily, scarily, scarily. <laughs> scratch, scratch, scratch. Mr. Scratch. The squeaking sound made me shrink instinctively. То я медведь на липовой ноге, на березовой клюке. Here comes the bear on a fake hind leg with a large, uh, with a long birch cane. Все по селам спят, по деревням спят. The whole village sleeps, all the peasants sleep. Одна баба не спит, на моей коже сидит. One old hag is awake, sitting on my skin. Мою шерстку придет, мое мяско. Жрет. Spinning my brown fur, feasting on my flesh. If this was what Polina warned me about, I had already broken my promise. It's not like I got surprised, more like I became seriously concerned. По легенде, именно в нашей деревне приключилась эта страшная сказка. According to legends, that morbid tale happened right in our village, just like many others. Вот, к примеру. There's also this one. The previous century was tough on simple folk. They had close to no money and even less food, just like nowadays. Peasants resorted to robbing, of the taiga, that is. A crucian here, a goose there. And the chief gamekeeper, not only did he prevent from them from doing so, but he also spearheaded the poaching efforts. He became the richest man in the village. His cellar was almost ready to burst. The gamekeeper boasted everywhere he went, this, this forest is mine. I'm the master here. Then he formed a family, got himself a bunch of servants and a humble estate. It was such a joyful occasion that he ordered a feast that spanned for the whole day up until the night. When the clock struck 12, though, dogs started barking outside. Go, the, the game master shouted to his servants. Throw some bones to the dogs. Time passed and somebody knocked on the gates. Go, he shouted to his family. Chase away the guests. 
Никто воротиться не спешит. He was left alone at the table. Not a single soul was coming back. Слышит? Собаки завыли и смолкли. Then he heard the dogs howling, only to go silent again. And then someone started shooting a machine gun, and then someone started banging on his door. Bam, bam, bam. I licked my parched lips and instinctively looked over the old man's shoulder, praying in my mind that Polina would come back soon and interrupt this eerie monologue. Yet only shadows writhed behind Keraton's back. The game master got scared to death and ran to the cellar. He slammed the lock shut, then suddenly somebody spoke from the outside. Это я, жена твоя, отвори. Love, it's me, your wife, open up. В жизнь не открою. No way, never. Голос стал грубее, напористее. The voice became harsher, more forceful. Изголодалась я, любимый, дай хоть чего-то из закромов. I'm starving, love, at least give me something from our supplies. Уйди! Уйди, Христом заклинаю, закричал Егер и упал молиться. Be gone in the name of the Lord, the game master shouted and fell to his knees in prayer. Тогда голос как гром грянул. The next moment the voice roared. Целиком не выйдешь, хоть кусок мне отрежь. <laughs> if you won't come out in one piece, at least give me a slice. Егер вне себя от ужаса просидел в подвале до первых петухов. The game master spent the, no the rest of the night inside, trembling from fear. А как показаться отважился, то нашел своих слуг и родных. And when he gathered enough bravery to come out, he found his family and servants. Повешенными на собственных кишках вдоль тракта hanged on their own guts along the main road. In the blink of an eye, his manner became infested with wild beasts. Because the taiga has no bounds, one part of it exists in our world, and the other in a place where night never ends. Егер пытался сломя голову бежать из проклятой деревни, но истинный хозяин леса настиг его в пути. The game master tried to escape the accursed village, but the true forest master got to him in the end. I spoke in a shaky voice. Что же с ним сделал этот хозяин леса? And what did the forest master do to him? <laughs> the old man tilted his head and burst out laughing. It's easier to name what he didn't do. Anton! Anton! The old man's eyes pinned me to the door leaf. To the... The old man's eyes pinned me to the door leaf. Anton, Come on in, Anton. The old man stayed silent for a moment. Then he smiled as if nothing ever happened and rolled his wheelchair back. My, look at me, talking your ear off. Go. <laughs> I brushed off my stupor and minced across the corridor. It was nice meeting you. You too, Anton Petrov. You too. I felt relieved when I finally slipped into Polina's room. Cat! Cat! Uh, it looked just like its owner, cute and tidy. A huge collection of vinyl records and a record player immediately caught my attention. The walls were adorned by framed photographs. Дедушка тебя не сильно донимал? Oh, Grandpa wasn't annoying you? Нет, он очень интересный. No, he's a very intriguing person. Небось ты теперь знаешь все о своем имени. I bet you uh, know everything about your name by now. <laughs> Lexicon Devil, the door leaf is the most important part of the door assembly, the large panel that swings in or out 
to admit staff and visitors. Oh, I never heard that described like that. The door leaf. Huh. <laughs> I forced out a laugh. My eyes slid across the photos. Examine. What do we got here? A Sailor Moon poster. A poster. This cartoon is for girls. Transformers are way better, and drawing them is much more interesting, uh, especially when they can transform when they change shape. Although if Polina has the two by two channel on her TV, uh, and she invites me to watch it together, I won't refuse. In the name of the moon, I shall punish you. <laughs> Sailor Moon is awesome. A Kuzbas piano. Not a speck of dust on the cover. This is the place where she practices. Let's see what pieces she has in her music sheets. Handel's um, Capriccio Sol Minor. Um, look like uh, looks like the name of a of a pizza teenage mutant ninja turtles would eat. <laughs> Meanwhile, I won't even be able to play a flea waltz. A bit too old fashioned, but I like it. Let's see what Polina has in her collection. Vinyl records from Melodia and some much rarer ones from Jugoton, a company in Yugoslavia. Uh, Rachmaninov, uh, Svirdov, Ver uh, Verdia's Arias, performed by Hibla, Gurzmava, um, only classics. No Toto uh, Kutongo, no Demis Rosos. So even has some bone music, recordings made with an electro recorder over X-ray shots. The needles slide on the picture of someone's ribs and you hear David Ostrak uh, playing a violin. It's <laughs> a lot of Russian names, man. <laughs> All right, I guess we just examine. Um, Why can't we examine the cat? Is there is there a reason for that? Are these your parents? Polina looked down. Yeah. They died many years ago. I can barely remember them. Oh. I felt like a total idiot. I could have guessed Polina was an orphan. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Spasiba. Grandpa raised me as his own daughter. I'm forever grateful to him. I can imagine how tough it was. Are you sure that he's your grandpa? Polina flashed me a sad smile and brushed off a mischievous lock of hair off her face. Let's well, stop talking about sad stuff. <laughs> Meet Johanna instead. Cat? Cat. <laughs> look at this cat. I bent down to take a better look at the cat that was snuggled up beside the radiator. Hi, Johanna. Fucking cats. The cat hit her tail on the radiator's fins, then hissed, showing her fans, fangs. Oh, I'm sorry. She's not exactly friendly. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm used to this kind of reaction. What's with that name, Johanna? Still not tired, of, not tired of talking about names? Johanna is from Helen and the Boys. Have you seen it? Helen and the Boys. A French TV series targeted at teenagers that was broadcast all over Europe, including most Eastern European countries in the middle of the 1990s. I snorted. That's a show for girls. Oh, come on. I, for one, watch the Transformers, too. Really now? What's your favorite? Oh, my God. Anton. <laughs> Chill, dude. Well, is this a test? Well, let's say it's Megatron. If we're talking Beast Wars, you got yourself a keeper, bud. <laughs> yes. Oh, what, what was his catchphrase? What was uh, Megatron for Beast Wars catchphrase? It was like, uh, excellent. No, no, no. It was. <laughs> what was his catchphrase? Oh, no, I forgot it. <laughs> oh, damn it. Hold on. <laughs> it was it like, yes. Beast Wars catch phrase yeah, yeah, yeah what was it what was it no no that's not it his best lines it, it, it had to have been like yes yes yeah i think that was it i think that was it yes 
Oh, I'm going to fucking kill you, kill the shit out of you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was yes. Okay, cool. I was just curious. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. I have to find, I have to find, uh, uh, Beast Wars, uh, yes compilation. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Aha, didn't you say you dislike bad guys? I do, but he alone was able to thaw my heart. Polina grabbed at her chest in a comical manner. Polina sat down on the couch and fixed the bedspread. So, what are we going to do? Her pose and playful gaze hypnotized me. I don't know. I said, I don't know. It's your fucking house. <laughs> Dimmed lights helped create a uh, special, exciting atmosphere in the room. I, fe I felt a faint aroma of blackberry, but also something more elusive and captivating. At that moment, my usual embarrassment suddenly morphed into some unexplainable vigor. I wanted to show off and brag, to do everything in my pyre to keep Polina's gaze fixed on me for as long as possible. I imagined myself to be like Agent 007, ready to seduce another femme fatale with his stunning looks. As if mimicking the hero of spy action movies, I crossed my hands on my chest and, with a mysterious smile on my face, decided to lean against the wall. I thought myself to be quite charming at that particular moment. Yet a clanking sound stopped me from uh, enjoying this graceful pose. I failed to notice the open piano and sat right down on the middle of its keys. <laughs> I had lost all of my charms after almost reaching the ceiling in one scared jump. Following, uh, followed by the instrument's lid slamming shut with a bang. <gasps> At the same time, a frightened Johanna jumped off the chair. The cat rushed up to the curtain and then dashed across the wall to the safety of the wardrobe's top, rip, ripping out thin slices of wallpaper along the way. Oh no! Pieces of a torn up Sailor Moon poster that by pure chance happened to be in the way of the scared animal fell to my feet. <sighs> Judging from the look on Polina's face, she really liked that poster. Прости, Sorry, I, it was an accident. <sighs> she closed her eyes, her lips twisted and forehead wrinkled. It seemed like Polina was about to scream or cry, but she just sighed and spoke in a calm voice. It's okay. There's nothing that can't be fixed with electric tape. Well, duct tape in our case. Give me a hand here. <gasps> Yay! Okay, okay, okay. Uh... Okay, we got that, and then, uh, it's like, yeah, it's like that, ish, okay, so that's the bottom corner, okay, cool, yeah, definitely, very cool, um, okay, that's gotta be, like, right here, okay, go over there, and then over here, and then over here, let's separate these, like, yeah, that's gotta be on the right, oh, yeah, got that one, okay, and then her hand is, like, right, there. yeah, so like that, and then like that, and then it's on the bottom, right? It's gotta be like over here, and like that, and then, yeah, there we go. So that goes like right there, that goes right here, right there, and that comes up here, probably like right there. Oh yeah, perfect. And then, oh no, there was something under there. Okay, that goes like right there. Yeah, yeah. Duh. And that, and that. Perfect. Nailed it. Last piece fell into place and it seemed like the room's harmony was restored along with the poster. This is a character from Sailor Moon, right? Sailor Jupiter, I think. No way, it's Sailor Saturn, you fucking moron, stupid fucking idiot. Her name is Hotoru and her she is a warrior of destruction. Yet, instead of destroying the world, she ended up saving it. I've always liked her the most. 
So yeah. Oh, and she also has two different personalities in her. Can you imagine? По крайней мере было. Джоанна порвала ее надежную личность не меньше. She had at the very least. Johanna ripped her into a, at least a dozen more. I glanced at Polina and inquired in a soft voice. Расскажи, как проходят твои вечера. How do you usually spend your evenings? Polina shrugged and I looked at and looked at me as if bored. Смотрю телевизор или играю дедушке на скрипке. I watch TV or play violin for grandpa. Он планирует сделать из меня Давида Ойстраха. He wants to make me into a new David Ostraika. Ostraika. David Ostraika. Um, one of the most prominent Russian violinists. He was also well known for his musical conductor skills, earning the rank of master in that field. Died from a heart stroke hours after one of his concerts. Yo, what the fuck? Кого? David who? Скрипач был такой великий. He was a famous violinist. I wonder if that's like... All striker, like uh, the guy from um, Giant Bomb, like his last name was All striker, All striker, All striker. Yeah, that seems like an Americanized version of that. Very, yeah, of that Russian name. Anyway, uh, Lexicon Devil. I love that the dubbers were like uh, cousins for the lesbians. Yes, 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 yes. Making it extremely problematic. А ты что же сама не хочешь играть? So he's forcing you to play. Почему? Хочу. Forcing me? Nothing of the sort. Это мой шанс уехать в город и начать нормальную жизнь. This is my chance to move to a big city and lead a better life. Гастролировать по странам, знакомиться с новыми людьми. Touring different countries, meeting new people. Oh, I'm yawning. I felt a sting of stupid jealousy from her words. Играешь для меня? Can you play something for me? Ты точно этого хочешь? Are you sure? Очень. Of course. Хорошо. Только учти, я сегодня не в форме. All right, but keep in mind that I'm a bit under the weather today. She procured the violin from its case. The polished frame glimmered in the lamplight. Это не обычная скрипка. This is not an ordinary violin. Ее смастерил в 17 веке скрипичных дел мастер Гварнери. А сам Ойстрах дал на ней первый концерт. Yeah, it's not Ostrach, it's Ostrach. Uh, it was made in the 17th century by a violin artisan named uh, Guaneri, Guaneri, and Ostrach himself used it for his first concert. Is it expensive? It's worth at least a couple million dollars. Yo, I think your grandpa's lying to you constantly. <laughs> My jaw dropped. Polina replied with laughter. <laughs> I wish you could see your face right now. I'm joking. It's dirt cheap. Если бы у меня была скрипка Гварнери, я бы жила в Москве. If I had one of uh, Guarneri's uh, violins, I would have lived in Moscow. А я и не повелся. Hey, I knew you were joking. Конечно, конечно. Mm -hmm, sure. Polina took a proper playing pose and clutched the violin between her shoulder and jaw, then brought the bow to the strings. Fa dies minor. Fa dies minor. The bow slid across the strings, saturating the air inside the room with music. I sat on the windowsill, amazed at the melody's power. Polina looked so graceful while playing. Her bow soared, it cut open space-time. Her slender fingers moved with inhuman speed, a phantom smile smoldered on the girl's lips. It felt like the music that mysterious Fadia's minor was akin to a gust of wind that found its way inside the house, bringing along smells of the sea in faraway cities. And every new gust made it even more difficult to breathe for my enthralled self. The melody carried me up into the skies, bringing back memories of that night when I was jumping over the forest. But just like everything good, it ended way too fast. Polina froze for a moment, then lowered her hand and bowed. The waterfall of her fragrant hair swayed back and forth. I jumped up, clapping, scared the cat again. Bravo! Who did this? Bravo! Who composed this? Robert Schumann. Robert Schumann. <laughs> I have a new favorite composer now, bra. The second syllable turned into an incredulous cry when someone wailed under my foot. Oh no, Johanna! <laughs> oh God, I forgot about the cat and all my excitement and ended up stepping on her tail. She didn't give me the time to apologize. Oh fuck! Johanna crawled up my leg and clung to my thigh. Her sharp claws pierced my skin through my pants. Ow, 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 ow. Polina came to my rescue and slapped the cat on the back of her head. 
Йоханна, гадость какая, брысь! Йоханна, you foul thing, shoot! The cat jumped on the wall rug and <laughs> retreated from the room after opening the door with her paw. Oh, man. I winced when uh, touching my thigh. It was probably quite scratched up. Polina gave me a sympathetic hug. Does it hurt? Oh, really? It was my fault. I'll show her what attacking my guests entails. Oh, jeez. I was worried less about the pain and more about the damage to my clothes. My pants were riddled with many with tiny holes. Well, mom sure will be happy about this. <laughs> At the same time, Polina's attention was flattering. Your Johanna is quite a strong lady. You'll get along. If you don't bleed out on me, of course. She turned around and searched the room with her eyes. She got some duct tape. <laughs> I thought we had iodine around here. Oh, don't worry. What do you mean? Nobody has ever died in my bedroom before. I'd prefer to keep it that way. For now, take off your pants. I imagined myself standing in front of Polina in just my underwear. I imagined her uh, bending down to treat my wounds. That fantasy scalded my mind like hot steam! Please, let's not do it, Polina. She didn't listen, just soaked a piece of cotton in brownish liquid for a, uh, for a, from a strong smelling bottle. Small. Patient, I'm ready, patient. Pull them down. Come on, I'll rinse it when I get home. My reply erased the smile from her beautiful lips. A horizontal wrinkle ran across her nose bridge. She spoke in a voice with a tinge of capriciousness. Stop resisting, let me help you. She rubbed my leg lower than where my wound was. You can't reject girls like that. Polina took a bold step toward me and grabbed the buckle of my pants belt. I tried dodging, but to no avail. The girl was already behind me. She placed her fingers under the belt and tried to pull down my pants. Oh, no, you don't. She giggled. I spun around and Polina pressed her body into mine, bursting with laughter. She sank her teeth into my arm ever so slightly and tugged on the belt. I stepped back, stumbled upon the couch, and ended up sprawled onto its soft surface. Polina landed on top of me. Her hair covered my face and tickled my nostrils. The f I felt the vibrations coming from Polina's chest. She was laughing. I also felt a chilly draft that exposed the skin of my thighs. <laughs> She managed to pull down my pants. After all, I lay underneath her, partially naked, dying from embarrassment. Polina pulled away. Her laughter died down. She blew a lock of hair from her face and looked straight into my eye, then pressed her small fist into her cheek and measured my face with a thoughtful glance. Is there something on my face? No, but you're very handsome. That's not true. But you are, honest. And you know, I think I've been waiting for you to appear in this village for all these years. My heart was thumping in a crazy rhythm. I felt it under my ribs, in my temples, all over my body. I completely forgot that I was lying underneath her without my pants on, rubbing my bare thigh against her leg. I really like your company. I like you too. I finally met someone who understands me. This is more valuable than a Guanari violin. I shifted my gaze to her lips. They were so close that I could even uh, that I could see even the tiniest of wrinkles on their surface, just as parched as my own lips. We gonna kiss y'all? We gonna kiss y'all? We gonna kiss? We gonna kiss? We're gonna do it? Poink. Polina lowered her eyelids. Eyelashes fluttered. Our lips touched. I felt dizzy as if uh, I was falling into a bottomless pit. Every cell in my body sang in jubilation as if I was getting a taste of the most beautiful music, something even more perfect than Schumann's melody. And then Grandpa came in. <laughs> and then I looked in the mirror mounted on the wardrobe's door. 
It reflected a half-open door in the corridor's gut. Keraton was peeping at us through the crack. His grim face floated in the black waters of darkness. His eyes pierced me, much deeper and angrier than feline claws. After getting his cover blown, the old man drove back away from the door and dissolved into Terry shadows. I parted my lips from Polina's distraught. I had to interrupt our sweet kiss. Um, Polina gave me a questioning look and spoke in a frustrated voice. What's wrong? I untangled myself from her, stood up, trying to put the pants back on and fasten my belt on the third attempt. Nothing. I just remembered. I promised mom to return home before dinner. Don't go. Polina, listen. Oh, don't go, Tosha. <laughs> oh no! Her voice trembled, silvery streams ran down her cheeks. I was taken completely by surprise. <laughs> Plain's mood shifted in an instant, just like topics in her grandpa's monologue. Still, her grandpa was old and weird and she... <laughs> Take me with you. Oh, no. I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> what happened, Polina? Please stop it. <laughs> I leaned into her, worried. <laughs> Come, calm down. It's okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm going mad here. I, I don't know. I'll off myself. Don't say that. She plopped on the bed, face in her hands. Sobs turned into stifled cries. Oh, no. Oh, God. I shuffled my feet, puzzled, with no idea how to react. Let's run away. We'll gather our things tomorrow and go to the city. We're both just 12. And? Do you live, enjoy living in a wooden shack on the edge of the forest? Do you think I enjoy rotting away, cooped up inside? Her back arched, her small fists pummeled the couch. If you're a man, take me away from this place. You need to leave, my inner voice blurted out. I couldn't help but agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you need rest. Let's talk later. <laughs> oh, man. I went to the corridor mumbling. I might have acted like a coward, but I couldn't handle her fit of hysteria anymore. I put on my coat, shoved my feet down my boots. Scratch, scratch. I stared at the darkness, imagining a man-eating bear. I could hear Polina's cries coming from the other side of the wall while something was squeaking its way towards me. The wheelchair stopped seven feet away on the border between light and darkness. What? Leaving so soon? I replied in a mumbling voice while tying my shoes. Sorry, my mom will get worried. Do you know your mother's true name, Anton Petrov? Shadows swirled behind Keraton. I carved, uh, I craved to leave this eerie place as soon as possible. No, I'm sorry. I started apologizing left and right, anxious. Why is Polina crying? What happened? Metal teeth shined in the dark. <laughs> Let's go to the kitchen. Tea is ready. I've already cut up the cake. Mom is waiting for me. It's okay, she can wait a bit longer. Come. He let out a dissatisfied sob. I finally managed to fix the shoelaces, so I sprang to my feet. The old man kept a strenuous smile on his face. I turned my back on him. My fingers struggled with the lock. Scarily, scarily. Scratch, scratch. <laughs> I'll be forced to stay, driven over by a wheelchair, dragged away. Scarily, scarily. Scratch, scratch. The door opened, letting chilly air inside the stuffy corridor. <laughs> What's your true name? Goodbye. <laughs> oh no. I flew to the porch, to the trail that snaked between the houses. While I was at Polina's place, darkness had shrouded the village with its crow-like wings. The howling made it feel alive, conscious. Um, Lamplights firmly embedded into the night emanated a faint glow. I wiped my forehead. What was that? Why did Polina throw such a tantrum? 
and the old man who was peeping at us. No wonder she wanted to run away so badly. As soon as I remembered Keraton's metal teeth, goosebumps started running all over my skin. Hey! I shuddered and looked around. A fuzzy silhouette appeared near the fence. Who is this? Who's there? Who do you think? A person stepped toward me into the ring of light. My soul almost left my body. I recognized Romka. Of course she did. His cheeks were red, his eyes reddened. He cried while hiding in the dark. No. Well, hello there. I warned you before, didn't I? I said you'd be dead if I ever saw you with her again, didn't I? I heard a click, saw the shine of a butterfly knife. Roma's bloodless lips stretched into a scary grimace. His pupils glinted like a pair of coins. Roma, put away the knife. Think I'm crazy? I'll show you crazy! Roma! Roma. I backtracked, uh, afraid of turning my defenseless shoulder blades toward him. Roma advanced toward me, scowling. You scum! White bubbles formed at the edges of his mouth. He wiped off his face with a jerky motion, smearing the tears all over his cheeks even more. His eyes glazed over with the fog of hatred. The steel butterfly started its slow upward movement, but then suddenly dove toward me as if somebody fast forwarded the tape. Romka lunged at me. His face was the color of wax and his eyes had a shine of phosphorus to them. I felt his tackle and lowered my eyes. The butterfly was fake. It probably came from a prank shop, the type of toy where the blade retracts into the handle. But then I realized I was wrong, that the reason the blade was invisible was because it was plunged into my chest. It's completely inside me, right between my ribs, cold, sharp. And only then did pain hit me, just like thunder that takes its sweet time to hit after the lightning. To my surprise, the pain wasn't exactly strong, but it felt uncomfortable, sinking, reverberating in the back of my head. I grabbed Romka's forearm. He ripped the knife out of me. A dashed line of blood followed it in slow motion. The skin of the bony frame of Romka's face stretched into a grotesque grimace, his jaws wide open with the thread of saliva taut between his teeth. I wanted to ask him to stop, but words got stuck in my throat. The world tilted and shook. I fell to my knees. It was suddenly difficult to breathe, as if the air in my lungs turned into vicious, viscous dough. Blood filled my mouth. It overflowed onto the snow. Oh, Jesus. As if I couldn't hold my head straight anymore, I was forced to stare at that scarlet pool. Then I plopped my face first into it. And then, I, and then I plopped face first into it. Blood warmed my cheeks. I'll just lie down for a bit and everything will be fine. It's okay, the doctors will patch me up. Romko grabbed me from behind and flipped me around in one violent motion. I saw his twisted face and his fanatical eyes. <clears throat> Roma grabbed the butterfly knife with both hands, growled, and then brought the weapon down into my stomach. Pain consumed my consciousness. I couldn't move. I couldn't even shut my eyes, even with all the hot droplets on my pupils. Then I flew up and pierced some sort of bubble inside of me, up and down. And up again, Romka streamed and stabbed. He screamed and sliced. Blood splashed in my face and it, as it streamed upward in wide scarlet stripes. Dozens of little fires sparked up in my head, only to die out after uh, one another in the next moment. The parts of my brain where those weird fireflies died sank into darkness. Rumka's silhouette was now blurry. My eyes stopped following the knife. I looked up. My vision slid across the kill my killer's blood-soaked face up toward the darkening sky. In the most fleeting of moments, I saw the life I won't be able to live, a myriad of lost opportunities. As the sole spectator in this empty movie theater, I stared at the screen. 
I saw Olya growing up without me. I saw her future kids that I will never hold in my arms. My aging parents living in the house at the edge of the forest. I saw the bright galleries and exhibition halls, the walls of which will never be adorned by my paintings. The pavements of cities I will never visit. The 21st century that I will not call home, that I will not welcome. After, uh, and a universe of people and things that were now irrev ir irretrievably lost for me. I saw a blinding, scorching light. I had no idea if it was the sky or under my lowering eyelids. The knife just kept on stabbing, but the pain was gone. <clears throat> my body no longer mattered. The movie was over. I disappeared into the bottomless void. The police have arrested a teenager who stabbed... Uh, teen murderer is the end ending one that we've unlocked. The police have arrested a teenager who had stabbed one of his peers during an altercation. A fight broke out between two students from the sixth grade that resulted in one of them inflicting more than 10 stab wounds on the other using a butterfly knife. The victim was then rushed to the hospital where he unfortunately died from blood loss. The teen suspect was taken to a police station for questioning and he later confessed to the crime. The police have opened criminal proceedings on one charge of first degree murder. There is also an investigation planned into the school's principal and his educational work deputy to establish if one of their students freely carrying a dangerous knife constitutes criminal negligence on their part. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Detectives and forensic specialists are still working at the crime scene. The end. Well, that sucks. <laughs> Oh, so, okay, that, all right, well, well, well. <laughs> what? 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 Well, that sucks. kidding me are you kidding me all that time all that bullshit and <laughs> he just dies he just fucking dies he just died what that fucking sucks <laughs> All right, well. Oh, they, Brain Buster, they have definitely been subverted. So, like... <sighs> so... I have to I have to play the fucking previous chapter all over in order to get a good ending or an ending where we can go to an episode five. What? What? Oh, but, uh. Skip scene dialogue.
So episode three, and then... I guess we sit down. We take an amulet? Yeah, no worries, Ruggy Griffin. Uh, good night. I'm just gonna, I don't know, see if I can take the amulet? What amulet? Is it in here? Oh, I guess I fucked up. I don't care. Um... Am, oh, am I supposed to wait until he turns around and then open it? I don't know. There's that exchange where Polina offered it to you? I don't remember that. Stay silent. I, I, don't, I don't remember what this is. Because I'm skipping through, I don't remember any of these fucking interactions. It's like if it was a completely different, like, situation. Oh, okay, this one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Well, this is important you already. Let's try to start over. I carefully took uh, hold of the amulet with my free hand. It emanated Polina's warmth and the charming aroma of blackberry. I hung it around my neck and hid it under the collar of my shirt. Along with this gift, I got a weird feeling of determination as if this amulet could be able to change my life. Blaine and I smiled at the same time, both of us feeling the ice wall between us thaw. Thank you, Anton. This really means a lot to me. Polina studied me with her eyes and clicked her tongue. Do you know what you look like, Antosha? I don't care. <laughs> so apparently nothing changes between this dialogue and accepting it and the scene it changes so everything you've seen before will flash and then it'll stop okay why is it stopping here it's come through at people's yeah 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 oh, okay so it stops when people like walk by i guess Oh, oh, this is different. The Polina's amulet lunged uh, out from the collar uh, toward the blade. The leather cord prevented the claw from piercing the assailant's neck, but the charm fell to my chest with a thud. I expected to be cut so badly that I'd end up choking on my own blood. But for some reason, Romka just stood there staring at me. He had his knife ready to cut, but his eyes were fixated on the bobble hanging from my neck. He growled something evil under his breath. Blaine's gift was driving Romka crazy, but it tied his hands at the same time. The pause lasted so unnaturally long that it made Biasha frown in confusion. The sound of a creaking window opening up came from above. Pyatafanov. I felt the rush of adrenaline and sprinted away, almost taking off into the air. Romka came to his senses when I was uh, already so far away, so he shouted his dreadful warning at my back. Don't you dare forget again! Antosha! Antosha. Antosha uh, my thoughts are focused on Polina. Yeah, 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 I already saw this. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh no. I need to. What if I just turned it off? <laughs> no! I fucked up. Yeah, 
Yeah, whatever. Oh, wait. No, I can't. Ah, fuck. How do I... Here, turn off. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm trying to get to the goddamn end of this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, scary. Crazy. Wow, crazy. Weird. Okay. okay. Shut up. Cool. Very, very creepy. <laughs> All right. Game. God damn it, game. Where'd it go? Is it under here? There it is. And there. Yep. Wow, so cool. I totally, yeah, yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. See how it says skipping at the top? <laughs> there we go. Kiss! Kiss, Dago. She's so sad. The claw amulet I got from Polina saved me once again. Wait, how? Wait, it show didn't show. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Backlog. What did it? What did it say? Uh, yeah, Glaze. Okay, so it felt like time to uh, ground to a halt, and both Rumka and his dangerous knife and I were frozen in it like insects inside an amber shard. Run, my inner voice signaled me. Um, save your skin. <laughs> Pathetic, filthy scum. And then he howled. He hurled his uh, despaired voice upward toward the stars. Romka pulled the knife uh, handle into his mouth like a cigar, clutched in his teeth the blade pointed toward, uh, outward like a steel claw. <laughs> then he fell on all fours. His shadow took on the shape of an angry beast. Saliva, saliva dripped it to the snow. Romka went completely mad. He roared and lunged at me, using all four of his limbs to jump. Run. I ran without looking. My boots sank into the snow. The wooden fence flew past me. The noise was so overwhelming that I felt like some beast, and not a boy my age, was chasing me. A horrifyingly huge beast. The wind whipped my face, stinging it like nettle leaves. I was suffocating. A tractor stood around the corner, but I couldn't see its driver anywhere. Oh, something agile jumped over the trail and landed some distance away from me. The snowy barricade stood in my way. I climbed it, slid down, and rushed into the back alley. Lamplights shimmered in a panic. All right, this is getting too loud. I noticed the village shop and ran toward it, then grabbed the doorknob locked. The back alley w was reflected in a window. Something huge and terrifying was closing in uh, on me from its depths, shrouded in a snowstorm akin to a burial gown. <gasps> I ran to the cleared out strip of asphalt. Dogs in the front yard didn't bark. They just whimpered sheepishly. I turned around the last house and ran out of the village. The forest lower, uh, towered over me like a giant black monolith. I had a choice. Either I run to the clearing where I will be, sitting a, uh, will be a sitting duck, or I'll run straight through the forest with its windfall and ravines. I chose the second option. 
I jumped to the side. My legs slipped on a patch of ice. I fell into a ravine. Convulsing, I struggled to turn on my back and started crawling away, except Romka, uh, uh, expecting Romka to appear at the, at the top at any moment. An inhuman roar swept across the village, drilling into my ears. A minute passed, then another one. I trembled, staring at the ravine's edge into the inky brushstrokes of pines, into the approaching shadow. The boy in a wolf's mask appeared from the forest and stopped in front of me. Grand. He unclenched his fist and a butterfly knife, uh, a butterfly kine, fell into the snow. You are grr, safe. We told you, grr, remember? I stood up, barely able to believe my eyes. The wolf boy waved his hand toward the clearing. It's all great, go. I was too scared to ask questions. So I just walked away in silence, stumbled, uh, stumbling among the swaying trees, trying not to think about the lumps of darkness that were seeing me off, hiding in the bushes. At that moment, I had no idea what um, what was actually waiting for me in the place I mistakenly called home. The front door was open and swaying slightly in the wind. Uh-oh. Felt, it felt like my skin was getting covered in rime. I clenched my fists. Darkness oozed into the hallway, and snowflakes floated along uh, inside along with it, landing softly on the rug, like a pack of vultures that sensed their food. I stepped into the doorway with the utmost caution. For a moment, I thought I heard someone talking in the kitchen, but it turned out to be a radio broadcast. The previously mentioned cyclone is getting even close to the region. The official forecast for tomorrow suggests gusts of wind reaching up to 70 kilometers per hour. Emercom of Russia has called on citizens to exercise extreme caution. The roads are closed off. The cold air streams coming from the Arctic are bringing massive blizzards. I heard voices coming from the upper floor, too. The staircase let out a long squeak. I took one step, yet my heart managed to beat six or seven times in the meantime. The door to my parents' bedroom was ajar. Shadow play unfolded like a, a, inside a light spot. Black silhouettes were performing a dance of hatred. Mom hissed, hissed at dad, her wrists flying toward the ceiling, and he towered over her, his hands crossed uh, on his huge chest. We're all in danger, and it's your fault. And stop lying! You saw him in the village! He found out where we live. It wasn't him. I read about the things your buddies were capable uh, are capable of in the newspapers. I ran toward my bedroom. My parents were in the middle of another quarrel where uh, they showered each other with mutual accusations. Dad let out a low beast-like roar. Oh, make them stop. Olya stood in the corridor, pressing her little palms against her, he her ears. I chased away the illusion where my sister was getting stabbed to death by Romka for my sins. Her face swollen from crying made my skin freeze and almost managed to push the image of old Keraton smirking and Prat Pratifian uh, uh, jumping on all fours out of my mind. What happened? They're going to divorce! I hugged my sister and held her tight. Oh, my tongue uh, refused to listen to my commands to look for excuses. It felt like the screams were coming from every direction, right and left, up and down, splitting my head apart. Swear words rained down on us, so we covered our heads with our hands like refugees running from a bombing. I want to escape. To your room? No. Far away. I'm going to raise this up a little bit. Lead me to Lem Neverland. You promised. I carefully unglued Olya's hands from her ears and led her away from the room with our parents, which was vibrating with malice. Your fault. For whom? Your own, and only your own. I would never. In moments like these, I despised them more than they uh, despised each other. I bolted down the door to my room and leaned against it. My knees gave way. Why were you out for so long? 
I went to visit some weird people. Are they also getting divorced? <laughs> I don't think so. Something hit the window's ledge on the outside. Olya shuddered and shifted her gaze toward it. Bam, another snowball smacked the window's frame. Were you expecting someone? I didn't reply. Instead, I let go of her wrist. Olya wept in fear. I crossed the room, wincing from every shout coming from my parents. I could hear plates getting smashed now. They must have moved their argument to the kitchen. Oh, sorry. I was like, what? I flung the curtains and the window open. Hootie, Teddy, Wolfie, and most importantly, the charming Elisa stood outside waving at us. Olya gasped in surprise when she saw the owl girl. See, I told you. Yeah, I know. I always believed you. Who are they? Her fearful voice also uh, had come, uh, had some curiosity mixed in. Only the most boring children sit at home in weather like this. We still have so many games to play, Hoot. But let's not play all of them. My paw hurts. We play a little, then rest. For grins. Come on, come out and play and dance. My heart started beating faster as soon as I saw Lisa. My inner voice practically screamed, She's here. She's finally here. Do they know the way to Neverland? I entertained that possibility looking at the animal kids. Maybe? Let's go find out. Same, there's the same dude who said never go, never follow that owl person. Never. The silhouettes of my forest friends promised to free us from sadness, anger, and nightly horrors. I made sure that Olya wore warm clothes. Mom barked at dad like a wild beast from that show with Nikolai Drozdov. I'm not clicking that. <laughs> we sneaked past the rumbling kitchen and into the uh, snowfall outside. Lisa ran up to me and hugged me tight, poking her cold nose into my neck. You took so long. We almost got old waiting for you shut-ins. <clears throat> she pressed her body into me even harder. Turns out waiting is so tiring. Ooh, give me a minute to catch my breath. I was preparing to leave for a long time once, Hoot Hoot, and when I was done, I forgot where I was supposed to go. Olya looked at the owl with suspicion, <clears throat> but she still giggled when the bird did a backflip and landed perfectly on her feet without staggering. All the other animals, as if on cue, stopped fooling around and, star and stared at Olya in amazement. That's the girl who didn't want to become friends. My name is Olya. I, I was afraid of you before. Were you afraid of our hootie? Maybe she has owl phobia. Can you cure that? <laughs> it doesn't matter as long as she's not afraid of having fun. Or she might uh, get scared to death with us. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I was stunned at the realization that my lips were slowly forming a smile. And that's after everything I saw while at Polina's house. Every time I met Elisa, it felt like I crossed a river and the sound of flowing water suppressed all of my negative thoughts. <gasps> Your costumes are so pretty. The fox girl let go of me and squatted beside Olya. <laughs> my, what a cutie. Why did you hide such a cute, cute creature from us before? I glanced at the house, worried our parents um, might have seen us and were about to ruin our fun like they always do. Then hugged my sister and replied, Let's get further away from here. Sure thing. Hey, Olya, do you know how to find Grandpa Frost in our forest? My little sister's eyes widened. How? You need to follow the sweet trail. Elisa bent down and took a candy out of the snow. <gasps> Olya raised her hands in amazement. She gave me an inquiring look. I nodded. 
My sister munched on the candy. Wait, do we Hoot Hoot have Grandpa Frost in our forest? Why Hoot Hoot didn't you tell me? I did this afternoon. But I sleep during the day. Right, I told you while you were sleeping. I remembered Romko while listening to our childish to their childish conversation. How he screamed at the top of his lungs while chasing me mere minutes before Wolfie appeared. What happened to Romka? He's all great. Trust me. Because that's him. Your Romka is safe and sound. But a bad boy like him is unlikely to get a present from Grandpa Forrest. He'll get a handful of coal at best. Or his ass whooped. <laughs> Al's like, huh? Teddy sh uh, shook his bandaged paw in a comically threatening manner and the animal kids all burst out laughing in unison. The anxiousness I felt a moment ago now felt fleeting, distant. Hello? <laughs> Fuck. Little tail. Elisa dashed away, wiggling her red tail like a torch's flame. Oya went after her without thinking and laughed after um, taking another candy out of the snow pile. You're so lively it makes me sick to my stomach. And you stop being so passive. Run with us to Grandpa For uh, Frost. Well, there are still presents left. No way. I won't believe the fox's uh, tails unless 10 pounds of sweeps drop on my head right now. <laughs> when the aforementioned sweet started raining down on the bear's head, I couldn't stop myself from laughing at him ouching and bobbing his head up and down. <laughs> Tasty treats glistened in the snow. Teddy sneezed and pulled a little bear in the north candy out of his ear. I take an hour long nap and then count all these chocolates. I suspect there are no more than three pounds here. Elisa shouted at us from the other side of the forest. Maybe in another life. Hurry up, Grandpa Forrest. Uh, Frost is already tired and waiting for you in his castle. I shrugged and ran, running loosened the grip of fear I, I felt all this time. Something round whizzed past my temple. I decided it was a snowball, and then Olya proclaimed, Zephyr. Don't pick it up, it's dirty. Huh? Do you believe in microbes? And you don't? I used to. Graceful rows of uh, colossal pines greeted us with their rustling paws. Snow drifted upward into the black, endless black sky, just like last time. Snow piles light, um, lit up uh, like melted silver. So pretty, and I thought the forest was scary. Parents told us scary stories of the forest, owl and snow, but when, uh, but we weren't one bit worried playing with her uh, when moon glows. I did my best to keep track of Olya's movement, but it was a difficult task. My sister would jump inside bushes, picking up more candy, only to then get back on the trail laughing. <clears throat> Hootie flew above our heads, landed on a branch, and started hooting and shaking her head. Wolfie dug into the snow with his face, grabbing out a pile of bubble gum and swallowed it without taking off the wrapping. Your tummy will hurt. The wolf got scared and spat, it out, uh, spat out the gumball. Lies, 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 nasty flies. <clears throat> Tummy aches don't exist. All that nonsense only happens to grown-ups. Lisa stopped in her tracks and moved a canopy of intertwined branches to the side in a pompous manner, like you would open the curtains in a theater. <clears throat> Behind the obstacle lay a clearing. There stood an ice castle glistening with silver. Is this real? Should I pinch you? There's no need to pinch her. We stared at the sparkling uh, miracle. Its towers and walls were made out of snow and icy marble. I heard a calming sound of ringing little bells. There was also the smell of chocolate and burnt sugar in the air. Welcome to our humble abode. Come on in. She didn't have the uh, have to invite us twice. We entered the castle, spinning around and squinting from the blinding sparkles. Oh God. Grandpa Frost sat atop a shiny throne. Puffy pom-pom swung atop the two peaks of his hat. A snow-white beard covered his kind smile. 
He looked just like I imagined him uh, back in the day uh, when I still believed in mom's fairy tales. Tall, strong, and hairy, radiating frost and warmth at the same time. Uh, Zazo says save, so I guess I'm going to do that. Um, how do you save? I forget the menu. Okay. <sighs> and his voice low and syrupy enveloped me like the smoke of a festive bonfire. Anton and Olga. Anton and Olga. You probably got tired while getting here, my dear children. Oh no, Grandpa, we got here real fast. My sister spoke with the castle's master like she never spoke with adults, in a lively, carefree manner, as if they were the same age. <laughs> of course, I know all about it. I have a lot of friends, they tell me everything. If you're diligent all year, I will bring you gifts, my dear. If you're lazy and upset, please forgive this kind old man. Candy won't encounter lazy bones and downers. I'm not lazy. This too, I know. He gave us a long, evaluating look. His real face was hidden under the Grandpa Frost mask. It was Polina's freaking grandpa. I was just standing there, unblinking my gaze glued to the old man. I could accept children living in the forest and fantastical jumps toward the moon, but seeing Grandpa Frost in his frozen castle left me completely speechless. I have something special for you two. A sack appeared in his giant hand. My nostrils got attacked by the aroma of cocoa. Halva and tangerines. Thank you, but we've already eaten some candy. Grandpa Frost pierced me with his eyes. Ho 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 ho! You call that candy? That was nothing. Here's a dead body. My candy is special, straight from Neverland. Ho 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 ho! From Neverland? I give them to you right away. You clearly deserve them. But rules are rules. You need to solve three of Grandpa's riddles. Want to try? I tried splitting uh, my parched lips apart, but Olya was the first to reply. Yeah! Here comes the first one. It's a home for cars and all sorts of tires. I looked around at the masked children. They stood without moving in the corners, but their shadows danced on the walls. I heard a low hum, and in my confusion, I thought it was the sound of their rumbling stomachs. <clears throat> a garage! Correct! Now on to the second one. You try to solve it too, Anton. All day long to the shadows they belong. They rattle the plates and hiss at their mates. My eyebrows shot up in confusion. <clears throat> Moms? Olya raised her hand. Can I, can I? It's a kitty. Correct. Ho, ho, ho. Here's the last one. Solve it and the gifts are yours. Oh, but what a stroke of bad luck, my dear children. I completely forgot what that riddle was about. Maybe our little animal friends can help us. <clears throat> children in costumes surrounded us, laughing and stomping, only to start spinning in a crazed round roundelay. That somewhat reminded me of the dance under my window from that fateful night. Grandpa Frost sits on his throne. At the kids, he's smiling back. Please don't make them wait too long. Come and op open your old sack. Grandpa Frost burst out laughing, satisfied. Okay, you've proved yourself to this old man. Here you go. He scattered a mountain of sweets from his scarlet sack, some, some of which I've never seen in I have never seen in commercials before. Is that a Snickers? It's, but it's a spin, spite, and bubble gum of all shapes and sizes and colors uh, with tasty aromas and, and inserts sticking out. That's a Twix! It's Twix, Twixy. <laughs> uh, sp yeah, that's totally a Snicker. Spickers. <laughs> Lollipops the size of a fist and tangerines the size of Olia's head. Also, the, uh, Snickers, Mars, Bounty Bars, and kind, Kinder Surprise Eggs uh, that we haven't eaten for so long already. So Wilkie May, <laughs> yo Wilkie May. <laughs> wow, thank you, Spasiba. Uh, I wiped away the tears of joy with my sleeve when my inner voice persuaded me to get rid of all doubts. This is exactly what I wanted for my sister and myself, the true Neverland, without bullying and taboos. We're finally going to be happy. Grandpa Frost straightened up and, uh, and he left his throne and threw his hands in the air all over the treats. Oh, okay. Animals that stood to the, his size also raised their paws. Their eyes sparkled brighter than precious gems. The wolf's maw was wet with saliva. <coughs> 
feast, my children. <laughs> Animal kids rushed to devour candy one by one, pushing each other and growling. Their faces were smeared with something dark. Olia grabbed the closest candy and tore off the wrapper. When I saw that, I felt a pendulum swing inside of me. Oh, whoops. Oh, my mouse is like kind of weird. Yeah, let's save over that one. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, you're getting all fucking. <laughs> it's just candy. Yeah, for some reason I don't think it's just candy, y'all. Um, candy from strangers. Look at her get so sad. Hee <laughs> hee. What do y'all think? Probably refuse, yeah. But I don't know. It's probably just gonna kill us arbitrarily. Don't take candy from strangers. Um. We we probably shouldn't. Furries aren't strangers. <laughs> now, honestly, I trust furries and I trust a lot of people these days. Yeah, I'm with Brain Busta. I recommend checking out both choices because they're vastly different, but you won't be disappointed either way. Look, Zazo, is it one of those things where it's like, it's just going to kill us like immediately if I accept? Like someone's just going to horribly die <laughs> if I accept and then I'll just reload the save and then do refuse. FYI, um, IMO. <laughs> uh, these are the kind of, those are the kind of worst, uh, uh, choices that you can put into a game where it's just like it's not really like it doesn't really matter i guess it's just an option to like kill you off for some arbitrary reason like a little a little down the line um consume the sugary goodness yeah the episode is ending soon well i don't know man um I kind of want to maintain the save, so I'm just going to refuse. <laughs> I gripped Olia's wrist so hard that she squeaked, either from pain or from, from surprise. Yes. Don't. A cautious whisper spread through the room. Ears twitched on their masks. Shadows slid from one place to another. <clears throat> What's wrong? Did something happen? It's fine. It's just Tosha believes in non-existing diabetes. Peregrine's die a lie. Wake me up when he stops fooling around. Grandpa Frost leaned into me. He smelled of caramel and just a tiny bit of dampness. Let's not spoil this wonderful occasion, my friends. Everybody should be having fun today. Eat and, da eat and dance. Olya tried to pull her hand away, but I kept it in my clutches. <clears throat> I looked at the sweets, then looked at the tall man and tried to focus on barely discernible stench coming from him. The stench of rot and decay, masked with a sugary aroma, the foul smell of a beast. <clears throat> it felt like I was finally able to shrug off some strong delusion, fear, exhaustion, and coldness returned to me. Thank you, but we're not hungry. And, um, I think we'll be going. Mom and Dad are probably worried sick already. I dragged my sister toward the exit, but Elisa stood in our path. She held out a china platter in her hands. Oh, for a brief moment, I imagined maggots crawling inside of it. But as soon as my eyes darted toward the offering, I saw gummy worms instead of vomit-inducing writhing ball of living ones. Anton, please. We're friends, right? We're even more than friends. Remember my promise? Nobody will hurt you as long as I'm here. Neither you nor Olya. So please, eat at least one. Pretty please. Let me go, Anton. Let me go. You're just like mom now, forbidding me from doing anything. 
Olya convulsed uh, uh, hysterically, trying to free herself from my clutches. This is wrong. Everything is wrong about this place. Is that so? Have you considered that maybe the only thing that is wrong here is your perception? Ever thought what those pills that you gulp down every day do to you, huh? They twist reality. They tangle your thoughts. They lead you away from the snowy trail. I looked at Elisa with suspicion, searching for a comeback, but I couldn't find one. And I, I remembered Volva's, uh, Volva's bloody mitten. <laughs> Did I just say Volva? <laughs> but that was just an illusion. H who are you? And who do we look like to you? Like nightmares that ravage my sick mind. With us, nobody will ever punish you. Nobody will lock you up in your room or abandon you. From this moment on, nobody will be able to force something upon you, uh, something you don't want upon you. How do you know what we don't want? The old man rubbed Wolfie, who was munching loudly behind the ear. Oh, I do know. <clears throat> Winds and shadows whisper to me, as do cold stars and endless skies. <clears throat> they tell me that children don't want to grow up. They don't want to turn into those who live by taboos, threats, and punishments. His voice grew louder and louder with every word. Those who live waiting to grow old and die, but children live by their dreams. Oh, I know full well children dream of a happy and carefree life, the life wi of wild freedom and miracles. His voice rang like thunder. It made all the hair on my head stand on end. All of this will be yours for the low, low price of one wish. Stay только. You only need but ask. And then he whispered, You only need but accept. Accept? Olya repeated after him like an echo, as if enchanted. Yes, my dear girl. Partake of this feast. The old man pointed toward the fox girl. Please, I beg of you, for all of us, for me, for your sister. Please, Bunny, just take a single bite. And you'll understand everything. Fuck, man. Ugh. Mm. Color. <laughs> we um uh, really doesn't seem like I should but then again if Elisa is like fucking dude you should all right I'll accept I finished the most taste uh, I fished out the most tasty looking candy from the pile of sweets on the floor <clears throat> then I took a bite Milk chocolate melted in my mouth. I applaud your bold decision. Now it's time for you to play. Whoa. I will grant your deepest wishes. Let me lighten up your day. Anton, look. My sister's face was smeared in chocolate and I was about to reprimand her. The words got stuck in my throat. Merry Christmas! <laughs> a giant spruce shot toward the, the stars and disappeared somewhere in outer space, crowned by a giant moon. Giant balls shined on its branches, garlands of lights gleamed with all the colors of the rainbow. The roof disappeared and myriads of constellations sprawled on the night sky above us. Whee! <laughs> Music, laughter, the smell of evergreen and sweets! And Teddy, Wolfie, and Hootie dancing beside us! And the snowflakes floated backward, burst out laughing, touched the bushy golden tinsel. It was all real. Is, is that it? Are you talking about Neverland by any chance? Is this Neverland? Elisa performed a theatric bow. Christmas balls gleamed and shimmered and my soul shimmered in unison with them. I was becoming the magic winter forest, the soft evergreen, all the constellations at the same time. Welcome home. 
This is where my home always was. The snow sparkled, almost blinding me. Olya started spinning in a dance. She grabbed a candy with each of her hands. <laughs> Wolfie juggled kinder surprise eggs. Did you see that? Consoles, handheld games, dolls, and transformer figures lay under the spruce as if they were brought here by trucks. Is this for us? I realized I was also dancing, so I replied while moving. It's a bit too much for the two of us. I'd share it with somebody. And what do you think? Only if it's someone nice. A group of children stood at the edge of the woods, their enchanted gazes directed at our celebration. Hey! I jumped across the whole clearing and glided to the ground near them. Want to come to us? Can we? Of course. The kids took each other uh, by the hand and led their procession toward the gifts. There was no better feeling than leading someone to, on the road to their dreams. The holiday party was finally in full swing. In every holiday, just like in a beautiful apple, um, always sat a nasty little worm oh, with transience. Yet here, under the bristly paws of a magnificent spruce, holidays never ended. Are you happy, Tosha? I am! Up in the sky, majestic fireworks went off, illuminating their dancing figures. My eyes wet and my muscles sprung up. I tilted my head toward the uh, toward look at the moon and screamed at the top of my lungs from overflowing emotion. Are you happy, Bunny? I jumped towards the star and did a flip. All the Neverland could hear my scream. Yes! I am happy. <coughs> For the first time in the long days I'd spent in the new house, I woke up with a smile on my face. This time, uh, happen happiness had a tight grip on me. I stretched, enjoying the sweet sensation of with every cell of my body. Outside, I could hear the joyful chirping of beautiful red-chested bullfinches who celebrated the night January sun, the bright January sun. <coughs> Their chirping granted me hope that the naked forest outside my window would someday turn into a lush paradise for my parents and my little sister. The corridor was filled with dog barks and the patter of tiny feet. The door to my bedroom flew open, greeting me with a warm breeze and the aroma of freshly made coffee. Oh. Olya stood in the doorway, shining with happiness, holding the cute Zolka, who wiggled both her body and her tail. <laughs> look, Tosha, look! Pe uh, Papa said that she can stay. Tears of joy formed in my little sister's eyes. I have my own dog now! I, I couldn't help but jump up from the bed hearing this wonderful news. That's Zolka. Zolka? No, her name is Princess. Right, Your Highness? The dog barked in agreement. Talk, talk. Knock, knock. Can I come in? <laughs> to my complete surprise, Dad stepped through the doorway, smiling and hugging Mom, which was outright bizarre. What do you think of our new family member? This idiot threw herself under my car. I barely avoided her. I got my car scratched, though I'd choke her with my own two hands. Then I looked her in the eye, and there I saw, how do I put it? intelligence yeah and the poor thing was shaking all over and then i said all right if you manage to make it home without soiling my seats i'll let you stay princesses can't soil anything we laughed in unison just like the old day ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -ba. <laughs> just like the old days the good old days when every little thing could easily make us burst out laughing well why did you stop continue with your stories Mom gave Dad a cunning look, and he turned away, red as a beet. They were acting like total kids. Wow! There's some good news. Your dad got a promotion. I shouldn't exactly be happy about it, since the chief accountant went missing and all. But, you know, for us, it's a silver lining. Does that mean you'll be away from home more? That means double the bonuses. That's right, Karina. Which means that you all should prepare for a family trip next week. My heart uh, started beating faster after these words. But where? Olya even loosened her grip on the stray. Oh, are we going to McDonald's? 
Come on, Alia. Aim higher. We've been planning this trip for a long time, but something always messed it up. We're so sorry about that, kids. Mom wiped away from a tear with her fist. It's okay, Karita. Now it's all in the past. Another. Anyway, gather your things. We're flying to Disneyland, baby! My sister and I jumped up to the ceiling with joy. The dog also got excited from the passionate speech and joined us. Hooray! Disneyland! Disneyland! <laughs> Our jubilant screams filled the house, rushing through the attic and the drain pipes, flew across the front yard and sneaked into the shining white forest, taking the scary D word away with it. I swore that I'll remember this day forever, the day my, when my parents finally dropped their derisive, uh, derisive masks and underneath them were the faces of parents we always knew and loved. Lilia Pavlovna still hadn't returned to school after Katya went missing, so uh, today I was uh, able to get a good night's sleep and went to school when it was already bright outside. The trail led to a snow-white plain uh, uh, with blackened houses in the background. They jumped out. Uh, they pumped out gray smoke that carried the smell of birch and pine logs. The freezing cold of the night had finally let up. It fell into slumber under the early sunlight. Ice sparkles appeared on the white caps atop the houses. I stopped confident that nobody would spoil my good mood today. Not even my personal tormentor, Piatfanov, or his nasty crony, Biasha. Not even the shining knife that threatened to cut me up like a dead fish. All of that was gone forever. A cow let out a long moo somewhere in the distance. I fell out uh, of my fleeting daydream and walked forward, crunching the snow blanket under my soles. Fluffy clouds floated above my head. I recognized the friendly shapes of animal kids in them. <laughs> Suddenly, a snowball landed on the smack of my on the back of my head. Girlish laughter that reminded me of a small ringing bell in the spring breeze tickled my ears. I turned around, expecting to see her, my lovely guide into the dream world, my dear Elisa. Yet an, instead of the fox girl, Polina stood on the trodden path behind me with her faithful violin case in hand. I bet Petrov Got your head in the clouds again, huh, Petrov? <laughs> she lunged at me with contagious laughter, locked her arms around my neck, just stood there in awe, drowning in the sweet aroma of her perfume. Perfume. Ah. Just yesterday, I was stupefied by her sudden hysteric episode, and I thought it was wise to stay away from Polina. Away from her mood swings, away from her weirdo of a grandpa. Yet as soon as she hugged me, I forgot all about the horrors and I didn't want the, this talented violinist to let me go. D did something happen? She flashed me an embarrassed smile. I saw her corner, uh, cornflower colored eyes gleam. My, my grandpa, he... <clears throat> he can walk again! Can you believe it? No! No, I can't! <laughs> the local doctor had no faith in him, but it's like he stood up and started walking just to spite him. Oh, this is the happiest day of my life, Anton! She dug her face deep into my chest, tightened her grip on my neck as if I were more than just a friend to her. I stared, uh, looking around, anxious. Um, Polina, somebody could see us. Are you worried about Piatifanov? Then you're worried for nothing. He has not been seen for a while. I cautiously parted with Polina, trying to understand whether it was some sort of prank or the truth. Wait, you don't believe me? That officer, Lieutenant Tikhanov, came to our house just last night. He said that Biasha, along with his buddy Romka, went missing. A group of skiers uh, glided past, past us straight into the forest. Polina leaned in my ear, sharing her whisper with me, her eyes still locked on the skiers. As far as I know, Tikhanov suspects that all the previous ca cases were Piatifanov's fault. No way! I was shocked myself. There are rumors that Romka, well, went off the deep end. I mean, it's not exactly surprised. I'm not exactly surprised to hear that. What do you mean? Haven't you heard? He's from a very troubled family. I don't even uh, want to imagine what had been going on in their home. Romka always seemed excessively aggressive to me, always angry at everyone without a good reason. Now the darkness that he harbored within overflowed into the outside world and led multiple small innocent souls to their demise as well as his own. It was hard to believe, but for the first time I laid my eyes on Romka, I thought that things would end this way. Let's move or we're going to be late. <laughs> Helena grabbed my hand and started running along the village road, accompanied by joyful laughter. With every step, every laugh, and every joke, the warmth I thought I'd forgotten enveloped my heart more and more. 
The all-consuming feeling of falling in love came back to me this time for good, it seemed. I tried letting go of Polina's hand near the classroom entrance, embarrassed that our classmates might taunt us. But it was as if Polina didn't care at all. She only gripped my palm even harder while opening the door. And she was right. Now that the cunning Katya, the heartless Romka, and the sneering Biasha were gone, our class looked as if it was sanitized from parasites. It became friendlier and kinder. I didn't get looks uh, overflowing with hatred anymore. There was nobody to spit a ball of chewed paper at me without uh, through an empty shell of a ball pen. I sat at my lonely desk when Polina joined me. I wasn't surprised at all. She was so charming that I could call her my muse. A wave of inspiration hit me, and I couldn't help but pull my sketchbook out of my bag. I licked the pencil lead, my eyes glued to my model. She smiled at me again. What's on your mind? No worries, a professional at work here. I drafted the shapes of her mesmerizing figure. You know, I've watched you from here often. She glanced at her former desk, then fixed a strand of her hair a bit behind her ear in embarrassment. Really? I outlined her cute sheets with uh, multiple wide lines. It, uh, it was the first time I was able to grasp somebody's proportions so precisely. Polina. Yes, Anton. She froze in place, afraid of disrupting my work with one wrong move and dispelling the magic of the moment. Lean here a bit more, please. Yes, like this. Good. Choking from anxiousness, Polina loosened the knot in her handkerchief, her neckerchief. I always wanted to draw you. Our eyes met. Oh, Anton. My pencil slid across the paper furiously, adding to the shading to her chest. <clears throat> Say, would you like to become the main heroine in my comic? <laughs> Pleasant shivers ran across her body. She rolled her eyes. Oh, no. This is awful. Yeah, yeah. I've been waiting for you to ask, darling. The lead couldn't endure all the sudden tension and cracked, bursting into a million pieces. I couldn't believe my eyes when I looked at the drawing. Hell yeah. I was looking at a terrible daub in the place of Polina's face was just a second ago. Now rested some sort of formless mess. Dot, dot, dot. It took me some time to realize that I was sitting alone in an empty classroom with only the specks of dust flying in the moonlight as my company. It was dark outside. My classmates, Polina, the feeling of euphoria, all of them were gone. Somebody wrote down a nursery rhyme on the blackboard with a piece of chalk, but some of the words were wiped out, and I could only read, read bits and pieces. One, two, bunny, meat. I was no longer smirking like an idiot. I stood up, pinched myself on the wrist. A ringing silence engulfed me. There was a taste of vomit in my mouth, and my ears buzzed uh, from an endless scream full of despair and horror. Hey! <clears throat> hey, is anybody out there? Shadows swarmed in the corridor. I walked past boarded up classrooms, past the rotting, uh, the rotten spots on the walls and silvery cobwebs. Spiders crawled under the ceiling. Lamps flickered an uh, anxiously. I stopped before the notice board, stunned. Hundreds of new photos were added to those of Semyon and Katya. Black and white printouts were glued on top of each other. Horrific collage of childish faces stared at me with empty eye sockets. Unable to endure the, the torturing stares of those wa uh, watchful gaping holes, I ran out of the school. I crossed the front yard and reached the road where the wind was whipping up powdery snow. No people, no cars, no birds. Low clouds got stuck on chimneys. Windows that looked like they were painted over with ink. Photos of missing people enveloped lamp posts and fences like paper skin. Mostly kids, but some adults too. It felt like all of the people who once lived in this village now became black and white ghosts in the photos with a missing a person missing label. I dragged to my, I dragged my feet toward along the dead street. Forward along. Some houses had their windows smashed. The wind made itself at home here, wandering the rooms. Every gust made the front doors swing. Kids' coats hung from the fences, their sleeves moved, stretched out toward me. An empty village, an empty husk. What happened here? <clears throat> an, over an overthrown waste bin, waste bin, waste bin rumbled across the alley. Something flashed inside the window frames. 
of the charred village store. I ran away from its city facade, then heard a guttural roar coming from the well. I started walking faster, trying not to pay any mind to the darkness inside the front yards, inside the bloodied dogs' houses, inside the crooked shacks. The moon appeared from under the clouds. Something flew over my head in this draining silence, as if a crop duster flew from one roof to another. A huge shadow loomed over me. I rushed to the right, hoping that it, I wasn't noticed. A small greenhouse in front of me was my shelter. I rushed toward the closest building, going insane from fear. Yes, nobody will find me here. I failed to notice right away that it was Polina's house, or just hours ago she was begging me to stay with her during a fit of hysteria. I pushed the gate, crouched, and scampered toward the porch. I tugged at the doorknob. The front door was open. A wheelchair rolled out of the darkness, almost hitting me, tumbled down the stairs, clanging with its wheels, and stopped near an apple tree. I followed it with round eyes, uh, then turned my gaze inside the house again. The corridor was obscured by the dark, empty frames on the walls, glass shards on the floor. Is there anybody here? I heard growling in reply. From the, around the corner of the end of the corridor, a furry paw appeared in it, and after it, a scary beast face with a pair of burning eyes. A huge, overweight beast crawled on its belly, writhing like a snake. It could barely fit inside the corridor's mouth. I squeezed forward, clawing at the floorboards. It squeezed forward, clawing at the floorboards. The maws clanged like a bear trap inches away from my face. The beast got stuck. It banged its paws on the wall, spitting saliva in every direction. I turned around. I needed to get the hell out of this nightmare. A hunchback owl, bigger than an average human, landed near the front gate and stood in its way. Its beak kept clicking. A snow pile bulged nearby and something reminiscent of a giant shrew crawled uh, to the outside. <gasps> I fell to my knees as if praying to these eldritch creatures. I figured, draped in a dirty fox scalp, crawled out of the dark hole, smiling with all its teeth. <laughs> its tail dragged after it, just a piece of vertebrae, laced in torn sinews. Sinews. The creature's bodies became extremely distorted, and I decided I was going insane. They seemed small to me at one moment as small as a child, only to stretch higher the, uh, than any of the desolate houses the next. Man-eating creatures towered over me. Something kept on writhing in their stomachs as if looking for a way out. The longer they stared at me, the wider their twisted smiles, their death masks became. We had such a long feast. The mutilated fox taxidermy mount licking, uh, licked its lips. Its tongue looked like a black centipede, longer than my forearm. The nasty insect ran between the razor-sharp teeth and dropped into the bottomless pit that could swallow the whole world. Hoot hoot! Sweet meat! Juicy meat! We devour it, and we won't stop. Bwahaha! There was nothing human about their speech. It was all just animalistic growls and bird-like whizzes. But I was able to understand every word as if it were speaking the same, as if we were speaking the same language. <clears throat> it's a shame you couldn't catch up with us, bunny. You couldn't bite the moon. <clears throat> you stole my food, traitors. You refused to eat your family, remember? But hoot hoot, pathetic meat, worthless meat. You're absolutely useless, brother. You make me sick. Grr, shame, shame. <laughs> Indescribable horror gripped me when the laughing beasts held their clawed uh, paws toward me. Then suddenly, the thing that pretended to be a fox started barking loudly. Fools! It's his time to bring the treats. Good for Gur, nothing Gur. Hoot hoot, let him fulfill his mission. We'll be waiting for some meat from you tomorrow night, or else. Or else. 
Or else. Or else. Or else we'll eat your entire family. The monsters formed a circle around me and started dancing. I screamed. Huge eyes, fangs, claws uh, flashed out in front of me, blurring into a string of colorful spots and smudges. One, two, time to play with you. Three, four, five, the owl will survive. Six on end, the wolf's gray fur will stand. Okay, this is fucking loud. <clears throat> Seven, eight, stomp your hooves and wait. A fox face protruded from the fuzzy lights th uh, that the beastly carcass has turned into. <clears throat> for the fox and for the bear, bunny tasty meals prepare. <clears throat> A desperate cry, my cry, rumbled across the back streets of the desolate village. I will, I will, I will prepare. The circle broke up and I ran for my life. Turn it back up. It felt like I was running into a snare trap. My head was splitting, ugly images danced inside a colliding, falling over, getting up and dancing again. One, two, they flapped their wings, poked my face with their beaks and their salivating maws. Three, four, five. They howled and jumped around and my eardrums were ready to pop, either from their screams or from the internal pressure of my fractured skull from within. Six. My winter had obscured my vision and it seemed like the whole world, sky tilted like a roof that's about to collapse. Seven, eight. Snow crumbled from the sky like plaster. I ran through the empty streets, through the icy world, chased by a pack of beasts. Yet I couldn't see anybody when I turned around. I shut my eyes and hopped away from the ritual dance that went on inside of my flare-up mind. I squeezed my ears with my palms to suppress the noise. I just wanted to stop my head from being cracked open. Ugh. The sunrise found me deep inside the forest. Was, is Father Christmas or whatever getting them high? Is he feeding them like weed? <laughs> is he feeding them like shit? Uh, thank you for completing episode four. We are deeply grateful for everyone who purchased the game in early access. All the profits will go forward to further uh, development of the game. Oh, should I have saved? Fuck. All right, let's load. Um, let's load the other one. Let's do this. Let's refuse. I felt like chilling winds blew from the cavities of their eyes, from the dark holes of, the, uh, uh, of other beasts and the towering old man's, too. The owl's face twitched nervously. The wolf's maw dripped with saliva. The bear shuffled his feet, any trace of sleepiness gone from his face. <clears throat> And from behind us, towering uh, the one who pretended to be Grandpa Frost all this time. I said we're leaving. I gripped my sister's hand even tighter. Candy slipped from her fingers and smacked against the floor. Olya started looking around, frightened. I said we're leaving. Elisa parroted me, and despite everything, I felt immense anger. My. Why do you have to be such a dunce? I heard the flute's melody, but uh, now it reminded me of a cracking whip or even agonized convulsions of a fish that was thrown out to the ice. Music dangled about, striking at my ears, and then the crystal castle was filled with cries of children that slowly turned into beastly howls intermingled with the sounds of crunching bones and ripped skin. The china platter fit. Okay, this is too loud again. The china platter filled to the brim with maggots smashed into tiny pieces. Oops. Oops. Elise's orange fur coat ripped at the seams, letting out a cloud of foul smelling fog. Her twisted face bared its teeth, and the stench attacked my nostrils again. The fox screamed, uh, blood streaming down her cheeks like tears, making her first. Wow! <laughs> making her first sticky, her bone naked tail whipped against the walls with its vertebrae. I shielded my crying sister. Horror drilled into my stomach, rushed through my guts, and rose up to my throat. I felt the urge to tear off my glasses and lose sight. I wanted to squeeze my eyes out and go blind forever. <clears throat> I turned to face the owl, and my face contorted from disgust. Worms wriggled inside her mask's feathers. Her rotted beak snapped like garden scissors. I staggered back and barely avoided bumping into the wolf. His face was stretched out, his bones crunched. Teeth poked out from his festering gums like shards of broken glass, and his swollen tongue kept 
uh, on tirelessly licking them. At the edge of my vision, I saw the bear block our passage. Every inch of his body oozed scarlet, I scarlet ichor. Larvae clogged his teary eyes. I pulled the shocked Olya close, looking for an exit in, in a panic. My foot ended up in the pile of sweets, but those were no longer candy. Human remains blanketed the floor. Ribs with shreds of meat on them and torn out jaws. A tooth necklace uh, and moss-covered pelvic bones. Tiny skulls and scalps swimming in a sea of blood. <clears throat> Eat up. Oh, we're getting animation, yay! Uh, fucking sick. <laughs> The horned monstrosity towered over me, clutching a bone flute in its long clawed fingers. A giant goat that shed at his kind old man form. Completely black, emanating hatred and malice, he scorched me with red hot coals inside his eye cavities. His horns scraped against the ceiling. Ice cracked and thawed, dripping down, forming muddy pools of water, bearing metal walls that were hidden underneath it. I realized that we were doomed inside this cramped womb of a dungeon, surrounded by howling beasts. All I could do was hug my sister even tighter and watch her, uh, watch how the circle around us shrank, her, how ugly paws reached out to us from behind the veil of a bloody fog. That's the way I see. Let me grip them to shreds, master. I'll tear their eyeballs and screw their oozing wounds. I, I. The growling wolf's maw snapped like a bear trap, splattering thick white foam toward us. But he was immediately pushed away by a rotting bear carcass. No way. It's my turn to have the fun. I got so tired of listening to their fucking drivel. Oh, I'll rip uh, the skin off of this little brat while she's still alive right in front of her brother. I'll make him eat his own sister. I'll fill his belly full of her guts. Please, master. It felt like his face was about to tear apart, crack like an eggshell, letting out something even more sinister, nasty, scary. <clears throat> Gnarly owl claws grabbed at the grinning bear, uh, stop, uh, stopping him from getting close. <clears throat> She's mine, mine, you scumbags. Get your paws off the girl. The crackling zoo formed a furball that started rolling in guts and thawed fat. They howled, fought with each other, tore out scrapes of fur and feathers, ready to rip each other apart like a pack of hungry dogs fighting for leftovers. A sudden squeal of the flute pulled them apart as if someone tugged at their leashes. The master of this pack charmed the monsters with his soul-rending music, turning them into unmoving silent marionettes that faithfully awaited his commands. The goat stopped nibbling on his shin bone flute, its devilish melody that sounded like a chorus of children being run over by a steamroller went silent for one last time. A chunk of raw human flesh plopped beside my shaking feet. Eat or be eaten. Consumed by fear, I turned toward Olya. She lay by the wayside covered in pink snow. Oh, that's hair. Just like Sleeping Beauty in that cartoon. She probably lost consciousness from the soul-rending spectacle. I wanted a whale to go mad to die quickly and painlessly right there and now, but alas, I couldn't. I was still inside the, this torture chamber, choosing between a gruesome end inside the monster's stomachs or cannibalism. Woolen meat grinders kept on staring at me with their greedy, infinitely hungry eyes, ready to gnaw at my bones uh, before eventually eating them if I dared refuse their master's offer. But if I was to agree, I'm sure I would lose my free will, just like them. I'll turn into a perpetually hungry monster that dances to the tune of a bloodthirsty madman, and I'll surely lead Olya <clears throat> and all those close, uh, and all those who I hold dear to their deaths. My lips trembled, a feeling of nausea turned my stomach inside out, but somehow I found the strength to scream. <clears throat> No way, never. I'm a human. Uh, those words uh, could be later used as my epitaph, but I knew that my remains were destined to never be found. My surroundings went dead silent. Eat them. Bleed them. Tear them apart. <clears throat> the horned shadow consumed us. Sweet meat.
Elisa rushed to the goat and stood between us, ridiculously tiny compared to the giant monster. Her tail dragged after her, leaving behind a scarlet trail. Fleas jumped around her back and the bones sticking out of it. <clears throat> Wait, don't. No need to be hasty. We still have use for the bunny. He will bring us a tasty treat. For the fox and for the bear, bunny tasty meals prepare. Flames inside his eye sockets uh, stopped trembling. <clears throat> still, dolls uh, bared their teeth in anger. You call him Bunny? Tear her apart and swallow up. Imposter, hoot hoot. Gut filled meat bag. Shut up, buffoons. Can't you feel it? Have you forgotten? The moment when he almost took a bite out of the moon at the snowy clearing. The cannibals went silent, swallowing saliva in disappointment. Elisa, in the meantime, took a sharp turn and. Returned to the form of a cute child with a fox mask on that I uh, met for the first time on uh, one January morning. She glided toward me, dissolving the horrors around us with the smell of tangerines, firecrackers, and magic. Her soft paws touched my cheeks, removing a sticky strand of hair from my forehead. Elisa embraced me and whispered in a sweet voice. Do you want to save yourself, Tosha? I stayed silent, gritting my teeth. I was afraid to look away, afraid of, uh, from this fleeting illusion could get shattered. Tell me, sweetie, do you want to save your sister? Tears sprayed from my eyes as I wept. Yes. I continued to sniffle and shake, grabbing at the hem of the fox girl's long coat. Say it louder so that everybody can hear you. Delirious from sorrow, I screamed my face awash with tears. Yeah. My mouth was immediately filled with the metallic aftertaste of blood. The fox's black fingers kept crushing a chunk of human flesh deeper down my throat. I fell to my knees, coughing up blood, unable to vomit it out. Rotting carcasses of animals surrounded me once again. What a joke. Master, let me take a small bite from the girl. Boiling anger swallowed up my mind. Something foreign and primitive burst forth, uh, pounced from the inside of me. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me see you try. I'll tear out your filthy tongue and shove it down your uh, down your cloaca, you brainless chicken. The ominous owl jumped away in surprise, accompanied by the fox's cackling. My voice went out, and then I bent in half. I vomit poured out of my mouth, along with part of the treat that I wasn't able to regurgitate. <laughs> You're right, bunny. His finger poked me. It felt like a knife with a lodged handle deep uh, into my solar plexus. It's your turn to treat us. Get us some meat until tomorrow night. Or else. Or else. Elisa silently stepped into the shadows and the goat put his foul-smelling maw right into my face and roared. Or else we'll eat your entire family. He knocked his hoof against the floor and I ran for my life, forgetting about everything else. Even your sister? I heard them scream at the back, we'll eat you up alive. Shards of ice fell on my shoulders, dead rodents fro frozen inside of them. I managed to break free to the uh, place where pines moved their branches and uh, showered me with snow. <clears throat> like cooks sprinkling salt on porridge. The wind tore at my hair. I turned around and froze over. Where's your sister? Oh, it's just a shed. The garage was disappearing right in front of me, dissolving in layers, becoming dim and then transparent before a gust of wind finally slipped away the phantom of black walls. Only then I realized I let go of my sister a long time ago and she was left behind in the monster's den. There was only a giant snow pile left in place of the castle. A girl's wrist poked out of it like a cross that would poke from a burial mound. Terrified, I rushed over to the smoke pile, snow pile and started digging. <clears throat> Olia's pale face, along with one of her shoulders, appeared from under the white mass. Her bluish lips trembled. She's alive. Hang in there. I continued digging and prayed for her to hang on. At some point, I was able to see her stomach. I'm cold. Her voice was faint. 
It's okay. I'll carry you home. We'll get you warm by drinking hot chocolate. I'll just stay awake for, with, for me, you hear? Just, my fingers came across something sticky and hot. I cleared out more snow. It turned red and mushy. What's this? What's there? I gulped. Why won't you say anything? How could I tell her? Olya's body didn't exist below the stomach. Rings of guts fell out of the wound. Olya tilted her head and stared at the horrifying scraps, then let out a deafening scream. Okay. Uh, do I save? I guess I save. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that's good. <laughs> um, yeah, we can still go to Disneyland. She's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's just a flesh wound. Um, Remy, is that an Attack on Titan spoiler? I I've never seen Attack on Titan. <laughs> I don't know. Dewey, I'm cutting half pretty bad. Huh. Interesting. Um... I don't know what I was expecting. I guess it, I guess this was... I don't know. Um, I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little disappointed. Um, it's interesting. Don't get me wrong. There are interesting parts. But of all the ways that this could go, it's like... This is pretty... I don't know. It, it was heavily hinted at, I guess. Um, that this is kind of the way that things would go. And I, I, I don't know. I was expecting a little bit more, I guess. I don't know. Is that weird? Um, I don't know. It's interesting. I want to know where it goes. Like, I, I do. But I don't know. Yeah, it's not like there's a little more meat in the other route that combined uh, gives more context. Yeah, maybe that's another thing. Maybe this is kind of meant for me to, like, play multiple times in each of the chapters so that I see what the different routes are, you know? Maybe I'm missing a bunch of shit. I don't know. I, I it's, it's not like I hate it or anything. I definitely want to know where shit goes. It's just like, damn, I feel like I'm making the wrong choices like all the time now. Like there is no good choice, which, uh, you know, that's probably a, um, the, uh, probably a, a thing that they're trying to go for. But at the same time, it's like, wait, in the other ending, in the other option, did I save, um, Olya at all? Like, is she, is she just dead in that playthrough? I just, yeah, I, I don't know. Also, with all these multiple, like, routes, it doesn't seem like there's, like... What's the word? It's not like I'm looking for... A canonical, like, playthrough. I'm just trying to figure out, like... If this changes wildly, then, like, I don't know. It's hard to seek, sink my teeth into... Get it? Um, the plot, in a way... Because at any point, it's like, well, am I playing the wrong... Did I make the wrong decision? Maybe I need to go back and make the right one. You know what I mean? It's making furries the bad guys is really subverting expectations. Um, it would be nice if there was more context for the branching and the branching and murder, murdered paths. Yeah. So you know if you've seen everything? Yeah, yeah. Funnily enough, I, uh, Clover Femu, uh, funnily enough, I think the route I saw played, uh, did more detective work in trying to seek mundane answers for the disappearances, even though it's following Elisa from the start. Interesting. See, I wish it, it played more with that. Yeah. Maybe I just need to go back and play the entire fucking game over again, <laughs> which, uh, the fact that I'm left feeling with that doesn't make me feel very good. Anyway. 
Zazo says, I'd say Bob's has seen like 90% of what the game has to offer. The remaining percent is in Elise's route. And I think it provides more context. Okay. All right. Maybe I do. Fuck. Wish y'all told me that I was playing the wrong goddamn playthrough. <laughs> Uh, even though I, I do like Polina. Polina seems nice. Anyway. Oh, you don't think I was? Huh? Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is just, maybe I'm thinking about it differently. Maybe I'm not, maybe I shouldn't be thinking about them as like routes, but just like more information, you know? Like it's, it's... It's not wrong, both routes are valid, but I see what you mean. Yeah, I just, I don't know. When they have different routes like this, it definitely, like, I don't know. It always makes me think, like, am I playing the right way, you know? <laughs> just like Higurashi, no. Well, Higurashi was all about finding clues and stuff, and it was a, a well-written story that was, like, uh, playing with your, uh, you know, expectations and what you, where you're, where things are going, and how they'll deviate and there was always something interesting about each of the chapters with this it's just like no the monsters are bad they're evil like the entire time like you know immediately and now it's just like well how bad and but i that's okay because i'm i'm invested in the characters that's all you need for a good story as long as you get invested in the characters you're good you know i got you you know i will play the next chapter simply because i want to know what happens to olia uh, and the other, and uh, Polina and, um, um, what is his name? The main character. Why do I keep, Antosha. So anyway. Uh, Remy, I need to go to bed. My throat is killing me and my normal bedtime now is like ridiculously early and I hate it. But, uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to play a different game next week. But, um, but yeah, anyway. Zazo says the game def encourages exploring uh, other choices to gain more lore. And I think uh, the only moments when you did miss out on additional info um, is not taking Polina's amulet, which just cuts it short or playing the loner route. See, I don't, I don't understand. That was just a dumb thing. It, it feels like what tiny bunny did with the amulet shit is like exactly the kind of shit that I feel like Higurashi was making fun of, <laughs> but like worse somehow. That was dumb, man. Like that's such a stupid bullshit like like choice that just ends your run early for some bullshit reason. It doesn't matter whatever whatsoever after that, unless in the last chapter they maybe pull something out and something interesting happens. That just, it only served to like get you a shitty ending in like the chapter before the final chapter. It's like, what? Really? That feels like, there's a word for that. It's bullshit. Zazo, I think the amulet shit uh, would be more understandable if the game was, you know, more complete and had other endings. As it stands, it's the only achievable ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If this was actually done, maybe that's the the other problem. It's just like, it's hard to talk about this with the game not being completely finished yet. Like, <clears throat> I want to, if I was playing this and the final, and the final chapter was available, I would really want to immediately start playing the next chapter to figure out like in this playthrough, what happened to Olya? Were we, was that a visual trick? Are we like, is she not actually like, split in half, you know? It seemed... Uh, it's... Olia seemed to feel the same way that she was, like, missing her lower, like, half of her body, but... She's not surviving that, so she's just dead? That seems fucked. But I don't know. There's a lot of mental, like... switcheroos happening. Also, I guess it's, like... I guess this is entirely like magical now, so. <clears throat> Could be a hallucination. I think it would be interesting if someone was like fucking with them. Also, I'm pretty sure the voice of the of the the dude, um, the Father Christmas or whatever his fucking name is, I forget it. The Chris uh, Chris Kringle or fucking whatever. 
Um, I'm pretty sure his voice was the same as the as Polina's father or Polina's grandfather. Oh, Clover Femme. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm with you there, even as a fan enjoying and spectating, uh, speculating on this. I was kind of disappointed and disappointed at that ending. Yeah. Christ, man. Yes. Yeah. So I think there's a tie there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I got ideas, but like, I don't know. It is also interesting that, um, Anton, like, seems to have some kind of like demon inside of him as well just like the other the other animals the other kids I should say hmm. yeah see you in 12 months that makes me think like should we just should I put out the video now or should I wait <laughs> But I don't know. It is interesting. I like how it, uh, I like how the art style became just one hundred percent anime at the end. <laughs> like the way Anton was like the reactions Anton was having. It was just one one thousand percent like fucking anime. Anyway. Yeah, maybe maybe Zazo. Maybe they're just reusing a, a voice actor. It is interesting. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna chew on it a bit. Um, I'm also I'm also interested in where they go with the. Uh, like why is this kid taking the medicine and it's come up multiple times like why why is he taking medicine like how um like how hmm, like where does the fantasy end you know like what i just need more i just need more to like figure out what the hell is going on so i can really make a some kind of a statement on it and really define like whether I like it or not because if they ride the line and it's like you know based in reality but also there's this magical element going on that could be true or could not be but it's all about perception that could be interesting I don't know I don't know Zazo, do you, uh, are you going to check out Elise's route later or is this a stopping point for now? I don't know. I'm not really feeling like checking it out. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, uh, not right now though. I'm, I'm just tired. So I'm going to go, uh, rest. Definitely rest my vocal cords. Holy shit. That was a lot of talking, <clears throat> but yeah, I don't know. Maybe, um, totally valid if you dip on it don't push yourself i am ho any way around it yeah <clears throat> yeah i'm definitely gonna stop for now it's midnight so uh it's curfew <laughs> it's a joke for earlier all right y'all uh y'all take it easy uh i'm gonna go and take it easy so um yeah I, i'm gonna sleep on it I'll, i might post some thoughts on discord later but um i don't know i'm not i'm not like I'm not like in, I'm not super happy with it, but at the same time, it's not like the worst, you know, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty good. Um, but yeah, no, like it has potential right now, like right now, like while we're waiting for the final chapter, but yeah. So, uh, final thoughts inconclusive. Um, we'll see what happens. It's definitely damn interesting. And I really like the characters. So, so yeah. Um, you hooked me, game. You hooked me. I'm hooked. All right. Just like uh, Anton's hooked uh, to get the rest of the the kids a delicious snack. Um, who are we going to feed him? Probably our girlfriend. Anyway. <laughs> or probably the game's going to push it that way. But yeah. Uh, Y'all have a great night. Take it easy. Um, rest up. Uh, we'll be back next week. And uh, yeah. Catch you later. And uh, no problem, Zazo. Thank you very much, Zazo, for gifting the game to me. I did not buy this. Zazo gifted it to me. So thank you very much, Zazo, for, uh, for uh, yeah, um, supporting, uh, for, uh, I want to say patronizing the stream. So without Zazo, this wouldn't, this wouldn't have happened, I don't think. So, aces. All right, y'all. Take it easy. Good night.